the score shouldn't be. Hello, 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 everybody. Hello. Yo. How are we doing, people? Welcome to the Garaga Q and A. Um, this is Icarus speaking. Um, hopefully you guys are all nice and snug and comfortable because we're going to take you on a nice little journey th through the world of Garaga. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> so you were, we are joined by Eric Eaglet. So please say hello, Eaglet. Hello, this is me, Eaglet here speaking. Yep, and we're also joined by Plasmo. We've managed to get him in, so say hi, Plasmo. Hello, thanks, Plasmo. Hey, 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 how you doing? So, yes, um, Garaga, Garaga, Garaga. I think a lot of people already know what we're here for, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, they yep. should at least. Yeah, they should at least, so. Yeah. Yep, um, let me just double check this. Uh, are those uh, audio levels okay for you guys? Ah, a bit too loud. Yeah, you were a bit loud in the beginning, but I think it's better now. Okay, cool, cool. Let me just double check. I'm gonna knock that down. Yeah, you sound good now. Okay, cool. Anyway, you, yes. You were you were gaining like crazy, man. Ah, uh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, we are here for. And I got my beer. <laughs> Young <Yogos. laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay, so we are here for Garaga tutorial. It's been a long time in the making. Um, yeah, uh, we managed to actually get some stuff sorted out for it now, so here we are. We're going to talk about as much as we can about the systems, about strategies, about beginner um, strats, um, you name it. We're going to try and cover as much of it as we can. Apparently Eagle yeah. thinks it's only going to take an hour. I told him yesterday <laughs> it's not going to take an hour. <laughs> well, I'm a hopeless optimistic, so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. we should be good. I mean, we've got quite a lot to cover. There is a paste bin in the title of the stream so if you haven't checked it out please feel free to that will have the entire schedule for today it's also on the thread on schmups forum um, and yes. like I said there is quite a lot to cover so we're gonna jump straight into it with introductions um, do you want to start Eric Eaglip uh, yeah, with sure, the introduction sure. yeah <coughs> yeah so I'm gonna try to keep this as sort of as possible but it probably a bit hard hmm. um, my experience and history with this game started out with basically before I started playing shooting games. Um, I got into like this period of time where I was enjoying retro games because previously I've been giving up on games completely because I didn't like the way the industry was turning out. <laughs> uh, I've been playing music for a long time and I got into game music. And I heard the Battle Director soundtrack, I thought it was incredible. And in the same period of time, I visited a local cafe slash arcade slash retro game store um, and the third time I got there, like that's where I started playing shooting games. And the third time I got there it was this guy sitting at the counter, his name was Sven666. Mm. And basically we just talked about shooting games and I asked him if he knew this game called Battle Garega and he said yeah it's one of my favorite games and I got it. So I asked them if they could put it in because I liked the music so much. They eventually did, and um, I didn't really like the game at first. It took a while for it to click with me, and it didn't really do that until I started. Um, that's when I really like found out what was making the game interesting in my mind. What I enjoyed with it, was, which is basically the amount of um, improvement you can make over time, and the amount of optimization the game allows for. Um, and basically I just started out playing to get a clear and then I found out I liked scoring so much that I just never stopped playing pretty much. <laughs> Except for a very long hiatus during the when I was doing other things, but yeah. Cool, cool. I'm talking about Super Motaro, yes. Do you still see Sven at all? Because I haven't seen him on the forum for ages. Yeah, I just met him a couple of um, weeks ago, honestly. Yeah? Um, we had like this... Um, sort of <laughs> Christmas sausage party um, <laughs> where we just met up and played video games and played some flying shark with emphatic for quite a while it was fucking awesome Sven joined in on the action as well drunk as fuck yeah it was good um, played Toa plan games especially the sadistic ones with friends when you're drunk so great recommendation mm. Mm. Uh, but yeah he's good he's good yeah. and he's working on some big stuff at the moment yeah sounds good, great sounds good. Still around, yeah yeah what about you, Plasma? Okay, so, yeah. 
There's more. Are you there? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, my mic, the record story um, I want to share with you. Um, so basically, I was playing some um, shooting games before already, so it wasn't my first one. And um, I checked some of my older posts on the forum and uh, said that I started playing the record in March 2005. Mm. It's quite a long time ago already. <laughs> and I started out with um, Silver Sword and I hated the game because it looked completely irrelevant to me. Why would I ever play such a game like this? Um, I originally started the game because I wanted to um, just get a good challenge because I've heard people were talking about the game if it would be really difficult to clear. And I thought to myself, yeah, why not get that challenge? Hated the game. Um, tried a different ship, uh, this time Wild Slay. And um, it kind of clicked with me, so I got the clear some months later in July 2005 and dropped the game down and that's it for me. Um, then it continued uh, four years later in March 2009 where I got the um, Saturn port which I was playing then with Gain. And I was playing with Gain for a few more months up to November 2009 where I got the G7 score, which um, stayed the four record for quite a time, and then in another four years later, there are some kind of pattern in um, June 2013 up to February 2014, I was playing with Bornem. I got the E6, so that's basically my experience. I'm not that uh, well versed with like playing all the characters. Or the different ones, but yeah, mostly I was playing with games. And yeah, now that the agricultural record on the Schmaps farm is <laughs> legal again, I probably have to take it back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's still gonna take four years. Yeah, you're <laughs> welcome to try, man. I just got to repeat that pattern. Yeah, I remember when you actually got that score, actually, that was the one of the biggest scores for Garriga that we've actually seen on the forum for quite some time until Eaglet <laughs> turned around and <laughs> <laughs> took all of them. <laughs> yeah, just nine days ago he took it, so uh, yeah. congratulations. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. It, it's been a long time coming, I don't see, I don't understand why he took that long. Yeah. Uh, it's great to actually have that thing over and done with, so I can just focus on improving and not beating any records. Yeah. It will stay there for quite a time, but not for forever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. So. Oh, yeah, I'm hoping somebody just smacks <laughs> one score right, with, right away. Yeah. That would be awesome. <laughs> uh, well, as for me, I've been playing this since, what, 1997, I think? Um, oh, shit. I <laughs> knew of the game since the arcade release, but I didn't actually properly get into it until the Saturn release. And um, I think about um, a few years after, I came across Alamone's um, FAQ for it, where he talked like a little bit about the basics and stuff. That's when I really started to come back into the game. Um, I think I played it for a year straight at one point, which was kind of a surprise to me because I don't usually stick with a game that long to actually, you know, really get into it. But there was something about Garriga that I really loved that um, continues to interest me to this day in that it's got a shitload of depth and you know you can play with a lot of freestyle in it but there's also a lot of strategy in there as well it's it's just really fun to play and uh, I'm really really happy that it came out on PS4 because now it's available to everybody without having to spend some ridiculous amount of money to get the satin yeah. version of the pcb which is like something yeah. like 700 dollars or something like that no it's like 850 and above now it's yeah ridiculous. it's fucking ridiculous now i mean i just yeah. saw a bat rider pcb on the forum for like 1400 dollars holy shit are you fucking kidding me that's just insane i, I bought my bat rider uh, with both the uh, rom sets and everything for i think uh, 230 dollars mm -hmm. back in the day yeah so i mean that's ridiculous. yeah that's about what i paid as well for garega 2 i was paying for garega like 300 euros or something <laughs> so yeah i paid a bit below that i maybe we should make this into an official like 
my STV screen while we're at it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, but yeah, no, that was actually for a full kit. I think I've seen the loose PCB for like some stupidly amount of money, like about 850 as well, but the price, oh, of, yeah, yeah. price of rising has really exploded it's lately. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's and it's, it, the weird thing is, you know, you would think that with the PS4 release, the price would go down, but it's not. No, it's, it's going, never going to go down. Yeah, it's going up again by a little yeah, bit. I mean, even the Saturn release is like without spine card, you get it for like two hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just it, it, it won't go down. Yeah. No. 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 That's the thing with this game. People are underestimating the value of nostalgia. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But uh, that kind of ties into our next subject, which is the influence of the game. And I think you had something to say about this, didn't you, Eaglet? <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, basically, it's just the. Uh, going off on some shit, you know, I don't know if I have been true or anything, but basically uh, you could say that, at least to my mind, this is kind of like a breaking point in terms of shooting game design. Uh, a lot of other people say that Fats Guns like the first proto bullet hell shooter or whatever, but from what I've learned when I was over in Japan and I've been talking with people about the game, is that it basically was a big game changer where, you know, the amount of scoring depth and bullet patterns and shit, all of, all of this kind of uh, maximalist design style uh, really gained some traction with this game. Mm. And it's kind of interesting because it stands as kind of like a, like a breaking point or a middle point between different design philosophies because it has a lot of old school design. Uh, some parts of stage design reminds me a lot of Toa Plan games like Flying Shark, for example, on stage 2 you have this part where you got two lanes of popcorn enemies coming down from the side and you have this big ass tank that just rushes down and snipes your ass if you're not ready for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is like, it's like straight out of Hishosama or Flying Shark. And um, a lot of different things like that, and aesthetically it's very much inspired by Gun, Gun Frontier, which is an old title shooter, which looks really good, but I don't know if it plays that well, honestly, it's super slow. Mm, uh, it's it's kind of clunky and it's pretty weird, but I can see a lot of the influences on Garaga from it. It's uh, Yeah, it's and it's super hard as well. It also has a pretty strange rank system where the amount of shots you miss is what raises rank. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. And after this, like after the game was released, uh, the whole bullet hell sort of subgenre game traction and basically uh, became the only prevalent shooting game design yeah. for quite a long time. Yeah, yeah, it's just um, kind of funny just how the um, really, um, like in a narrow sense, bullet hell type game came into existence. Because the um, programmer of Jordan Pachi, I think, was it Nikita? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in an interview he said that he was uh, hugely inspired by Garaga and he wanted to make a shooting game and he knew before that he had no chance of ever programming a game being that good as Garega. So the yes. thing he did, the thing he thought was just let's throw in at least more bullets. Let's have at least more bullets than in Garega. And make exactly. it maybe not better but just have more bullets. Yeah. And yeah, he achieved just that. That's the only reason the main yeah. programmer uh, behind Garega, Shinobi Yagawa, uh, got a job at Cave by the way, because he was hired after rising but like a shooting part of a thing close down um, to basically make Garega 2, which was Iba. So, mm. right. yeah, there's quite a lot of history between those two guys. Yeah, there is. And they're still yeah. working together. <laughs> yeah, hopefully he'll actually make another game because we haven't heard from him for quite some time, I think. He's been working on Maho Ultima. Has he? Oh, yep. Okay. He and Ike and I have been doing that together. Okay. Oh, hopefully. At least that's what I heard from game industry types over in Japan, so I guess that's. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so th basically that was a bit about that part. And also, like, um, the reason this is such a big release in Japan now with the collector's edition and whatever is because the game has quite a cult following over there. Yeah. Um, both because of how weird it is and primarily because of the soundtrack, which was immensely popular when it was released. Mm -hmm. um, I think the um, there are like a lot of Super Play videos of Grega and the game as VHS video is the first one that was ever released and I think it's also the only super play release on the HS that also has the soundtrack included yeah I've got that video actually it's uh, it's yeah, a really same. nice package yeah 
Yes. Arcade yeah, soundtrack. If I remember correctly, it was released like on the Gamers Magazine number 27. Yeah. Yeah. And there was another um, Super Play VHS, uh, a Dojin one from Kamui. Uh, with I know, I got that one as well. Game. That's the unofficial one, and the rather official one was the Gamers release. Yeah. So we have two yes. of those um, VHS Super Play. And um, when talking about Super Plays, there was another Super Play DVD then released by Insanity Naked Hunter. I've uh, got that. Actually, yeah. the first one um, in that series, um, yeah. which featured four runs, one with Gain, one with um, Miyamoto, one with Silver Sword, and one with Grasso. And yeah. then there was an Omaki um, disc, so bonus disc featuring a higher score, Silver Sword. And this bonus disc is kind of hard to get by, but... Yeah. Okay, yeah, I have that at home too. <laughs> yeah, I've got that as well, yeah. yeah. Of course, we all have it, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. not a surprise to anybody. No. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. for the super plays that were officially uh, released on physical. Yeah. 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 Uh, it seems to have a lot of uh, collective value as well, though. Not just the games, but all the little merchandise bits and pieces as well, doesn't it? Yes. Right. Yes. Um, one kind of interesting thing is, uh, at least from what I heard when I spoke to the guys at M2 in the summer, was that the, the collector's edition has this like uh, uh, sort of the signed document thing in it. Uh, I haven't read it myself, so I don't know what's in it, but they were basically saying that it was supposed to outline the history of development behind the game and what went into the sign, and also uh, give more credit to a guy who's not been as credited as Yagawa before, the guy who did uh, a lot of stage design and art pretty much for the game. Hmm. Because it's not just like, it's not just a system that makes the game great in my opinion, it's a combination of all of the different factors, the aesthetics, like in terms of graphical art and music, and um, yeah. stage design is also super good. Uh, so it's not just like it has a weird ranking rank system and a lot of crazy scoring opportunities that make it, makes it great. It's just like it's a very solidly designed shooting game as well. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's quite rare to find a game like that now, which has got everything properly designed in it. I think. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And it feels like it has a very like thought out aesthetic. Yeah. Not not like yeah, fucking Mushima Sama Futari where you have dinosaur. <laughs> God knows what else. Cthulhu on the second yeah, stage. Yeah, there's like... no dinosaur in Garega. Only no. <laughs> <laughs> Only hard ass machinery and beating hearts. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, okay. I think that's good. Yeah, let's me. get on to the game. Yeah, yeah. Should we move straight on to systems then, yeah? Where do you want to start? Yeah. <laughs> this is the main question. What do you want to start with? <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, well, basics first, then, I guess. Um, you have three buttons in the game aside from movement, which are shot. Uh, bomb, or weapon as they call it in the game, and option manipulation. And what these buttons do, of course, is that shot, you shot and your options. And you can also change uh, the frequency of your shot rate, or whatever, uh, by tapping the, um, the shot button in yeah, different frequencies uh, or intervals. Uh, because you have all of these different shot ranges, which is like, I think, 8.2 Hz is the default. Um, next setup is 10 Hz, then you have 12, 15, 20, and 30. Yeah, this is a Swedish person speaking. Um, <laughs> and, um, well, uh, it's like, uh, we're going to get into that later, but basically different shot speeds or auto fire frequencies affect rank and frame rank in different ways. So you have that, and then you have the D button, the bomb deployment button, and um, what should be noted here, just as a quickie, <clears throat> is that there's no bomb invincibility in Garega, except for a couple of frames. So right when you deploy the bomb, you're invi invincible for like um, maybe two frames, three frames or something. Hmm. So you can just like squeeze past the bullet or something, but you're not in invincible when the bomb is deployed or anything like that. Um, I think that's predominantly with gain, though, isn't it? Uh, no, it's with every ship. Mm. It always seems yeah. like it's a little bit more with gain, though. Uh, I think you yeah, probably I use. I think it's a bit more with gain and ship. Yeah, uh, I think they have a few more frames, but um, 
Uh, with all of the other ships, it's like a very couple of few frames, but it's it's pretty um, it's pretty nice to know about it if you get trapped during a particularly harsh pattern, like at Black Heart 2 or something like that. Yeah, definitely. Or if you got a metal coming up that's um, obscured by bullets or something. Yeah, definitely. Yes, so that's the bomb, and um, the option manip manipulation button has um, five different formations that are like default. Yeah. Standard wide, which fires out in an arc. Um, back, which shoots backward, of course. And um, forward, which shoots straight forward. Uh, spinning or something, I don't know what it's called, rotating maybe? Yeah, rotating. Um, yeah, so it just rotates around your character, and if you hold in a directional button, the options start, stop rotating for a while. Yeah. Um, you also have follow, which basically, they freeze the options first at whatever angle you had them aimed at previously, and then they follow your ship in the opposite direction. Yeah. So if you move to the right, they follow and shoot to the left. Um, and um, I'm going to hit on all of these questions, by the way, because 10 hertz is... Um, uh, it is constant, consistently possible to hit, uh, very much so. Yeah. But anyways, uh, that's like basic movement system. Yeah. Just maybe um, one small um, addition to um, the term bomb versus the term weapon, because even though it may sound like um, quite a minor issue, I think it has quite um, complex implications, because when you use the term weapon, it doesn't sound like the typical bomb that you use in shmups that you use, no. for example, for survival, when like there's too many bullets and you're about to die, then you use it as a defense weapon. Yeah. Yes. Um, or as a defense bomb, and a weapon in Garega, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's intentionally called weapon in the original terminology. Well, the... That you use it as an attack weapon, like... Yeah, well, the idea is that... Secondary shot. Yeah. It, well, considering that you pick up weapon ammunition, or bomb fragments as we yeah, call them... Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, the intention is that you use it constantly whenever you've got it. And, uh, yes. Yeah. It's there. So really it really changes like the whole mentality of the game and how you approach if you call it weapon. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. exactly. It can be quite a major thing for yeah. you individually. Yeah. yeah, it's very similar to the way that the beam is used in Border Down or even the bomb is used in Flying Shark. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's used as an offensive weapon and as a way to gain score. And we're, I mean, we're going to get into that later, but in terms of design and like where you deploy the bombs, it's kind of interesting to see that on most places where you utilize this bomb, which is kind of like a safety measure in itself as well, um, it's usually on parts where survival is easy. Yeah. Like, there is no immediate threat, so you don't have to bomb to survive, but you waste your bombs in order to gain score instead, so it's just basic risk and reward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just think about the birds in stage two, right? It's yeah, not even survival like, there, not at all. Yeah, and like the places where you're supposed to bomb Mad Wolf, for example, is when he's not firing. So anytime you use a bomb, it's aside from maybe Black Heart 2, it's like, yeah, it's not defensive in any way whatsoever. It's just because you want them sweet points. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, so, okay, well, aside from that basic system, uh, we got medals. Which is like the main scoring system in the game, I guess. Yeah. Uh, they start off at uh, 100 value, point value, and they increase uh, by a factor of 100 until they reach 1000, and it's a factor of 1000 until they reach 10,000, yeah. at which point they max out. Yeah. And if you let a medal drop off the screen, this is kind of important. If you let a medal drop off the screen, the next medal that is spawned is going to be reset back to 100. Um, however, if you keep a medal on the screen while this previous medal drops off, you can still save your medal value by not shooting to get another medal and instead pick up this 10k one for yeah, just to keep continuing your chain. Yeah. Uh, basic stuff. Yeah. To not fuck up too horribly. Yeah, um, well, meddling takes up most of your scoring, so I think yeah, it's important it to actually maintain your chain for as long as possible. Um, yes. I mean, rebuilding it optimally from 100 to 10,000, I think you lose about, I think it was about 100 and 
fifty, hundred and thirty thousand, something like that. Yeah. So it's something yeah. like that if you do it optimally, which yeah. is kind of hard. Yeah, it's very yeah. rare that ah, you'll get the chance to do it optimally. So you probably yes. stand to lose a lot more from rebuilding. So it's always wise not to break your chain if possible. Yes. And apart exactly. from the penalty you get from uh, the scoring, you also have to collect like. The high rank medals we got to that we got to that later in a bit yes and, exactly um, it's, it's also bad for rank control so if yes. you are gonna playing for survival don't drop your metal chain and if you're playing for um, scoring don't drop your metal chain yeah so basically yeah, and, don't drop your metal chain yes um and i would say in general uh, at least like when you're trying to survive and stuff it's usually worth it to build medals up at the beginning and keep them until you lose them, pretty much, because you gain so much score, extra lives, and it's worth the offset of getting a bit higher rank than not getting any medals at right, all. Right. So if we so, extra lives again, it's bad to drop. Um, so never, just never drop them. Yes. So I think we should go into Even. rank system a bit briefly, like just explain. Yeah, let's talk about rank. Okay. Go for it. Yes. Um, Okay. Should I do this or does anybody? Uh, well, I can I can give like a very um, beginner's overview. Yes. So, because yeah, nice. the rank system is really um, kind of simple. I mean, a lot of um, people talk about just how difficult Garaga is and how difficult the rank system is. It's and, not. Um, it it, it no, frightens people, simple. but it's it's very very simple. So if you're a beginner, if you want to pick up better Garaga um, and don't want to mess up the rank, um, they are just basically um, some very easy things you got to remember. The first thing being, um, do not collect any excess items. So yes. if you have full power, you can collect any more power items. If you have four items, uh, collect, uh, I mean, option, option, then, option items, and especially the option item. That's yes. the thing you could possibly do for rank. So try to stay on two options for just five stages or something. Which before, but never collect any. Um, yeah, the exactly. second thing is, um, and we had that, um, the medals from 100 to especially the 400 medal is worse for rank. So the medal chain, and if you have dropped it maybe later in the game, if you're playing for survival and you drop your medal chain in stage 6, for example, just um, try not to build it up. Yeah. I, I would say, though, that in, in general, like in the late game, Especially during stage seven, uh, yeah, you really don't can't. Care about that. Yeah, you, you really can't do that much to affect rank anyway. So if you build a value, it isn't going to affect rank that negatively. Um, but in general, like as you said, don't pick up excessive power ups. Know that options increase rank by the highest amount, or well, decreases depending on how you see. Um, and basically, what rank does to the player is that it increases item drop speed, so items will be falling down the sc screen. Uh, it increases the amount of popcorn enemies that are spawned. It increases enemy health. It increases uh, the bullet, like it increases bullet density. Uh, it increases bullet speed a bit as well, I think. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, which sucks. And um, yeah, that's basically what it does. It makes the game harder, pretty much. Um, but if you're playing like regularly, if you're not hoarding your lives above three lives in stock at all times and not picking up excessive power-ups everywhere, and if you don't set your auto fire to the highest frequency, you're never going to experience really high rank. Hmm. Like this ridiculously high rank is something that you got to work incredibly hard to achieve. Yeah. It's really hard to get to max rank. Mm -hmm. um, and. If you're playing it like any sort of shit and don't do anything stupid, then rank will never get uncontrollable. Right. So, I think that's one of the things that where, at least, you know, I was kind of, uh, when I was started out playing, I was uh, explaining away my mistakes when I was playing by, oh yeah, I did this little thing here, so rank got crazy, and then I died. In reality, it was just that I wasn't used enough to the game and the stage design to survive. Yeah, it's it's not the rank when you fail, it's you, and it's not the invisible bullets. <laughs> um, <No. laughs> don't try to find any excuses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but really, um, Garega, if you're playing it um, just the way you play any other shooting game, just fine. It will not fuck you up. It 
Yeah, and I think uh, that was kind of excellently shown by Banana Magic quite recently, honestly. Right. Yeah, he picked up the game and cleared it in, I think, two weeks or something with Yamato, which is a really easy fix. Uh, not doing anything special, just keeping in mind not to do what's known as stupid stuff for rank. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, that's basically it. So, uh, I'm gonna go with, this is a bit more advanced, but you should understand the reason for why you're not doing certain stuff, like... Um, Auto-fire frequency. Um, what auto-fire frequency affects is something called frame rank, which is basically uh, an amount that rank increases per frame of the game, and it's not something you can affect other than racing it by either picking up small shot icons and leveling up through that, special formations with options for uh, increasing auto fire yeah um and the thing is if you increase auto fire it multiplies frame rank so eventually if you raise your auto fire enough you will end up with crazy frame rank which if you do it early in the game will make sure that you have ridiculously high rank at the end of the game and you can't recover from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the only, like, from when the frequency starts to affect frame rank uh, is after or above 10 hertz. So if you keep to 10 hertz or below auto fire, you're never going to notice anything special at all. Yeah. Yeah. 10 hertz yeah. is generally recommended for most play anyway, so. <laughs> yes. And I've learned that the hard way um, quite late. It was when I was going for the high score with Bornem. Yeah, I remember and, that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was I was reaching stage six constantly, but the rank was so high it was just impossible. And I've reached um, stage seven um, times and got to black heart mark two, and the yep. rank was that high that I was not able to destroy the grenades with Bonham's main shot anymore. And uh, remember that he doesn't have any pierce things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, I I couldn't just penetrate those bullets anymore. They were penetrated. <laughs> yeah, I remember I, I did a lot of stuff like that to uh, Wild Snail when I played it, and uh, just, I don't, I don't know, I raised my auto frequency to 15 or 12 hertz or something in the beginning, and I was so surprised because I thought like, oh, I'm controlling rank, but every yeah. time I go to Mad Ball yeah. 2, yeah. I always got like, uh, you know, his big circular pattern. Normally, yeah. if you have low or normal rank, you only have to dodge it once, and then you can sit in a safe spot on the upper left side of the screen. Yeah. Uh, but any time I got to Mad Ball 2, I had to dodge it twice. And I was like, why Why do I have to do this? It's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, yeah. So really, the best rank control, uh, the safest strategies for rank, um, cannot help you anything when you um, out of Remember that. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Um, and aside from that, um, okay, just basic stuff. Uh, item drop order. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I don't think we need to lay out the whole thing, though. I think the most important point is just that medals always follow small shot items. That's the only yes. thing I ever really needed to remember, and that's the only thing I ever tell people to learn. Because there's no point in learning the entire drop order because it's not going to help you at any point. It's only the medals, locations, and the drop it, order. It is, though, in some ways. In, in some, some ways, ways yeah. In yeah. some ways, it can well, help you. But in most what, cases, it doesn't. What's kind of important? Uh, this is like a, a bit of a trick uh, that I learned quite recently, honestly. Um, if you want to pick up, because we're going to get into special formations and stuff like that. But, yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm saving that for that part. Uh, but anyways, uh, you can learn a lot about when to pick up stuff by observing item drop order. Yeah. And the order, in case anyone didn't know, is uh, you start off with a single shot power-up icon, which goes to a medal, which goes to shot, to medal, to option, shot, and repeat. So you could say it comes in a cycle of five pretty much, with option, shot, medal, shot, medal. And after, I don't know how many cycles, but eight or something, uh, you get a big shot power-up as well, which powers your level up immediately or gives you 5,000 points if you're at max shot level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's item drop order. Yeah. Okay, special formation, special power-ups. Exactly stuff. what I was talking about. <laughs> yes. Um, so, first of all, you can get special option formations, which are wide. Which or they work kind of like the uh, uh, what, what do you call it the 
the spread shot or whatever. Um, the the base um, option formation, just that they fan out even wider. So they cover you from all directions except from down, pretty much. Yeah. Um, you have search, which like uh, the options stay close to your ship, but they home in for enemies and stuff that's shootable. Yeah, the worst kind of search, though. <laughs> yes, and then you have homing, which is basically that the options just latch onto anything that's shootable and shoots it in its uh, lifesaver in yeah. the la latter parts of the game. Yeah, best kind of search. Um, yes. <laughs> and then you have all of these weird stuff like, uh, what are they called? Uh, the you have like uh, follow or something? Ch it's chain, I think, isn't it? The one you're thinking yeah, of. Yeah, chain. Yeah. Yeah, because you can chain it together with two players options as well. It, it just nobody uses that stuff, but yeah. it, it still exists. The gradius options, I call them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And in order to get all of these, uh, to get search, uh, the bad one, uh, you miss five option icons and you pick up an option. Uh, to get homing, you miss five bomb fragments exactly, and then you pick up an option. Mm -hmm. And to get wide, you miss five shot icons exactly, and pick up options. Mm -hmm. uh, aside from this, every ship also has a special shot level up, where you power up past the maximum limit. Uh, which means different things for different ships, but... Um, in general, it's usually a good thing to do in the later parts of the game, or when you want to milk something specific with certain ships. And um, this is achieved by missing exactly five small shot icons, collecting a small shot icon. So it's kind of it's the same thing as collecting a white option power up, except you pick up a shot icon at the end instead, and you're at uh, the preview, the normal max power level. Yeah. Um, also, in order to do this, because white is useful in a lot of situations, and you know you need to know how to trigger a special shot. What I usually do to keep track of these things easily is I pick up a small shot icon directly after an option mm, okay. because what this means is that it will cycle through five times exactly and after it's gone through uh, five missed shot power-ups the next item that's gonna appear is an option mm -hmm. so I know that if I pick up any of those like if I pick up an option or the following shot power-up I'm gonna get either yeah, I'm gonna get wide shot and I'm gonna get special power up. So I know exactly what to look for by doing that, and it's a it's a pretty good way of like getting a good setup for triggering those, those things when you need them. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's that's. That. <laughs> I think one thing I just realized when I was playing the um, revision 2016 is that for you to actually get the special options to trigger properly you have to pick something up for it to reset because you know the little the little um, widget at the bottom right corner which tells you what options um, are available and what yeah. power-ups you've dropped that doesn't actually reset if you miss the um, option pickup you have to pick no. up something else to reset it and then drop exactly. another five so that's one thing a lot of people have to remember is that for you to actually get the special options you need to reset it correctly first and then drop your you know your power-ups or whatever and then get the option yeah you can do that either by like if you trigger wide for example you can reset it either by dropping another shot icon or um uh, like uh, i don't know picking up a shot icon or something yeah um just something to either reset it or get it away with because that's one of the reasons when uh, I play through stage six where I want to keep homing at all times when I've triggered homing I occasionally just pick up random small shot icons because I don't want to reset and get something else something weird yeah yeah I do that all the time I pick up random shot icons just to ensure that I don't accidentally get wide or something exactly because wide is pretty good for the stage though but it's it, it yeah. can fuck you over yeah. completely sometimes as well. I mean, White has its uses, it's just in stage 6 you ideally want homing no matter what ship you're using, I think, so... Yes. <laughs> yeah, and the worst is really when you have homing activated and then accidentally you activate White. That's really bad. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. That happens. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, that happens quite often. Or yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, especially during stage 6, yeah. 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 <laughs> especially, like, if you accidentally pick up an option right before Junkie Monkey and you lose out on your home. It sucks so hard. Yeah, yeah, it does. Because that's a boss that's super easy with homing and gets kind of annoying without it, so... 
Yeah. Especially yeah. the first, the, I think it's the second form, when it's actually yeah. settled and you've got all the turrets on the side. If you've got homing, that thing takes like three seconds to kill, but if you don't, you have yeah, to go and, through. And you can also, you can also get the very easy 50k from that one. Yeah. Yeah. If you, and that's much easier to trigger with home. Yeah. Do enough damage to the core without destroying all parts. So. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay. But, uh, yes. Yeah, so that was that. And mm -hmm. let's see here. Resource management. <laughs> um, I would say this is like basic game philosophy, pretty much. Yeah. Um, and basically, if you're scoring in this game, um, it kind of goes like in a cyclic sort of pattern where um, you're hoarding lives and bombs or bomb fragments resources for a specific part where you use these resources to capitalize and gain score. Yeah. Um, both by suiciding and bombing and doing all sorts of stuff like that. Yeah. Which means that you will get back your lives or at least and then you can repeat the process and just gain more score and so on and so forth. Yeah, exactly. Uh, in general though, if you want to get like the maximum amount of point gain for all of your strategies, you really have to plan out your rounds when it comes to these resources. Yeah. Like uh, how many bombs you have or lives, which can make a big difference with some of the weirder ships, like uh, when you're approaching Madbolt, for example, uh, with a ship like uh, Grasshopper, which both needs a lot of bomb fragments to be able to bomb and capitalize on the outer rings, yeah. while you also need to suicide. And it's like um, when you approach the boss, you want to suicide before to decrease rank and score more easily on the platforms previously. Yeah. Um, uh, and like save up bomb fragments so you don't have to suicide that much and pray to god that you don't die on nose laughing 2 yeah. before man Ball 2 yeah. or do you want to save up your lives and suicide them away on nose laughing 2 um, to get a final suicide on mad ball and the score yeah and all of that is like yeah, at least to me a route is usually pretty fluid because a lot of things in the game are random yeah. And you don't, you can't exactly tell how much points you're going to be having at each specific point. So you usually have to adapt your route yeah. depending on the kind of luck you've been getting. Yeah. I think just to clarify um, for the people in chat that when we talk about resource management, we're talking about lives and bombs, not just bombs yes. on their own. Because in Garaga, exactly. lives are a resource as well um, for both survival and scoring. Yes. <laughs> anyway, you were saying? Yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> basically I, I would say that's the main things that you need to plan out and route in the game. Yeah. Um, and you also have to like, um, uh, you gotta know approximately how much you can get from the different parts of the game. I would say just like checking your score, knowing what you can get before and checking what you get every time. Mm -hmm. um, it's an important part and like working out your routes and knowing what you should be doing and seeing what you can for an example i would say one of the more easier ships to play for score is bornan because he's very consistent with everything he does yeah in terms of scoring right that's why we like him <laughs> yes yeah. yes it, it's a very non frustrating ship to play uh and for an example with bornan you'll know that if you've done everything correctly then the first bomb on mad ball 2 is always going to give you close to 1 million points if you do it correctly yeah like it's very consistent mm -hmm. and of course every other part destroying the time yeah I mean, all, all of the tricks um, that you need to score with with bornem are very consistent to achieve so unlike yes. all of some of the other ships where you need a heavy dose of rng oh, yeah. <laughs> or you need a very specific setup and you know if you're not doing it yeah. properly uh, yeah it can be quite yeah annoying. i gotta say like going first with um like if you using wild snail as your first ship if you're trying to just, uh, I, I don't know. I don't think it's a good choice for a first ship to play in the game, honestly. <laughs> it's funny because it was my first choice when I started playing it. <laughs> it was yeah, it was my first one. choice as well. And it was all yeah, right. I, I, yeah. think, I can see people yeah. start. Yeah, because it's very, very RNG dependent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like almost everything in the game. Uh, there are some things you can get consistent at, but uh, yeah, it, it's very frustrating when you're trying to play it. Play it at a higher level because you can get so fucked over on small things that you 
like I don't know, there are things you can do to affect it, but oh yeah, some things are just out of your own control. Yeah, I mean, I got annoyed with the game for a while after um, when I was playing as Wild Snail, primarily because of Mad Ball trying to get the yes. optimum scoring off him. It's like you end up restarting at least four out of five attempts, and it got kind of annoying. So yeah, and the the worst thing is when you get to Mad Ball two and that happens, and you've already played through like half the game. Yeah, and there, <laughs> there goes the other half of the run. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it, it can happen. I mean, we we're going to do discussing that on Mad Ball properly later, but yeah, it, typical situation with Wild Snake was like, what you have to do is first of all, you got a suicide when he's shooting at you with all of the turrets out, and yeah. he's heading downwards. Yeah. Um. But what you need to do later after that is pray that he stays on the lower half of the screen. And what happens like 50% of the time is he goes down to the bottom of the screen and as soon as you've suicided and respawned, he just heads straight on up. Mm. And all of the bombable parts become invincible. Yep. So you're Happen fucked. Happens all the time though. <laughs> yes. Uh. And that's like, um, yeah. That's why <laughs> the, the, in, in Japan they call Wild Snail a very tsundere ship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because mm. it's yeah, yeah, it's the way it works. Yeah, yeah. Kuzo they should ball. really call Mad Ball. It's some... <laughs> oh yeah, fuck ball. Yeah, <laughs> because he's just mad and he's a ball. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a bit like you know. Okay, no, I'm not even gonna say. <sighs> Mad Ball's a bit like your side bitch. You know? <laughs> <laughs> when she finds out what you've been doing, it's like, <laughs> I'm gonna get you for this! <laughs> uh. Okay, yeah, well, anyways, um, broad and generalized tips for once you see. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, if you want to clear the game uh, with a decent score, first of all, never lose your medal, Shane, and if you do, don't really. Um, don't go, any go for any crazy tricks with bombing, because bombing increases my back file. Um, and. Okay, and um, don't race auto fire beyond 10 hertz. Yeah, that's don't pick up excessive items, and never keep more than three lives and stuff. Yeah. Very simple things. Yeah. If you do all of those things, then rank will never go crazy. Mm -hmm. It will all be a matter of learning stage design and boss behavior. Yeah, stage design is generally static anyway, so you can learn yes. the stages pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you just want to clear it quickly, just do some safe states on the stages and bosses and yeah. learn what you're supposed to do, put it together in a run, and there you go, there's a clear. Yeah, I mean, there are some key sections that you probably will have to learn, like, say, the wall, for example, that's always a pain in the ass to yeah. deal with. Uh, and Blackheart 2. And Blackheart 2, yeah, but otherwise, the rest of the game, I would say, you can knock out quite consistently once you have a fairly fairly con uh, fairly decent root um, set in yes. stone definitely yeah most definitely yeah and uh, the more you play the game the more you learn these things and stuff that seemed impossible before will become manageable after a while anyway so yeah exactly it's just a matter of playing the game yeah just play the game <laughs> yes mm. um so yeah that's that's basically it i mean you don't really have to think about anything Nah. Anything crazy. Yeah. Um, uh, the only thing I would say, like rank management, or like a high level, when you when you really have to like keep down rank to really low levels, only comes into play when you're scoring for specific parts. Yeah. Yeah. Like um, we're gonna be talking about that later, but stage five flying platforms. Yeah. Mad Ball yeah. two. Yeah. And um, Black Horde. To in some senses, if you want to max out rank, yeah. nobody does that anyway. So <laughs> yeah, very few people do. I don't think anyone's that yes. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we know one who is, though. Yeah, we know one who is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh god. But yeah, I think that's pretty good advice. Is that you know just learn some of the trickier parts of the later game and I think you can get pretty consistent with clearing the game after you know a little bit of practice I mean Banana Maddox already done it uh, we already yeah, talked exactly. about yeah we already talked about his methodology earlier and that he just yeah. practiced you know played mindful of the rank system and didn't really do anything stupid in quotes um, yes. and he actually knocked it out pretty quickly so I think most people can probably do it if they mm. just really put their mind to it I think 
And if they choose a ship that's not stupid as well. Yeah, choose a ship that's not stupid. I do see a lot of people jumping into gain, which is kind of hilarious, I think, like considering how hard gain is to manage, usually. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Especially for scoring. Exactly. Um, yeah. I mean, survival is not really that hard with any ship, mm -hmm. but um, scoring with gain can be really tricky sometimes. Especially yeah. with this one. There is a lot of jumping through hoops you have to do to actually score optimally with gain and. Uh, yeah, I yes. don't think many people actually have it down. Um, it is easy to get a letter score from him, but you know, when you've got a, a maximum point gain of about 21 and a half million, I don't think it's that hard to get exactly. a letter score. <laughs> yeah, I would say in general, if, you, if you're going for that kind of like level of play, just play Vorden because it's so much less frustrating. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah I, you know, we're going to be talking about ships now anyway, so we can just like go over them and discuss, discuss the pros and cons because we're getting in. Yeah. Sort of stuff. yeah, okay, cool. Uh, do we start so, with... Who do we start with? Silver Sword, of course. We're going to do this in the right order. <laughs> okay, well, we've got the Silver Sword replay up at the moment, so go ahead and talk. Yeah, that's a good fit. <laughs> um, I think Plasmo hates the ship, so he should maybe <laughs> not talk that much about it, but uh, both you and I have played it quite a lot, right? Yeah, I've played it a bit, yeah. I do enjoy the Silver Sword a lot. It's... Uh, it's, it's it's kind of a quirky little ship, but um, the ship does feel... It has throwbacks to Gun Frontier, obviously, with the directional yes, napalm. Bomb. Yeah. yeah, but um, it's one of the more balanced ships, I think, in terms of both scoring and survival, apart from the birds with the homing, uh, with the directional napalm, which is kind of annoying, but otherwise, you can do it's quite really well with good, it. It's really good, though. Yeah, you can do quite I, well with it. You know, one thing that's kind of interesting is that if... You know, I've, I've done some, basically, some homebrewed calculating on this, and if Wild Snail didn't have a piercing shot, then Silver Sword would be the highest scoring of all the regular Garega ships. Seriously? Mm, yes. That's interesting to know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, his bomb is really good. It's the best of the Garega ship, hands yeah. down, no question whatsoever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, like, a couple of quirks to know about in terms of, like, differences between the ships is that Silver Sword's hitbox is very low down on the ship. Yeah, it's it's one of the weirder hitboxes in the game. <clears throat> Which is really good for some situations because you can pick up medals that seem like they would have disappeared otherwise, but yeah. um, it takes some getting used to when you're dodging patterns and stuff like that. Yep. Yeah. I think uh, one of yeah. the weird things about the hitbox is when you're trying to do nose laughing and you know, if you go through the standard process of destroying, oh, nice. you know, the right side turret and then getting into the top right corner to try and shoot the front propeller, the hitbox is so far back that you get sniped by the, the main cannon. That's really annoying. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, uh, this is kind of like um, something that offsets that whole paradigm uh, in that um, since the hitbox is so low, you're able to go very high up the screen. Yeah. Which means that if you have your boss routed out correctly, you can kill off the front propeller with 10 hertz auto fire even before the center turret has even spawned. Yeah. Um, and it's also the only ship that has a safe spot in the upper corners during the circular spread uh, from no slapping. All right. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. If you sit in the uppermost left corner, and I I don't know if it affects it, but you know I just point my options to the side to shoot. The front propeller. Yeah, uh, it's the total safe spot. You can't hit it. <laughs> so that's really nice. Yeah, and um, yeah, uh, rank increase is super low. Yeah. Uh, one of the lowest ships in the game. Yeah, um, it, it's also quite powerful. Uh, yeah. It does a lot more damage than Flying Baron, for example. <laughs> Everything uh, does more damage than Flying Baron, though. <laughs> yeah, Baron sucks. Baron, Baron is fucking useless. But um, <laughs> it's cool though, and it and it looks like the. So I yeah. like it. Yeah. Um, it's also fast, which is nice. But I think uh, Silver Sword has a very balanced ship speed as well. Yeah, it's a good ship to learn the game with. I find though, if you're not willing to go it with is. one of the more complicated Garaga ships or the Maho characters. Yeah, and the bomb is really good. Uh, from all of the Garaga ships, uh, Silver Sword gets the most points out of both Mad Balls. Yeah. And also, um, he also gets the most points from. Most shrapnel, like, um, I think any ship in the game can get all of the shrapnel from the stage 5 uh, mid-boss slayer. Yeah. Um, but both, let's see here, uh, Grasshopper is pretty good for the shrapnel on stage 7. Yeah. Uh, Flying Baron and Wild Snail are worthless, totally worthless. Yeah. Um, 
but wild snail can get the full points which is like 420k or something 420 yeah, it's a lot um, yeah, it's a it's a dang score yeah uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and, and you know milking the bosses and everything is really good the only down boring like when you compare it to the other ships is that it don't doesn't have a piercing shot but yeah. that's offset by low rank anyway so yeah exactly you can destroy most stuff with silver sword compared to the other garaga ships which probably have it a lot worse <laughs> Yes, mm -hmm. it's a really, really nice ship. It is, um, and I would say that's probably the best ship to pick up if anybody wants to play a classic regular ship. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, yeah, that's that. And then we have the best ship in the game, Grasshopper. <laughs> 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 really? <laughs> yeah, it, it's um, it's without a doubt the hardest ship to use, I would say. Um, yeah. Both in terms of survival and scoring. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very technical, requires a lot of precision and knowing a lot about the game in yeah. order to like, take it full advantage of it. Yeah. Uh, for an example, yeah, let's go. That's even my replay, I think. Yeah, yeah it is yours. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's why the score is so low. But anyways, <laughs> uh, um, his, uh, he, he has very slow ship speed. Uh, which sucks, of course. Yeah. Uh, he has a super narrow shot. It only fires straight in front of him. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be able to like shoot destructible bullets that approach you from the side or anything, uh, you gotta use options. So let's like take a classic scenario: Black Heart Two. Um, he does like this destructible bullet thingy, and you get hit by something, and all of your options disappear off the screen. When that happens, you're fucked. You can't do anything. And it's the same thing with Glow Squid as well, like on the last form, with all the destructible bullets and shit. If you don't have options there, you're gonna die. Yeah. You can't do anything about it at all. Um, so that's why he's hard for survival. Yeah. His bomb is really finicky to use with uh, everything except for Madball, maybe. Madball is pretty easy, but he doesn't gain that many points. Yeah. Um, a lot of it is very timing dependent. I think he has the hardest time getting points off the shrapnel of the Slayer, for example. Yeah, because you um, have to use the uh, shell casings to do it, don't you? Yes. Um, <laughs> the stage 7 thingy shrapnel is kind of... It's a bit easier, um, but um, it's um, it's also very timing dependent. you got to have a lot of bomb fragments and you got to deploy the bomb quite a while in advance before it starts exploding because the... The spent shell casings is what you'll be using to destroy the shrapnel fragments. Yeah. And the spent casings go very slowly down the screen, and you gotta make sure that they're covering the entire screen when the thing explodes, so... Yeah. It's got a bit of a weird timing, but you'll get used to it eventually. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and also, this is one of the biggest factors in my mind, if you want to do any decent scoring on parts where you're just, like, shooting with a piercing shot on indestructible parts to get points, you gotta power up to special shot level up yeah. by missing five shot icons because otherwise you're gaining like so it's completely useless. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's Grasshopper. Really hard ship to use. But it's kind of fun when you when you're used to it, <laughs> uh, and you don't get completely fucked over by bullshit. Like yeah, I do here. notice um, a lot of. Uh, a lot of players do tend to use Grasshopper for an easy clear, though, compared to Wild Snail. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's because um, the Grasshopper... Oh, yeah, I missed that. Um, the Grasshopper main shot does... I think the most... Da yeah, it does the most damage of any main shot in the game. And it's also... So you can speed bosses very, very easily. Yeah. Yeah. Focus on the core, they're dead very quickly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, nose laughing, any incarnation can die in, like... Four or five seconds or something yeah. with concentrated shots to the core. Yeah. So it's kind of good for survival in that sense that it does a lot of damage. But yeah. um, you you could say it's kind of like I don't know if anybody plays, but it's kind of like Makoto in first strike. It's all attack and no defense whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a fun ship. Uh, after that, we have what I would call the most annoying ship to play: Flying Baron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Plasma, what do you think about Baron? Well, I think it's just not that bad, maybe. Um, I mean, his bomb looks at least cool. It's not very useful, but um, 
I don't know, the whole style, just from a design standpoint, of it just appeals to me. But yeah, yes. as for gameplay, as for high scoring, it definitely has its downsides. So, um, yes. The bomb is very weak, one of the weakest, um, yeah. a bit longer from the duration than from Grasshopper. Exactly. Um, other than that, there's no piercing shot whatsoever, so um, his power against bosses is not that good. No, but it's not always kinda, in the game. You, you kind of get used to it. He's uh, faster than grass uh, than than and grasshopper, so that's uh, yep. plus again. And, and he also and, has low rank increase. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you can handle rank uh, better. Yes. And if we compare the world record scores, just for reference, Flying Baron actually scores higher than just a tad yes. bit higher than grasshopper. So uh, yeah, I, I I I don't think he's that bad, but he's quite bad. <laughs> yeah, and he looks cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's fast, which I think is nice because you can more easily pick up stray medals and um, like macro dodge some patterns that you couldn't with the slow ship. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's very one useful more thing for them. maybe to add to the coolness of the um, ship is that the ABC variant when you choose called Black Zeppelin. Yes, yeah. it's just an amazing name for that yes. kind of ship. <laughs> Kaiser feeling. <laughs> so yeah, like if you just want to have a good style going, uh, choose Flying Baron. If you want to play the game yeah, properly, yeah. never think about it. Yeah, well, I, I think he's kind of funny, but uh, yes. the worst part about him for me is that he's, his bomb is so weird. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. Because uh, he, as you can see, he deploys missile in a very, like, a Mach cross. Um, yeah. But the thing is, the bombs have different properties depending on if you're point blanking or if you are allowing the missiles to actually like gain some traction and then hit the top. Because if you're point blanking with the bomb, it does no damage whatsoever, like super low damage. But if you let the missiles go out and hit their targets, they do like at least twice damage. That's so so weird. that's why, for example, <laughs> uh, I would say best example is over here in stage six. Um, you want to be, like, with all the Garega ships, you want to be uncovering the, the tank hatches with bomb to get medals. And um, if you do that with most of the ships, you lay on them pretty much point blank and you bomb and you get the, the hatch to spawn medals. But if you do that with uh, Flying Baron, it's going to take, like, even with super low rank, it's going to take, like, six bomb fragments to uncover a single hatch if you do it point blank. But if you do it from a distance and manipulate the flying missiles to hit the hatches while flying, it only takes like three. That's so weird how that bomb works. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a really strange quirk. And it, it, it's actually the same with the birds, which we're going to go into later. Yeah, you where... don't point blank the birds, you actually sit away from them, don't you? <laughs> yes, uh, so you usually sit at the top of the screen to make sure that the birds aren't bombed so that the missiles can go down and hit the birds or something because you get more points that way. It's yeah. it's really weird, really weird. <laughs> mm. uh, but yeah, he, he's kind of a fun ship, but also frustrating because he's also very orange dependent, like yeah, the other ship we're going to be covering now, Wild Snail. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Wild Snail. <laughs> Snaily snail, 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 snail. Let me see. Yeah. That. Your favorite ship, eh? I think you're more uh, qualified to talk about this than anybody else. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, honestly, th this is kind of like... I, I we're talking about our history with it, but uh, I was exclusively a Wild Snail player until... Um, oh, that's my replay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> until, uh, like, uh, maybe a year ago or something? I don't know, a year and a half ago, uh, when I started playing other ships. Uh, because I got, like, in a rut where... Um, I was, I don't know, I just got frustrated with the game and, you know, I was playing and uh, I felt like I wasn't making any progress and everything was just so RNG dependent that I, I I didn't really feel like playing anymore, but then I played other ships and, you know, basically I, I leveled up immediately because I got a better understanding of the game. So anyways, Wild Snail is a very slow ship, has very slow ship speed, uh, which is annoying for collecting medals and doing the medal rates and stuff like that. Um, it has a very strong main shot, which is piercing, and you get a lot of points for like t uh, shooting uh, invincible stuff like wings and shit. Um, 
It also has a very weird bomb, which is... Um, the way they work is they're flamethrowers. When you deploy them, they home in on... Uh, I don't know if it's the closest, I don't think it is, but it's basically they home in on a uh, shootable hitbox. So anything that's shootable on screen, it will home into. Hmm. Um, and the flames do a lot of damage, but they're, they're, you, you aren't really able to control them if there are a lot of targets on screen. So you don't really know where it's going to hit. And um, this is especially for annoying for doing stuff like the birds, uh, where sometimes you can get him to like completely hone in on like the small clusters you really want, and other times he's just gonna go and fire off it into like the horizon or something. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's really weird. Yeah. And also, like we were talking about before with uh, Baron, uh, is that the mad balls especially. Uh, which is already a very RNG dependent boss, which we'll cover later. Uh, Wild Snail and Baron have the hardest mad balls because they have to use a suicide trick, which is dependent on RNG in twice the amount of instances that a regular ship is. Yeah. So it's twice as hard, and usually you don't get anywhere near full points from it. So. It's a frustrating ship to play for score, but it's it's kind of fun. Yeah, I mean, I think I had quite a lot of fun when I played with it, like, but it's just, obviously, the mad balls got pretty annoying to actually do consistently, which is why I moved to a different ship. But um, it does yeah. have a lot of... Um, does lo have a lot of positives, at least for beginners as well, I think, because it's so strong that you can take down bosses just as quickly as, say, the grasshopper does, um, if you're playing for speed kills. Yeah. And safety, yeah. I would say it's not, it's not a bad choice for... Beginners. Yeah, but um, it seems to um, it seems to be like when we talk about rank that uh, it, it seems quite quickly. Um, yeah, it has. I think it has the highest ranking. Yeah, it's it's quite difficult in that regard. But if you um, yeah. keep your lives low and just very bit a minimum of um, rank management, you'll be fine. Yeah, beginner. Yeah, yeah. But still, One if thing... you're playing high score, um, fine Baron, then expect some higher rank than you do. Yeah. Yeah. And Wild Snail is like, um, I think the biggest thing you can do basically to keep down rank in most parts of the game is to never power up to the fourth shot level, yeah. which is double yeah, piercing shots. Yeah. Luckily, you never need it because you're sub you never yeah. really need Exactly, unless you're milking and going for a high score. But if you're playing regularly, just keep to the third shot level and just fire. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um... So yeah, that's him. And then we have uh, the man of the hour, pretty much. Gain, <laughs> gain, yeah. Uh, gain, gain, gain. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, gain. Everyone so, likes gain, um, though. <laughs> yeah. As we all know, of course, gain is the highest scoring ship by far, by yeah. quite a large margin. Yeah. Um, yes. Miyamoto being on second, but um, the difference mainly comes from various um, tactics that you can only do gain for example a suicide trick on the birds you really only do with no you gain. can do that with shifter too yeah uh, yeah well yeah with Chitta, but who plays with Chitta, right <laughs> um, so, um, basically um and playing on a really high rank to uh, get enormous score potential on black heart mark to uh, really only profitable with gain because you have those strong options, sword-like options, yeah. they've increased yes. the rank quite badly. Yeah. But if you look yeah. at the frequency, um, it's not that bad actually. So yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, to, um, with the other ships, it's not necessarily worse. Even though, if you just look at the numbers, yeah. they appear so high. But because of the frequency, yeah. it's um, relative. I think. Um, and they're really strong. So you only have uh, those for piercing, and your main shot has no um, potential whatsoever. Yeah. But you don't really need it. So if you have gain and you're playing for survival, let's say, you can beat the game with two options uh, throughout the game and you'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah, um, except for black or two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there are. You probably uh, switch to some more. Um, yeah. When talking about the bomb, it's one of the best. Yeah, and the main reason for it. And the duration and the power. And so. Yeah, but it's not very, only very that. Easy but it, the biggest reason that it's so good is that you can deploy multiple at the same time. Yeah. That's what yeah, gives him his high scoring potential. Yeah, there are only a few ships, mainly this and Jitter, I think. Um, you can yes. shoot like, more bombs at once. Yeah. 
Exactly. Um, especially useful again on the boats. And uh, the yeah. duration is really long, which is um, quite handy. And if you're looking at the scoring strategies for the mad balls, they are very, very easy. And you only yes. need to depend on the RNG for it once. And yeah. Really, yeah. I, I wouldn't say that it's that bad as a beginner's job. No, um, and he, he, also re he also requires the least amount of bomb fragments for Mad Ball of yeah. all the ships. Yeah, right, right. So, so while it has like a huge potential, as we've said earlier, like let us go with game, it's not that difficult. Yeah. No. But I would say that in general, like, um, he, he's kind of he's kind of weird. It, it takes a lot of getting used to using the op because. Um, the major drawback to them is that there can only be one option shot fired on the screen at the same time. Yeah. Right. So in terms of survival with all of the other ships where you would have sort of like a stream coming out from your options, um, Gain will only have one single sword come out at a time, and that can fuck with destructible bullets and stuff like that. So... I, I don't know, and it, and when you're doing stuff like scoring, like uh, scoring on the flying platforms is... Uh, I think it's the hardest to do with game of all the ships in the game. Hmm. Because there are a lot of things to like... Agree, but, yeah. What? I probably wouldn't agree, but I don't think it's... Um, but, um, yeah. Be especially during... The, like, if you want to get the maximum amount of points where you want to destroy uh, like uh, the core part of the flying platforms, you want to destroy both forms with uh, non-piercing shots. Yeah. Um, and doing that with um, with gain and his options, like making sure that you don't take the core with piercing, is kind of challenging. Like it's uh, it's definitely harder than anything any other ship has to do. Yeah, you do have to jump through a lot more hoops in order to score decently with gain. I find like especially in the later stages where you've got a lot of um, option juggling to do and you know resource yeah. management to do. I mean, even stage five is way harder than anything with any other ship, just with game, yeah. because of the amount of stuff you have to deal with. Yeah, I agree. Um, on the other hand, he's like, in general, he's easier to play than Shifta or <laughs> yeah. uh, Grasshopper, of course. But yeah, yeah, it's it's more definitely more complicated than an easy ship like Miyamoto or Bo. Yeah. So yeah, okay, and after that we have Shifta, right? The chitter. Oh boy. Yes. Chitter, chitter, chitter. <laughs> yeah, she, she's one of the weirder ships in the game. Mm -hmm. um, her bomb is by far the weirdest, uh, no question there. Uh, it's uh, an area effect bomb, like uh, what uh, Gain and Bornham are using as well. Yeah. But it's much less powerful, um, and it has a huge delay to it. And it lasts probably the least amount of time. Least. Yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, it does clear the entire screen of everything that's about to deploy, though. Yeah. Uh, and it's but... not very powerful either. No, 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 it's super weak. Like, uh, yeah. Mad Ball, you gotta bomb it twice. Otherwise, you, you won't destroy anything at all. Even if you have a full bomb in the beginning, it won't kill it off. So, uh, couple this with... Um, the delay, which is kind of like yeah, one or two seconds after you press the button yeah. uh, until it gets deployed. And you have a ship that's really hard to use for mad balls, extremely hard, and for some specific tricks as well, where timing is very important. Mm -hmm. um, she also has a very weak shot, uh, but very low rank increase. Yeah. And uh, her options are um, really weird as well. They're, sort of like homing uh, where they like home towards the target in an arc and um, uh, they're kind of hard to use in certain parts of the game where you don't really want to be hitting everything because you home in on anything that's available so you might speed kill off certain bosses earlier than you want to if you're using it. yeah uh, but her rank increase is low and she's pretty damn fun to, to watch so yeah. And play. I, I, I like her, honestly. I, I think she's a fun ship to play, especially because she's so weird. Even though she's 
just four cubes. I can't stand it to be honest. To be honest, I've tried it before and she drives me nuts, seriously. That bomb the bomb delay is probably the worst thing, like because you have to preempt yeah, it is, it is. you have to preempt all of your bombs. Yeah. Anticipate when you're using them. You can't actually use them defensively because as soon as you deploy it, the bullet that you wanted to block has probably hit you. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, she has a long period of invincibility frames yeah. as well. Yeah. So I think she has the longest in the game. Like you can, she's got like half a second of invincibility after the. Yeah. Um. So yeah. I think her um, options are the, quite strong as well, though, right? <laughs> Uh, they're, they're pretty weak, but uh, they are homing, so it's very easy to survive with them. I think she's a pretty good survival ship, honestly. Yeah, because um, uh, you don't need search or anything because she's, she's already got it built in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that's one of the best parts with her on stage 6. Yeah. Even though you'll probably use homing anyways. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, honestly, I would like... If you guys are going to pick up a ship, please do ship them, because that's kind of like my challenge to you guys. <laughs> 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 it's uh I mean she deserves it. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean she's got her quirks. Yeah, she has her quirks, but she is kinda of fun to use in a sort of ironic way, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I imagine that uh wing control is quite easy with Yeah. It is. Yeah, yeah, definitely. She has very low rank increase. Yeah. So yeah. you pretty much don't even have to care about it. Like we, we, what you'll see in the cat replay here, he he's got his auto fire up to fifteen hertz. Which would be like a death sentence for most other ships, but yeah. the, him the rank is going to be super low at all times, anyways. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So there's that, and then we have uh, the uh, weird, the odd man out. If you're like uh, discussing uh, general systems and ship capabilities, it's Miyamoto. Can we even call him a man? <laughs> uh, uh, old dragon out. <laughs> or, or dragon man. Or dragon man. Uh, yeah. Yeah, with a fucking pimp ass mustache. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, honestly, Miyamoto was the first ship I played outside of uh, Wild Snail. Because hmm. I, I watched, like, yeah, I saw the Kaido video and I was like, uh, yeah, I gotta give this a try. And it was super fun. Yeah, it is. Uh, going from Wild Snail to Miyamoto is like, wow, the, it's a world of difference. Yeah, day and night, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fastest ship in the game, and you know it's so much more reactive. I love to play Miyamoto, yeah, because he, the way he scores is completely different from every other ship. Yeah, he's got a bomb that's very good for survival because it pretty much clears the entire screen, but it's worthless for scoring. You don't get many points at all. On the other hand, he has the most powerful options in the game, and they give a ton of points and tick damage. Yeah, like. Um, for a non-piercing ship, if you do, for example, the third boss, Earth Crisis, you probably get somewhere between 500 and 600k for the entire boss dismantled. And if you do him with Miyamoto, you'll get over a million points. It is ridiculous point gain, those options, eh? Yeah, yeah. and, and it, uh, it encourages a much more aggressive playstyle when you're playing for a high score, which I really love to do with this, this, in this game. And, with this ship or character, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, I think he's really fun to use, and he's very good as a beginner ship as well, because he's so fast that you can macro dodge a lot of patterns that you'd otherwise have to do with precision. Yeah. And um, he's, in, in being so fast, he's also got a very easy way of picking up stray metals that you might have otherwise missed. Yeah. Um, bomb is great for clearing out bullets if you're about to miss a metal, and since his options are so powerful, be able to easily clear the game as well yeah yeah he also has a very low rank increase yeah. like even if people are telling you that oh the options increase rank by so much it doesn't really matter because his main shot doesn't increase rank by fuck shit yeah and um, in general like i mean i haven't really played that much on Yamato to be honest um but i did get an f score uh using 15 hertz auto fire from the start which normally would get you high rank yeah I did some basic rank control, and it never got high at all. Yeah. He's a so, really good ship to play as a... It's a yeah. fun and twitchy. And he's also the second second highest scoring ship in the game as well. Yeah, he is. Purely because of those options. Uh, they are the yes. main meat of his scoring, so if you're... You need four options from the very beginning in order to score yeah. the most. <laughs> yeah, but then you want to control them for the parts of the game where you really don't... Where you can't really shoot that much. Yeah. Yeah, 
So, but but you know, he makes most bosses like the ones that you're supposed to dismantle and just a fucking joke with him because he kills the parts so easily. Yeah. Like um, Earth Crisis, Satanic Surfer, all of those bosses, they're they're just they're nothing when compared to Miyamoto's awesomeness. Yeah. So yeah, uh, and then we have uh, the main day, Mr. Bornem. Bornem. Yeah. <laughs> uh... Gonna grab this one. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Awesome. I like Bornem. What do you think about Bornem? I love yeah. Bornem. He's just easy and consistent to use. Um, he's basically, I would call him gain light. Not in terms of scoring, yeah. but just in the way he works. Um, yeah. He is incredibly slow, though, and that can be kind of annoying, especially for stuff like the rails. But in terms yeah, of. Yeah, I think it was uh, Cloudy here, or Keras, as he's known on the Schwab's forum, that coined the phrase, like playing a school bus, five yeah. school bus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly how he feels. It's like driving in treacle, basically. Uh, so oh, you, yeah, yeah. you need to be <laughs> very fast with what you're doing, especially for stuff like the rails and stuff like the platforms. Oh, but yeah. In terms of scoring, he has the most consistent time with all of the tricks. I mean, the mad balls are pretty easy to deal with once you know how to do yeah, them. Yeah, they're very easy. Yeah. yeah. The platforms, you've got at least two ways you can handle them consistently. Um, yeah. Even Blackheart 2 is pretty good fun with him, especially for scoring. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So, um, in terms of, you know, just the pure enjoyment for playing the game, I think Bornham is probably the most fun ship for me to play as. That's why I like playing him so yeah. much. Yeah, I like him a lot too, and he's he's very much, uh, as you said, he's very, he's not frustrating in the slightest when no, you're playing he's with score. No, he's not. Yeah, if you just want to uh, have a lazy credit and want to shoot some enemies, yeah, get a high yeah. score, just use Bonham, he's really the lazy kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, he's fucking awesome, like, um, yeah. Uh, there are so many things that are really good about him for a beginner. I, I think he's like, if somebody's looking into scoring in this game, I think Boredom is the best ship. Yeah. Because tricks are very consistent, and I think this is from pretty much the most important factor, especially when you're coming up into the late game with Black Heart 2 and stuff. He's not dependent on his options at all. He has a super powerful main shot that is also wide, so it's a lot of space, which yep. means that destructible bullets are not a problem, even if you don't have any options whatsoever. Yep. And is this my replay, by the way? This is your replay, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> that's what I thought it was. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, he, he's, he's really good, both in terms of scoring, consistency, and survivability. Yeah. Um, and I would recommend anybody to use him. Yeah. Uh, it, he only becomes frustrating, like when you're trying to aim for a really big score. But yeah, that's he, not something you should do in the beginning, anyway. <laughs> no, no. I mean, you could quite comfortably, I would say, you can quite comfortably get to A, B. Um, yeah. With Bornem, just by playing normally and not dropping your medals, but getting yeah, even if you drop yeah. the medals, it's like yeah, just <laughs> pull off two bombs on black card or something, and there, there you go. You got to be. Yeah, exactly. Congratulations, you're a bad dude. <laughs> yeah, exactly, but <laughs> getting D, E, F is where most of the challenge lies, and you do need to be very precise in what you're doing with Bornem in order to get close to those kind of scores. So. Yeah, I would say F is like the big... Uh, that's the big leap, pretty much. Yeah, it is. Uh, and it's the same with Wild Snail as well. When you get close to an F, it's like, yeah, you really have to know your shit. Yeah, yeah. Um... Anything in between, like a D and an E, stuff like that, is it's pretty easily achievable with intermediate strategies. But when you're going for an F, you really need to be on point. Yeah. And yeah. So okay, th that's all of the shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, all yeah. The shit. I know. <laughs> this is gonna go on for a long time. This is one hour forty, dude. I told you this isn't gonna be an hour. <laughs> we haven't even no. got to the advanced scoring bit yet. <laughs> Oh shit, but we've been covering uh, some sort of things on it anyways. Okay, yeah, uh, a couple of things just before we leave the ships. Yeah. Um, uh, just going back quickly into Grasshopper. Um, important to note with him is that I think for some reason um, his um, bomb, uh, like the spent shell casings are in general more powerful than the, the actual Vulcan. The, thing, yeah. the bit that's fired in the front. Yeah. Yeah. 
So you should think about that when you're bombing stuff like rails here, for an example. It doesn't really matter either, but uh, hatches in stage six. Hmm. Uh, you only want to be hitting those with um, the spent shell casings unless you have a lot of fragments. Uh, it is kind of a positive for him that it fires in two directions, though, because you can you can use that in some situations to hit targets both in front and back, like yeah. uh, shrapnel on Slayer, for example. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay, mm. advanced scoring techniques, how they work, and how the different ships use them, nice. <sighs> um, Shall we just start from the beginning? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we haven't really talked about um, scoring at all, really. I mean, we've kind of self explanatory collect them. Yeah. Yes. Um, other than that, um, your points are coming from various sources, such as bombing things. Yes. Yeah. Um, and not using, for example, piercing shot on them. So um, exactly, destroying one stuff enemy has weapon. different values depending on the how you destroy it. So yeah. either you yes. destroy it with a bomb or with a shot or with piercing. And usually it's a bomb where you get the most pound. Yeah, and yes. the least you get with piercing shot. Yes. So keep because that in mind easy. when you choose your character. It's yeah. Just your playing style. Yeah. So yeah, um, besides bombs, uh, of course, it is um, possible. Uh, it is uh, very important to dismantle the bosses um correct way so destroy all the parts of it um try using um for example when you're playing with miyamoto try using the options um as much as possible on the indestructible parts to get the tick points it's not really yeah. worth it for example when you're playing silver sword or stuff like that but yeah yeah. Go yeah we'll we'll go into that later on because the small things in terms of the of optimization that you can do there that are not really that obvious in the beginning um but we're going to be covering that as we go along but basically uh you could say that there are some things in the game that every ship handles the same like stage design things and collecting medals and whatever and yeah. then there are specific waypoints or tricks yeah where every ship handles a bit differently mm -hmm. yeah so I guess that's basically what we'll go through now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we yeah, the most yeah. important ones um, being, of course, the infamous um, flamingos and stage two. So yeah. that's probably the easiest, it's not really advanced, but the easiest thing for beginners as well, just bomb the castle and then bomb the birds quite a lot of time. Yeah. Yes. Chances you can do. And you get quite a good amount of points um, from this. Yeah. 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 yeah, and then there's mad ball. When you're playing with an aerial um, bomb fighter, it's quite easy. So gain and bonus, you can get easily like 1.4 million or something. Um, yeah, I, th I think yeah. it's even like 1.5, close to 1.5, if you yeah. do it correctly. Yeah. yeah, so those are like the main scoring tricks that are easy to boat and the mad balls, especially yeah. the first one. And it, there's also like, uh, we're gonna go over all of that eventually. I think we should just, mm, in terms of stage progression, so we no slapping or. Okay. Um, so what do we start yeah, with? Let's, first? Yeah, maybe just. I think jump we should into a replay for stage one. Yeah. yeah, I think we should show off how to get all of the bomb fragments in the beginning. Okay. Yeah. Give me a second. Yeah, and a the reason start. why you want to collect. Uh, bomb fragments as many as possible and um, do not want and to suicide bomb all of your single lives time well. in uh, stage one and suicide all your lives um, yes. to get the most out of the birds. Yeah. Yes, because so, you're going to be using all of your bombs there with almost all of the ships. Yeah. Old exactly. replay. <laughs> Old yes. replay. Yeah, well, bomb fragments, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be watching this at the same time, so. Yeah, cool, here. cool. Okay, so play it. I mean, it's going to loop anyway, so. Essentially, yeah, yeah. the easiest way to do it is to... Actually, I'm going to pop the cursor on so I can actually show the stuff. Uh, so gonna... yeah. Oops. Yeah, I have a couple of things to note here, just like in general. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, you can't do this with regular auto -fire. It won't work at all. Yeah. You have to have at least 10 hertz auto fire. Yeah. Or I would say with Wild Snail, exactly 10 hertz auto fire, because if you increase this is kind of interesting like in most of the older games uh, released uh, 
you only have a set number of bullets that can appear on screen at the same time from yeah. the ship. Mm -hmm. That number for Wild Snail is pretty low. And if you increase auto fire rate, um, the bullets are going to be like clo more closely knit together. Uh, so if you're staying at the bottom of the screen with a higher, you're going to have gaps in your bullets. Yeah. yeah. That can fuck you up if you have too high of an auto fire and you got to hit the bullets at the bottom because sometimes there won't even be a bullet coming out. So yeah. Yeah, but in general, this is uh, this is very good boom. Yeah, well, easily. I, I... Go on. Uh, oh yeah, I usually start from the rightmost side. Yeah, you start from about here, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I usually uh, start from I... the left and then sweep around like twice. Um, so... Yeah, I do uh, one sweep left um, yeah. to collect all of those. Mm -hmm. No, no, I just do one sweep left, then sweep right, collect all of the bottom ones, sweep yeah. left, collect the upper ones, and then, and then I up. do the other ones in the same way. Yeah, so essentially you move from here to about here, then you take these out yeah. one at a time, and then yes. come back down here, don't you? Yeah. And then... and, uh, Go on. And then I just follow up in the same way here. I think yeah. an important thing to note, at least if you're playing on PCD or MAME or whatever, is that there's built-in input lag in the game. Oh yeah, there is. And since you have to move so quickly between those small tanks on the left side in order to get all of them, you should input your next step, like where you're moving before you've even killed off the, the tank that you can see on the screen. Yeah. So you have to move a bit in advance in order to... Yeah. Generally, the f movement should be quite fluid, no matter how you're doing this. Um, if you do, yes. if you practice it enough, then you can do this in like one very easy movement. Um, yes. And again, like Eaglet said, it's augmented by auto fire. It makes it a hell of a lot easier if you're on ten or twelve to actually do all yeah. of this. I mean, uh, I've always followed the same route here by starting from the left side of here, sweeping along, and then coming back around and collecting them, going up here, yeah. then down here, and then loop through these ones while I'm there and it's if you do it quickly enough you can get all of them in one very quick movement and I'm doing this with Golden Bat which is like one of the slowest ships in the game as well yes, yes. so it does make it quite easy this with the piercing shot but there you go with, with uh, some of the other ships um, um, those that don't have piercing yeah it's maybe a bit more difficult than with Wild Snail even though uh, they may be and then I would suggest not going for the leftmost two tanks exactly and, yes um go go for the right instead because there are eight bomb fragments and if you just it's, lose on, it's two actually... on the left side it's easier to uh, get the most out of it yeah it so is. Don't, yeah, if you don't feel actually... ready then just leave two on the left. yeah it, it is impossible to get all of the fragments with grasshopper yeah you can't yeah. do it you can get uh, like you, you miss out on two that's the maximum amount of bomb fragments you can get because we have two things uh, his shot fires way ahead of him, like it, the start of the shot is way ahead, and his hitbox is like weirdly centered, so you can't even get all of the fragments. That's what I did here with Bornham. I, I you know, I was th this was one and a half years ago, so I was pretty pretty bad at the game, but I only got all of those because I knew I was able to get those consistently. Uh, Neo. Uh, regarding that, yes, you should. Um, with Miyamoto, yeah. you should be at least 10, maybe 12, and you should be able to get yeah, them all. I would say if you're playing Miyamoto, go at least 12. Yeah, at least 12. And you should be able to get them all fairly comfortably. Um, yeah, because 10... otherwise you're not playing Miyamoto. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> you gotta go fast, man. You <laughs> gotta go fast, and that's including the yes. autofire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the way Eaglet does it here is almost the same as the way I do it. I mean, he skips the last two on this side just to ensure as he gets all of these ones there. I mean, it doesn't really yeah. matter in the long run because you still get a shitload of bomb fragments anyway, don't you? Um, yeah, and I would say, like, in this is kind of like uh, uh, tiny details, but sometimes it's even better to not have that many bomb fragments for the last bomb with Bornum. Yeah. Because you'll usually usually be deploying that over the first tank that's spawning after the birds, yeah. and if you have too many bomb fragments, you'll kill the tank. Whereas if you didn't, you'll get the medal instead. Yeah. So it's kind of like uh, uh, a bit of a I don't know how to call it. It's like uh, hmm. it's kind of like a gamble. Yeah. I mean, depending here, on what you want. Yeah. I mean, here you can see. Um, Kaida's already increased auto fire and he's got all of them pretty comfortably there. So, yeah, it's uh, just. Oh, it's the Miyamoto replay. Yeah, just oh, yeah. basically knock your auto fire up when you're with Miyamoto and 
you'll be fine to be honest. He's so strong, he'll tear through everything. Yeah, <laughs> I gotta see Skull. Yeah, I'm trying. Let's see. Here we go. He's got 15 hearts to auto fire, so yeah. it's quite fast. Yeah, pretty quick there. I think he starts yeah. with 15 and keeps it at 15 all the way through until near the end where yeah. he maxes it, doesn't he? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the point gain is ridiculous. Like, it, yeah. It's crazy, yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you guys seen the video, but you can actually get a million on stage one with Miyamoto if you bomb everything and, you know, get the maximum points out of exactly everything. Yeah, it's crazy. I think he gets yeah. it in this one, doesn't he? Yeah. No, he gets like uh, 900k at the max. Yeah. But he, you can yeah. get a full million if you're. <laughs> If you're crazy enough. Yeah, but then again, by the middle of stage two, you're behind all the ships because you just can't score. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you'll make that up in Earth Crisis anyway, so. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> right, where, yeah. He, where he loses points, you'll gain them later on. So he's pretty balanced, I think, in a different kind of way. <laughs> yeah. And okay, well, anyways, um, aside from that, the stage is basically just uh, collect as many. Uh, bomb fragments as you can. Yeah. Power up. Um, what you can do with this is um, a pretty known trick, I think. Uh, halfway through the stage, there's a big ship coming in from the left side of the screen. Yeah. Uh, left upper side. And uh, if you wait, if you delay killing it and destroy it when it's past the the next set of like uh, spinning arm thingies. Mm -hmm. You get a full, uh, a big shot power, right? Shot up, uh, shot power up icon. Yeah. yeah. So you can easily gain another level without frame rank by doing that. Yeah, it's kind um, of dangerous trying though because you've got all sorts of stuff firing at you at that point. <laughs> yeah, but it's kind of easy when you're used to it. I mean, yeah. it's like. Uh, mm, but anyways, I mean, uh, for for some characters, it's um, kind of important because it. Um, comes into account for like milking the boss with the tick points, but other than that, yes. it's not that important, I would say. And another thing about no. stage one that is not that important, or not important at all, is that you can actually bomb those whales. There yeah. are two whales yeah. um, in exactly. the game, uh, but you, you get medals from them, but since they are only like 100k medals, and yeah. you need all the bombs for the birds anyway, yeah. there's no yeah. point in doing it. Yeah, it is important when you're playing the new numbers. premium um, mode, there it's rather important. And if you're playing the regular arcade version, but the extended mode with two loops, if yeah. you're oh, yes. playing the game in the second loop and you are on max medals, then you can bomb there because you maybe have enough lives to get maybe then enough bombs for the game. Yeah. But if oh, you're yeah, playing yeah, the regular one loop arcade game, um, just ignore Yeah, just to get bomb fragments for the birds. Yeah. Right. Uh, so anyways, we have the boss then no slapping and yeah. basically it handles in three different ways, I think. It handles like, or basically what you're supposed to do is dismantle it all the way. And uh, there are three different ships, ship types that approach things differently. Uh, first of all, you have the non-piercing ships yeah. that can just shoot everything not think about any consequences whatsoever and just destroy everything and when you've done that kill the boss and you've gained the maximum amount of points yeah and then you have the piercing shot types that have a piercing front shot shot like if you've powered up grasshopper or just any wild snail mm -hmm. uh, where you're gonna have to make sure by option manipulation that you can destroy uh, like the front propeller and the to wing propellers with the options. So you get 50k instead of 5k from them. Or zero points. I don't know how much it is. I think it's like k or zero yeah. if you don't destroy with option or non piercing. And then you have Gain, <laughs> Gain. Uh, yeah. who's got a non piercing main shot. And if he, he wants to destroy the uh, front propeller, he's going to have to do it by suiciding during the timeout of the boss. Which I think Kamui messes up in the latest replay, honestly. Mm, I think she does. Yeah, it seems like it. Yeah, but but it's it's a thing. Like you can do it if you want to, but you gain a lot of points anyways just from tick point milking the wings after you've destroyed all of the parts. Yeah. Yeah. The main con 
propeller is maybe not that important. No, exactly. If you're really, really into high scoring, then you have to care about it. But other than yeah, that, I, um, I would say, like, this comes into strategy with all of the characters, but for, well, maybe Shifta, but I, I don't really know if that anybody does the suicide trick with Shifta, I have sure. But anyway, Well, for Shifta, you can use a um, hop to keep the main propeller from. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the, yeah that's, that's not what I was uh, thinking about, though, because. It, yeah. uh, basically, the amount of points you gain from uh, no slapping uh, only really comes into play. Like it actually only matters with gain, oh, because yeah. in order to use right. the most optimal right. suicide bombing strategy, you gotta have over six hundred thousand points after killing no slapping. Yeah, right. So that's pretty much the only. Uh, only reason you want to score that high and that's why a lot of game players are milking the wings to get as many points as possible because you want to suicide as early first yeah um but anyways um that's no slapping pretty much so you have all of these different ways of handling it yeah. and um, uh, basically what you want to do with any ship that has a non piercing option is that any time that the ship is like uh, leaving one of the sides open uh, you wanna, um, you wanna like um, go up into the corner and shoot the front propeller. Uh, yeah, radical. You can do it with the less points, but you won't gain as much. You're not gonna get like uh, 3.5 million from the birds with gain if you're not having like 600k or above. It's like if you wanna reach that upper echelon of three mil afterwards, then you're gonna have to go over 600k. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, we, we're going to come into that with the burn state. So, basically, uh, with the non-piercing options, uh, you go up to the sides and try to kill off the front propeller, or, well, shoot it as much as you can before the central turret is activated. And it's activated by killing the two central turrets that's right in the middle, uh, or when the boss has reached, like, the half time of its, uh, of its time on screen. And... Um, uh... uh what you can do then with most ships, aside from Silver Sword, uh, he can do it, but not as safely. Is if you destroy half of the missile firing turret, you can sit on top of the screen safely on one side, with your options as well. Yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much no slapping. Most simple boss in the game. Yeah. Pretty easy once you uh, know. <laughs> yes, it's just muscle memory after that. Yeah. Pretty much is. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, now we have the gun blimp section. Ooh. That's the next big part. Yeah. So give me one sec. This is an interesting yes. one, actually. I only just realized that the. Uh, because uh, you do it differently to Kamui, if I remember correctly. This is your you know, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> and that's one and a half years ago. Yeah. We might do it similarly now, but I, yeah. basically what I do now, I don't know, I haven't seen the video. I'm going to load up here. Yeah. I suicide on the first shot wave from the gun blimp, yeah. low down on the screen. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, I do it differently nowadays. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyways, uh, like the basic idea of what you want to be doing is that you want to suicide down to your uh, final life. Yeah. Um, in order to use your invincibility mm -hmm. to go up uh, to, first of all, one side mm -hmm. of the gun blimp and yeah. point blank the turrets, because the turrets release medals. Yeah. And if you're point blanking the metal turrets, then they're going to be re releasing medals in succession, which means that your metal value will be increasing in succession. Yeah. So if you got a slow ship, you can only do it on one side of the of the gun blimp yeah. in which case you'll increase by four increments yeah. if you do it correctly uh, but if you've got a fast shift like miyamoto you can all parts which means that your metal value will be increased by eight increments in total yeah it's pretty crazy which is pretty damn crazy yeah. Yeah. yeah well you can actually do it with wild snail as well to get all eight but it's the timing is very very tight yeah it is yeah, i would you, never do that watch the we play um that is on the Saturn version, the high scoring the Saturn yeah. version. Um, it is featured there, um, although we of course know that this replay was done with safe states, but still it's 
technically possible. Yeah, but never done. What before. was the replay on Sardondon with save states? Yeah, it was. <laughs> really? Funnily I enough. No yeah. fucking idea. Shit. <laughs> Mind <Don't> blown. <laughs> oh yeah. What's the score on that, by the way? It's, uh, uh, not that high. No. Um, I think fourteen or fifteen. Really? Yeah. Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, um, so basically that's how it works. And I would say general recommendations, at least from my side, uh, with any ship, is that you basically, you see the gun blimp coming down from up above, and he's going to fire waves of spread shots. And you want to be suiciding on the wave yeah. when it's past the midpoint of the screen. Mm -hmm. So pretty low down, like that. You can suicide from the bottom as well. Because that means your shrapnel from when you suicide will damage the turrets a tiny bit. So it will be easier to kill them off and get the medals. Yeah. Um, and also with most ships, you'll want to pick up the options for when you suicide. So it's good to place yourself in the middle of the screen, so that's easy. Mm -hmm. um, also, you have to take into account your item drop order so that you don't suicide when a medal is just about to come out. Because then you'll have to pick that up and, you know, fuck up your entire strategy yeah timing is very important with oh. the first suicide <laughs> um, is, about the, uh, shrapnel. Uh, if you if you kill yourself down at the bottom of the screen are you sure it um hurts actually the um the small missiles uh, the, the small turrets? because um, yeah it does a tiny it, bit it hurts them like it, but but they should tiny. be still invincible no 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 because uh, if let's see here look at the replay um, yeah, yeah. Just I, go to the replay and pause yeah, at the because moment the shrapnel, when you're shrapnel. If you right. there, the yeah. shrapnel goes out super late, so it just about it just about hits it. Yeah, so there's bits of shrapnel right. about here, I think, but they do actually yeah. kind of hit. So you can see yeah, the shrapnel do. here. It points here, so they're about to hit. There. Yeah, because the shrapnel goes out like in increments, so yeah. uh, it, it's see, super delayed on top of the screen. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's... so that helps a tiny bit, but the most important part is your positioning after when you respawn. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that's that. And now we come to the like the most um, trick in the game for most ships. <laughs> Shall we just start with Silver Sword again <laughs> and yeah. talk about this? Yeah. yeah. We we should do all of the ships, so just do it in succession. Okay. <laughs> Let me fire up a sword first. And <laughs> yes. Right. Okay. Um, Basically, uh, we should talk about two things, or, or some things, theoretically, about the burst first, though. Okay. Um, is that, um, first of all, the birds are going to start spawning from the castle upwards towards like the rest of the stage. Yeah. From the second that the bomb hits the castle. Yeah. And also, um, at least what I think is that yeah. the amount of birds that are spawned continuously increase by the amount of times that you hit the castle with bombs. Yeah, so it's about where the curse is wiggling here, I think, is where they start spawning and then they fan out in crazy ways. Yeah. yeah. Yes, uh, in a cone shape, pretty much. Yeah, about and from the, here, yeah. Yeah, and the way that they uh, basically fly away yeah. Um, in terms of trajectory, speed, and um, groupings, whatever, uh, it's all determined. No logic whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, well, there is logic, but it's similar to randomness. But anyways. Yeah. Um, so there's no way to be consistent at this point whatsoever. It's always going to be different. Yeah. You can't do it the same way every time and expect the same result. Yeah. So it's kind of like a madness to find, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, but anyways, um, uh, it's like it, every ship has a different strategy. Uh, for some bomb that covers the screen and then disappears, you usually want to wait until the castle is a bit down because this is kind of interesting. Because of sprite limit, uh, normally if you don't shoot the castle at all, yeah. you're going to be seeing like five static turrets on the ground afterwards. Yeah. But if you shoot the the castle, bomb the castle, then uh, less and less turrets are going to spawn because of sprite limit. Because uh, if the birds are there, they can't really spawn in too many turrets because that, that will fuck up the game completely. Yeah. Um, 
that's probably why there are so many glitches in relation to this section in general in the game. Yeah, the yeah. glitchy building that happens quite a yeah, bit later. Yeah, and the <laughs> random resets and whatever. Oh yeah, uh, they're always fun. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Especially when you feel like you're getting something good. But yeah, uh, <laughs> you could say, like for an example, with a ship like Wild Snail that you want to be bombing at the first available opportunity, you're not going to be seeing any turret spawn afterwards whatsoever. Yeah. But what you want to be doing with si ships like Silver, uh, because uh, if you were just to bomb the, sh the castle at the top of the screen, then your increase would be pretty low in general. So th the most consistent strategy to get a lot of points is to wait until the castle is at least below midpoint. And the thing is, you're going to be having five of these turrets spawn at the same time. So you want to wait until your bomb, when it's deployed, it can destroy these castles. Because if their castles are active mm -hmm. and not destroyed, then they're going to take up damage from the bomb that you're deploying that would otherwise have been used to get a score from the birds. Because uh, if you're bombing like a, a turret or something and there are birds underneath it, the turret will override and you will only get points for bombing the turret instead of the birds. Yeah. Yes. Which sucks. So if you, <laughs> yeah, it sucks ass. So <laughs> with a ship like this, you want the bomb to destroy as many turrets as possible. And then you want to be bombing the rest of your bombs from as low on the screen as possible, like close to the spawning point of the birds from outside of the forest line. Yeah. Because then you'll be hitting as many birds as possible at the same time. And then after that, when you've finished all of your big bombs with Silver Sword, you want to be collecting all of the bomb fragments screen and bombing the tiny clusters with your tiny bombs that you have left you can gain a lot of points from that you can get like with two bomb fragments you can get close to 50k yeah. if there are tight enough close clusters of birds mm -hmm. so you have to be really quick in collecting everything and being very precise with your bombing yeah which you can see here in the replay and uh, that's is that the yamaka one no that's yours and I scored 1.8, right? Yeah, you scored 1.8, yeah. It's pretty yeah, good, it's I think. Yeah, it's the same as the Yamanaka one. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. It's like, uh, that's a really good score to aim for with the uh, Silver Sword. Yeah. Uh, uh, you can get upwards of 2 mil. Like, you can get slightly above. That's like theoretical maximum. Yeah. But um, anything above 1.8 is great. So if you get that, just be satisfied and play the game. Mm -hmm. um, that's Silver Sword. <laughs> Would you say your the way you did it here is optimal? Because I noticed you're firing while you're doing it. Uh, yeah, uh, to my knowledge, firing doesn't affect in the slightest. Like if you get points from the birds with the bomb or not. Yeah. Uh, Just thinking of so, sprite limit. That's all. <laughs> yeah, the, you know that's actually something I had had into consideration. I might have to. Yeah, the thing is that sprite limit is not really important with the sword. So you can just shoot and get some extra points from the yeah, first yeah, I, shot. Yeah, I think that's the way it works. You, you should really not shoot when you're playing with games, for example. Just yeah. use bomb, but we're coming to that in a bit. Um, but yeah, yeah then, then please don't shoot, but otherwise... Uh, it doesn't but you should shoot at the end of the game bomb to get the tick points with your swords, if you have any. Yeah, 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 exactly. And yeah, maybe like one when, small when thing to add is one. that maybe one small thing to add is that um, even when you have used all your bombs and you have like only very little bomb fragments left, it is worth to bomb even one, two, or three birds when they're left on the screen. Even then, a single yeah. bomb is enough to get to maybe like ten. Yeah, so, yeah. Just... You know, actually, I haven't seen this replay since I recorded it, so I'm kind of surprised. I actually handled this pretty good. Uh, the only thing I would remark on is that I deployed the bomb a bit too early, like, compared to my current strategies. What, the first one? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. I, you see here, because um, it, I'm going to put up this replay here for myself as well, so I can commentate on it correctly. Hmm. Uh, okay, here. Yeah, because uh, the first bomb only destroys... Uh, the second layer of turrets. Yeah, these two up here. <laughs> yeah, so if you wait a bit longer, you can destroy all of the turrets with one bomb, and then you can just bomb the birds straight off. If I did that, and yeah. I got like this, these good birds, I could probably get 1.9 or something. Yeah. So it's about a 100k difference. Yeah. It still looks pretty good, though. <clears throat> Even yeah, if it was early. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, it's like, uh, I don't know, there's nothing to complain about. Yeah. Um, and then we have Grasshopper. Ooh. <laughs> we should shoot the, the Kaida replay for that one. Yeah, give me a sec to queue it up. Uh, Kaida, yeah. Grasshopper. De -de 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 -de. Man, I have a lot of replays. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that replay folder for Garaga is like 480 gig now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, speaking of the birds and Grasshopper, I gotta say, this is chip for the birds in the game. Yeah. Hands down, no question whatsoever. Um, it's really finicky, and I still haven't worked out the absolute optimal way of doing it. The only thing I know is that I think theoretical maximum should be something like 1.6 mil after the birds. Well, with Grasshopper? Yes. Yeah. Uh, but like what you can hope for, what what is a good score, is anything above 1.4. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, if you get 1.5, I've got a 1.55 at the most. That's like incredible. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing is, what to take into account here is that, first of all, timing, what's worked best for me is um, I destroy the first turret that comes into view, or at least I halfway destroy it. So I like take away the, the top that's firing bullets. Then I immediately deploy the bomb. Yeah. And I let it hit the castle full. And if I get good birds from the start, yeah. um, like a big cluster, I fire that and I try to aim my spent shell casings towards the castle because I, for some reason, I think that will increase the value. Yeah. Um, and then I just, if I haven't destroyed all of the turrets on screen, I make sure. And then I search for the next big cluster and I fire again. And I hope that uh, more birds will be spawning down below so they can get hit by my spent shell casings as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's very very inconsistent, and I have no idea what affects it. And unfortunately, it affects the rest of the stage in a very big fashion because uh, if you get bad enough birds, then you probably won't get an extend at Mad Ball too, and you won't be able to suicide to bomb the the, the rails at the beginning of stage three. So yeah, you need a certain amount of points in order to execute his stage two correctly. Otherwise, it's very risky to even attempt to the exactly. Mad Ball. Anything below 1.2 is a reset. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if it's generally yeah. reset all the time with uh, Grasshopper in stage yeah. 2. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, but it's the same also applies for the um, other characters where you really have to reach a certain limit in order to get enough bomb fragments for yeah. yes. yeah. accurately doing metal. So, yeah. uh, Exactly. I, th I think most ships have more leeway in that case compared to... They say, do, they do. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's way stricter with Brassel, but that's true. Yeah. Yes, because so long as you get an extent from it, ships can score, pick yeah. up all points along the way. Yeah. It's just that you need, like, and reach the next extent, but it's just that you need... You need both a lot of bomb fragments, and then you need to usually need to suicide anyways on Mad Bull 2 with with grasshopper so yeah it's it's kind of annoying that way um hmm, what yeah, else little, yeah if we, if we look at the um bomb from grasshopper we see that um it's not only shooting to the front but also to the back yeah and if you have the yes. um, get the idea of maybe birds with the um bullets that are coming out from the back it's not a good idea because for some reason you don't get nearly as enough exactly a bomb that goes and, um, out of your back then uh, so, yeah, and also right. another thing to take into account is that the bomb itself, like the shots you fire, are piercing. All right. With Grasshopper. So, um, basically, you should never fire up, even if you have a huge cluster on top of the screen, you should never fire close to them. It's much more lucrative to stay at the bottom because you'll be hitting a lot of birds on the side as well with the piercing capabilities of the bomb. It's uh, it's kind of strange, but I mean, yeah. Grasshopper is strange. So yeah, yeah. Grasshopper so is works. kind of weird and finicky. It's... Yeah, particularly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Baron. After that, <laughs> okay, <laughs> fucking Baron. <laughs> another, <laughs> another, another annoying ship. Yeah, flying Baron, which yeah. really doesn't make sense with the birds either. 
Yep. I think you should probably reiterate what you know about the bomb as well, just so that people have some context yes. for this. Because yeah. Baron is a pain in the ass. Definitely. Um, first of all, there are a couple of things you want to do here. Uh, in terms of timing, you should bomb the castle when it's just about to hit midpoint on the screen. Yeah. And you should also make sure that you only hit it with one, like, the bomb on, from Flying Baron is deployed on two sides of the ship. Yeah. And you want to make sure that uh, the missiles only hit from one side of the ship and the rest are going up into the air. Yeah. Uh, because they will be, uh, like, attacking birds and the turrets that are on screen later on. Yeah. Uh, so what you want to do is, like, deploy the bomb when it's just about midway through the screen. Um, and then quickly go up, destroy any turrets as quickly as you can, and then try to bomb uh, close to clusters of birds, but yep. not at them, because you don't want to point blank them. You want yep. to like get the bombs out into the open so they then can home into the clusters. It's, yeah. It's really strange, but it's really that's weird. the way you get the most points. Yeah. yeah. I and mean, you can see here he's sitting near the near the keep and letting the missiles fly into the birds. Um, yeah, that's a pretty important point. So I always thought that you scored more by point blanking, but now when you mentioned that, you know, you get less damage from point blanking, it kind of ties into the birds as well, so yes. I always wondered why the scoring was so shit with Baron at the birds. Yeah. Because that always I mean, drove me nuts when I started playing as, uh, as the Flying Baron. Yeah, yeah, it's the same here. I mean, usually like, um, I don't know, uh, if I get a good run, like I don't play much Baron at all, but if I get a good run with it, then I get something like I have maybe 1.7 mil after the birds. That's a good run. And um, and normally it's somewhere like 1.5. So it's not good either way, but it's like... Yeah, uh, it's passable though, it's, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So long as you're able to get an X10 on your first... Because, yeah. Okay. Baron needs to suicide. Yeah. Like Wildstone. Yeah. yeah. And one one more thing to note is um, first bomb, which is deployed on the. Um, when you look at this replay, you see that um, the player tries to use it with the um, right side of the bomb. Yes. And that's 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 whole reason because if you um, lead your bomb slightly to the right so that your missiles from the left side hit the key. And um, then yep. the missiles that are coming out to the right are just thrown off screen and give you no scoring potential. Yeah. But if no, you open it with the missiles that are coming out from the right, then yes. all the missiles from the left go back to the right, and all the missiles that later come out of the right side also go to the right. Yeah. So that's ah, yes. to maximize your scoring potential and minimize yeah. boundaries. Yes. Yeah. It's a missile that's awesome. control. I didn't yeah. even know that. I, I've never done it any other way. Yeah. Okay. Um, now we have Wild Snail. Ooh. <laughs> uh, the biggest bitch of them all when you come. Uh, shall we use Kamui's replay for this? <laughs> Do it, because uh, she scores better, but mine is okay. I, did, I think I had like 2.45 okay. mil after. Yeah. So, yeah. No problem. It's queued up. Just playing it. Oops. A bit too far. Um, and I gotta say, this is like. This is the main reason why Wild Snail is so annoying to play because it's entirely fucking random how much, how many points you get because of two factors. Yeah. First of all, the birds in themselves are random the way they move, and second of all, when there are so many hittable targets on screen, the way that your flamethrower moves pretty much random as well. Yeah. I think and I... that's a big factor. Yeah. I notice a lot of players try to manipulate the flamethrower so that they actually cross over each other, like that, the last yes, bomb there. Yes, what, yeah, what you want them to do is not only cross over, but when you're hitting the birds, you want to try to manipulate them so that they hit targets as close to the ship as possible, but that's also pretty much random. Yeah. Um, sometimes you get really lucky, like with Kamui here, she was super lucky in on that play. But you can get anything from like, I don't know, uh, 2.1 after to 2 to 3 million just <laughs> by pure randomness by doing the same exact thing. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous the look that she it's got really on there. Like. <laughs> yeah. 
but the basic idea is that you want to be bombing as soon as you can. Yeah, as um, soon as the keeper's hittable, basically. Yes. Um, and then you want to position yourself so that as soon as you hit any of the birds uh, going up past the clearing, you deploy your bombs. And yep. then you try to manipulate the op the bombing flamethrower thingies to yep. hone in on uh, any clusters of birds you can find. Yeah. So yeah, that's basically Wild Snail. Just uh, emulate this strategy here and pray to fucking God or something. That's <laughs> all you need to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't think I've ever had score that high on the birds. I think the most I've had is like 2.4 million, but I think that was pure luck, to be honest. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, but uh, I've never I had anywhere that. near the 2.8, 2.9 range that she got in this replay. <laughs> yeah, I had 2.9 once. Yeah? Yeah, that, that was like, of course, it's like, that's a given, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, okay, that's Wild Snail. Uh, let's get into the, the biggest one of them all, Gain. Ooh, goody. <laughs> the one that drives people crazy. Yeah. But With Gain, everything simple. will look a little bit um, difficult than we've seen before. Yeah. Yes. Um, so one more um, aspect comes into it, which is the suicide, the game over suicide even. So um, basically yes. you set yourself up that um, you have close to 1 million points and no life left and then you try to um, bomb the keep and ran into an enemy right before your ban uh, bomb which stays on the screen and which gives you tons yeah um right before it reaches one and um, what happens is that when you go game over um one big bomber item besides uh, other items uh, leaves your ship so this one you can actually collect because you will be uh, alive again because yeah. you reach that one million point and then get the X then get the life which you will immediately use again yeah, uh, yeah. And so basically after um, reviving and getting your ball you will be on zero lives again but you will get another life because the high scoring um potential with this bomb is uh, the way it is yeah yeah it is yeah. pretty ridiculous uh, this trick though <laughs> No, not, only that, that not only that, it's like um, um, you you also get half a bomb, so you get a lot of more bombs in general. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, but um, there are a couple of things that are important for this trick here. Um, first of all, your score going into it, because if you have like um, if you got six hundred k, then you can pretty much do the trick as early as possible yeah. and suicide and you'll get the extent but if you have lower than that um you gotta um, delay the bombing quite a bit if if you don't want to get a complete game over yeah um which is always funny it, to get <laughs> yeah yeah uh, so there are a couple of things to take into consideration if you, if you want to maximize your score yeah uh, which are that first of all um the quicker you're able to respawn and bomb yeah. after the initial initial suicide you're gonna have to um uh yeah the quicker you can do it the more score you can get basically yeah Be because um yeah you suicide for a bomb nice yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, because like the birds are more centered uh, when they're going downwards on the screen. Yeah. Um, so that's what you want to do. Shit, that I think is pretty interesting. Okay, yeah. well, anyways. Um, so you want to be putting off your bombs as early as possible. And you yeah. also want to make sure that the lower part of your bomb uh, always covers the lowest part of the screen where the birds are spawning from, because they're all spawning in a cone shape. Yeah. And if you're placing the bomb lower, that means you're going to hurt over time. Yeah. Uh, so basically, if you do the same, like, uh, oh yeah, yeah, th these are a couple of things here. And first of all, uh, the way your items will drop off when you've exploded into the game over thingy is always random. So sometimes you can get fucked up 
fucked yep. over, and the, the bomb icon just flies off the screen and you don't get an extra bomb or anything. That sucks. Especially when it flies off yes. to the right side of the screen and you have to chase it to be able to get it. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes you can't even get it. So yeah. that sucks. <laughs> uh, also, this is one thing here, that sometimes, for some players, you can't get out a third bomb, because you want to, want to, what you want to be doing when you're respawning is bomb thrice. Yeah. Three bombs right away for maximum point gain. Sometimes you can't do that, and that's because of sprite limits. Yeah. Um, and a couple of things to like lighten this load is, first of all, put the bombs away as quickly as possible by yeah. using, for example, an auto-fire button yeah. set to 30 hertz or just tapping really fast. Yeah. And of course, lessening the amount of sprites on screen. For yeah. example, picking up everything that you drop after suiciding. Yeah. It makes a, a world of difference. I would say that's the biggest thing that can affect. And another thing to take into account is that the way the game works is that uh, if a, a power-up or something is leaving the screen, then it stays in memory for a bit longer than you can actually see. So it's more beneficial to you to pick up everything as quickly as possible than it is to just uh, wait for it to leave the screen. Yeah. So, bomb twice, suicide, pick up everything, bomb. Didn't you find something out a while back about the actual first bomb timing as well? Uh, Which is yes. why uh, I've got this screen paused right here. <laughs> yes, uh, that, that's very interesting to know, so, because uh, basically it's kind of hard to just explain, but I do it the same way every time. Uh, I shoot uh, all of the enemies on screen until a certain part of like the music, yeah. where I just uh, stop shooting and I head off to the left side, um, because enemies will start coming in from the upper left part of the screen and I can mani manipulate them around the castle so I can bomb and then suicide on them directly. And basically, the timing to get the maximum amount of points, if you have at least over 650k worth of points, is what Kamui is doing here. As soon as you can see the first turret approaching the game over line on the, uh, on the screen, yep. that's when you pull off your first bomb. You bomb immediately after, just a tiny bit more to the right to yep. get a better alignment on the birds. And then you suicide directly. Just like that. <laughs> yes. And all, if you th if you consider like if you see that she's put herself in here with like it's like a straight line yeah. in the middle of the castle wall here. Uh, you see, it's like a line on the outer side of. It's like a straight line with the castle wall. Just yeah. uh, section. It's like a dark line. Yeah, I see it. Uh, yes, all of your bombs should be placed in the same horizontal space afterwards. So they should be centered there, but what? the lower part should always hit the forest, forest line. Yep. There we go. Demonstrated yeah. exactly like that. Exactly. Yeah. If you do it that way, if you do it with this exact timing, you will never ever get below 2.9 million afterwards. Yep. Never ever. It's like uh, you always get consistently close to 3 mil. Yeah. It's always the bomb placing that's important with gain here. Always a spot yes. that you place it on, yeah. It's the same with yeah, Bornum in a way as well. If you place the bomb in a similar way, then you get maximum point gain with him as well that way. Exactly. Yeah. But Bornum is a bit more like, uh, I don't know, it feels like he's a bit more variable. Like you can do it in a lot of different ways and you get approximately the same points. Yes. Yeah. 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 Gain is really strict though. Like uh, a tiny amount of difference here. Uh, like just discounting RNG, the the things you can actually affect. Yeah. Uh, timing is super important. It's basically uh, end all be all yeah. of this trick. Yeah, I and think it gives you a lot of points, so it's worth actually getting to know it. Yeah, um, I think I remember there was a tweet that Kamui put out a few months ago where she got three point nine eight after the birds. Holy shit! Yeah, I think I've still got that tweet saved up somewhere. I'll send it to you because it's pretty eye-opening but she was like 3.98 after birds and i was like holy fuck nearly four million yeah, yeah. <laughs> Same, yeah. jesus christ and that's like yeah, probably that's fucking ridiculous god rng probably yeah yeah that's the kind of thing that ha it happens in a while you know um i spoke a bit to uh Yam yamanaka the uh 
top player of Wild Snail Baron and the Bornum. Yeah. A couple of years ago, he he nicks he nicknames Omanko X sixty eight. In case you know what that is. Yeah. Uh, if you don't know what that means, then you'll have yeah. to find out by yeah. yourself. <laughs> uh, anyways, <laughs> um, he um, he told me that you know his wild snail uh, record, which is an H.4, uh, is basically as optimized as it can get. Yeah. The only thing that could be improved is better bird game. Yeah. And that would only come from like I don't know ten years of straight runs yeah. uh, to putting all of that together. So he's like, you know, I'm not gonna play this anymore. And nobody should either because <laughs> <laughs> it's not realistically improvable. Yeah, and when it gets to that point, it's like, yep, I don't think anyone's beating this score for quite some time. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You see, it's like th that's kind of the thing about this game. It's ridiculous. It's Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> so yeah, maybe okay. maybe one funny thing to uh, have as a side note is that um, when you look closely at the bomb animation of game, you notice that it's actually the same than your death animation. Yeah, but it's exactly the same as the explosion from your death. Yeah. 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 yeah exactly. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of the clouds and super brothers, which are actually like the trees, the same style. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, Okay, so we have uh, Shikta now, right? Ooh, Chile. Okay. <laughs> Let me just yeah, queue that That's another one. game over suicide. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just queue that one up. Give me a second. You want to yeah. just talk about it while I sort the shit out? Yeah, basically, you know, I've never done this. I've done this once, yeah, the suicide pick with Shikta. I've never bought it with it. It's too finicky. Yeah. Um, that is also super hard to get right, but... Yeah, it's not can... really worth it. it. It is worth it if you're going for score but not el not else uh, it's like um, uh, by bombing in a different way like uh, deploying the first bomb quickly then just firing at the castle and deploying two bombs afterwards with good timing you can get close to 1.5 mil afterwards but uh, <laughs> yeah cloudy that's fucking true fucking cat <laughs> um, yeah yeah uh, but this is awesome and i mean you gain like at least <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah, it, it works in a similar way. You're able to do the suicide trick, but if you're just playing anything less than world record level, it's not worth it. Yeah, right. Um, Such a ridiculous. So trick. I would say, in general, like in terms of strategy for for this part, what I do is, you know, I've saved up like. Um, three full bombs and then i have some spare uh bomb fragments mm -hmm. that's what you get from just suiciding twice and collecting all of the bomb fragments on the stage before mm -hmm. um i bomb once to bomb the castle and then i bomb twice for the birds and then i just save the rest of the fragments to use uh, plus a suicide later on in the stage for mad ball 2 because i have to bomb that twice in order to get points yeah so that's like an intermediate strategy or something but just be aware, this because this is really important for routing, you need at least, at least one and a half bombs. One and a half full bombs for yeah. a complete mad ball with Shippa. Yeah. So yeah, you can see his placement and shit there. I think it, you know, timing and stuff is not as important with shit at all because you can't really affect it. So it's just... Either you get the game over trick and you can get a couple of more points or not, but yeah. it's really not that big of a fact. Uh, uh, scoring with Chitter makes you want to pull your teeth out sometimes. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's true. <laughs> oh my god, it's just so finicky that bomb though, you can't do shit with it. And this is probably no. the key trick that you needed to work properly and it's highly inconsistent yeah, sometimes. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. Especially that suicide, if you're going for that, you need to bomb just after that turret is shot so that it the bomb the the bullet bypasses the bomb and hits you while it's being deployed it's so weird exactly <laughs> and not only that you also have to make sure that your suicide frames have just stopped before hitting the bullet it's like if he were to hit the bullet a millisecond before he yeah. would just pass through the bullet because he had invisibility yeah bomb. yeah that's so time independent yeah it's ridiculous so <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
I can't really see what it says here, let's see. Um, yeah, she plays fuck. She plays Bay. She's Bay for sure. <laughs> As I said, I, I, I encourage anybody to give her the D. Uh, I, I'm the only one who's done it so far, exclusive, and I don't think she wants that. So please go ahead, make yourselves comfortable. Uh, um, dude, PG thirteen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> PG thirteen. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, well, anyways. Um, we got Miyamoto coming up. Miyamoto, yeah, I'll get that yes. queued up. So I think his, his, it's not even worth doing the bombs half the time with him, to be honest. Uh, you get some points for it, and it is worth it, because you're able to... Um, if you get enough points, you can suicide on Black Heart 2 to do the uh, rails yeah. at the start of stage 3. That's why I do it, at least. And I think you get, like, at least... Hmm, maybe close to 200k for each bomb hmm. afterwards, like yeah. when you fully deploy the castle and everything. Yeah. The way so you the timing works... You get more points by using your options on... Well, you're using your options anyway all the time on the... Yeah, exactly. You, you, but but That's the it, more significant part you get. It is, it is. But yeah. but for, for a full bomb, uh, during the duration of the bomb, you get more points than you would by shooting them. Yeah. Right. Yes. Because yes. Uh, the timing is kind of similar to Wild Snail, where you want to bomb the castle as early as possible, then you just go up and hit it with options, uh, as you can see he's doing here in the video, and then you just continue shooting the birds, and you, um, as soon as you're able to hit all of the birds on screen with your bomb, you pull off two bombs. Mm -hmm. The rest of your bomb fragments are for saving for Madball 2, because you need a lot of bombs to capitalize on it. And again here, it's especially valuable if you go for shooting single birds with your four options when yeah. there's still some on the screen and yeah. get like yes. a lot of points just from shooting them. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, you need full options for like with every right. Miyamoto trick, you need full options to score well. Yeah, you gotta hit that castle. <laughs> and of course, uh, never use all of your bombs. Very important for routing, because as I said before, you're gonna be suiciding once on Madball. That's why you save one life, you need to save that for Madball. Yeah. And you save... Uh, you, you gotta collect enough bomb fragments that you have at least close to, or a full bomb before reaching Madball, because you need about one and a half bombs to bomb all of his outer turrets. Yeah. And it's pretty damn easy, like, in general, I think. It's not really an advanced strategy or anything, and it's very consistent once you've gotten it down. Yeah. Uh, you don't really have to wait for anything particularly annoying or anything with Madball. I think Miyamoto is one of the easier Madballs to score with. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely yeah. is, yeah. And while we're on that subject, like in terms of the stage in general, um, you should also make sure that at the end of the stage, uh, before um, hitting the Madball boss, yeah, you make sure to act trigger homing options, mm -hmm. because that makes it a bit easier to uh, um, pick off the inner turrets of the boss. Yeah, there's a pretty good setup for that that people should learn if they want to do that. Um, it involves the big tank and yes. the three uh, small the tanks on the left side. It, yeah. Uh, the way I do it is I collect every bomb fragment in the game from all of the small tanks yeah. aside from the last three. Yeah. And when I've done collected all of those, uh, I destroy the the bigger the bigger tank that comes from the middle. Yeah. And I just collect the two bottom ones, and then I don't collect any more fragments. Yeah. And I know I have uh, yeah. uh, triggered my homing options. Let's see if I can skip to that and just show it, because I think um, Ket, Ket, uh, not Ket, uh, Kaida gets it here. So he's going to leave this tank yeah. to roll up a little bit. You can see the three tanks coming on the left side there. He picks up two from the, the big tank and leaves the three on that, and that should give him the trigger for um, homing options. Which is it's yes. a, it's a really easy thing to do once you actually get it down, um, and it's pretty good for all ships I find. Well, almost all ships. <laughs> yeah, it's not good for Bornham at all. No, it's not good for Bornham at all. But and for most, well, pretty much all the Garaga ships, Miyamoto and yeah, 
Yeah, but I would say, at least to me, like from my experience, it's um, it's actually easier for me to pick up all of the parts with every other ship using a regular forward formation and three options. Yeah. Because that way I can make sure that I don't hit the core at all, just the, the turrets on the side. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, well... I think Should we get to Bornem? Yeah, we'll get to Bornem. Yeah, next one. <laughs> We're going to be on the birds for a while, otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll use Kytus. Well, one. after all, the birds are one of the most important and yeah. uh, random bits of the whole game, so it's yes. just appropriate to talk about them. It's kind of making yeah, me hungry, like <laughs> Oh, shit, yeah. Yeah, well, I got my beer here, so I'm set. <laughs> Yakitori. Uh, okay, so... Yes. <laughs> right, so where are we? 357. There we go. Yeah, born him, born him, born him. <laughs> born I am. Yeah, it's born it's am. kind of weird how born him works in terms of the birds, though. I think I've heard all sorts of stuff in terms of born him from you're not supposed to shoot to you are supposed to shoot. Um, yeah. And I've, I've got. I don't know, between 1.75 to 2.2 million after birds, just... Yeah, same here. I got the same same score range. Yeah, so... Yeah, it's... I don't know, I think you can get it pretty consistent, and if you just plan the rest of your route out, you don't have to worry about the extra scoring, to be honest. But, uh, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. I would say, like, the, the timing that I use this in general is... Um, I make sure to deploy my bomb when the castle hits the midpoint of the screen. Yeah. Just like exactly the midpoint. Yeah. And um, I make sure to hit it with like um, the lower mid part of my bomb hits the castle. So yeah. uh, the castle is going to be inside of the bomb strike for as long as the bomb is active. Yeah. What that means is that I will destroy the upper turret with the bomb and damage the two next coming turrets as well yeah uh, the next bomb that i deploy as fast as i can in precisely the middle of the screen mm -hmm. is going to destroy the two turrets and hit all of the birds and then i deploy the last bomb a bit lower and or the next bomb a bit lower yeah and last bomb which is just a few fragments i deploy to either the left or right side depending on how many birds are left on either side yeah yeah so that usually gets me at least one nine mil after. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe just to get some basics about the um, bomb down. And basically the main difference between this bomb and the one from Gain, which are both aerial bombs and they look kind of similar, yes. is that um, Bornem can only throw one bomb at a time. Yeah. So you yeah. can have like um, several bombs at once on the screen and this is the reason why you um, cannot, or it's not worth to decide because you wouldn't have enough time to drop that extra bomb you would gain from the suicide. Which yeah, is exactly possible, but it's just not worth it because that's not enough time, not yeah. enough. Yeah. yeah, and also, uh, Bornum's bomb reaches a much wider area. Yeah. And it also deals a lot yes. less damage. I think it deploys yes. faster as well, doesn't it? Compared to. Yeah, games. yeah, I think, I think it does. Kind of, yeah. A few frames faster. Yeah. And yeah, then you get less score from it. Um, yes, just because of less damage. The so. yeah. yeah. Is the amount of points you get from the birds connected to the damage you do? Yeah. I think it is. I think it is. Like damage so per damage second or something like that. Are high scoring points, basically. Yeah. Yes. Oh, That's why Wild Snail scores so high. Because oh, right. the yeah. always do a lot of damage. This is my replay, I think. No, this is uh, no? Kytus. This is play. still Kytus, still okay. Do we want to show yours, just as an example? Yeah. Yeah, it's a different strategy with a bit of an earlier timing, but I still got like 1.9, I think. No, no problem. So it's about <coughs> 100k difference or something like that. Yeah. So, here we go. Yeah, I'm going to oh, look for it here. If you ever wondered about, um, talk about the bomb of Bonham again, if you ever wondered about those blue things coming from to all those sides of the bomb, they do not actually hit enemies. They don't yeah. do any damage. It's no, cosmetic. They don't sure. get any points from hitting birds with the stuff surrounding them. So only the 
main part of the bomb levels. Yeah. Yes. There you get the points and there you do the death. Yeah, it's purely Just cosmetic. Because... Yeah. Yeah. Notice you do your bomb quite low on the, yeah, the first I did. one. Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. Second one's pretty good. Third one's pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad, 1.90. Yeah, that, that was basically during the period when I was experimenting around with the bomb, and I thought that hitting the castle for longer would spawn more birds. Yeah, I don't... I'm starting to think that's not really the case yeah. now, to be honest. No, no, same here. I just think you need to trigger the castle. Yeah. The timing... And I think the biggest problem with this replay is the second bomb. Yeah. Um, the second bomb should be much higher and cover all the birds and yeah. less of the yes. forest. So, especially the placement for the second bomb, the most important, not only for yeah. bombers, but also for him. Yeah. Um, because this is the first one that fully hits the birds. Exactly. Because as it is now, there, I, a lot of the bomb barriers covering the... Step. Yeah. Yeah, the first is fine, but then the second. Yeah. Kind of yes. Off. Still, though, it's a pretty good point gain for that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so it, it's yeah. it's really variable, like. Yeah. I but mean, you're, if you're doing it so much correctly, or one point eight, anything about one point eight is fine. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. Same. Yeah. <laughs> and if you get over two, it's really good. Yeah. It's. Yeah. yeah. It's been a while since I've managed to get over two consistently, though. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That doesn't really happen. No. I'm just gonna hit the bathroom a, a short while. I'll be back soon. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, I mean, consistency in birds is nothing that goes a long way. Yeah, so, well, usually, normally with birds, I'm usually quite happy with around about 1.75 or higher. Anything higher than that is usually bonus, but the route that I have um, is geared towards around about 1.75, 1.8 after birds, and it works quite well, I find, to be honest. Um, it's the same with all the other ships as well. I'm usually happy with a certain average, and then anything above that average yeah. is quite good, so... But for my experience with uh, playing different ships, it, it is still Bornum that is the most consistent. Yeah. Section. Yeah. I mean, um, if you've so followed while it, the... varies quite a lot with like Wild Snail, it varies greatly. Yeah. And game, um, yeah. You have to watch out for other stuff and so many things to care yeah. for. Yeah. But with Bornum, you, you don't have to do that much and it's quite consistent. Yeah. yeah but it still ranges from 170 to 2. Yeah. But that consistency is quite helpful to even new players though, because at least that way they know that their point gain isn't going to um, vary that much in later stages if they get a certain amount of points from the birds, so they can plan a pretty decent route from it. Unlike, as we usually say, gain for example, where the point gain from the birds is so variable that it makes routing later stages quite difficult. Because, you know, you have to account for either the loss of points or extra points. Um, yeah. So, you know, you have to really plan ahead or think ahead when you're playing as um, other ships compared to Bornham, where, you know, once you do the birds and you think, okay, I've got a pretty decent point gain here, you can just run through the rest of it quite easily. Yeah. <coughs> I'm back yeah. now, by the way. Hello. Um, <laughs> hi. Uh, there were a couple of things that I wanted to address when it comes to stage two as well. Okay. Um, first of all, um, for slower ships, um, you would do well to trigger um, a wide option formation during the stage section because that will that will really help you with uh, the section with the tank scrolling screen and picking off all of the um, the tiny popcorn enemies coming in from the sides. Make it much easier to survive and killing off all of them. Otherwise, if you don't trigger wide, uh, just manipulate your options to ensure that you're able to shoot on every side of the screen at the same time. Um, and aside from that, uh, directly after that section, you got a, a sort of thing where uh, you're going to have a lot of aerial enemies approach you. Yeah. Uh, including the big metal spawning ships yep where you get a medal for each wing that is destroyed yep 
And the best way to do that section is to try to pick off all of the um, the firing turrets. Um, like the ones that fire the needle shots yep. before you uh, destroy them and spawn the medals in order to pick up every medal in succession. Mm -hmm. And you especially have to take care of them with um, the piercing ships like Gain and, um, and Wild Snail because a lot of the times you will be firing the uh, at the wings with piercing which will destroy uh, the wings even before you've destroyed the turrets themselves. Yeah. So that's just like one thing to take into account if you want to uh, get as many medals as possible. Yeah. And also, as you can see here in the replay, as you've probably seen, um, you got to manage how many bomb fragments you have going across. The, the amount of bomb fragments I have here in this replay going into Madball is what I would call optimal because they are basically as low as you can get uh, without uh, not accidentally fucking up destroying the outer ring. Yeah. And the reason you want to deal low damage is because you want to damage the core as little as possible. So you get more opportunities to pick off the inner turrets. Yeah. So if you're playing Bornum, try not to get in fight the full bomb. I think that means we're going into Mad Ball 2 discussion now. Maybe you Mad Ball and Mad Ball 2. Thing, yeah. Maybe one small thing um, to the stage. Have we talked about the um, flying enemies after the tanks that were the houses yet? Uh, the bit where you're bombing like crazy. Uh, yes, exactly, yes. Exactly. So um, if you have um, probably noticed that in many super plays they are bombing um, those waves of uh, flying enemies, where you have two types of flying enemies. One is homing at you, and one is flying to the side. And yep. that one that is homing in at you is worth more when you kill it uh, with bomb. It's yep. worth 2k, so it's not that yeah, much, you get, but yeah, um, you get if you kill like all of them, um, you get like um, the equivalent of two medals or something. Yeah, uh, yeah I think you get even more. That, you, yeah, even more, okay. I, see. Um, yeah, the I think you get that close to 40k or something. Yeah, the downside is that you bomb a lot, and bombs increase your rank, so uh, it's more only advanced though. Yeah. But and it's very important point... when you have to drop the bombs. If we look yes. at it um, for Bornem, for example, it's best to drop the bomb to destroy four enemies each. Yeah. If you mess yes. up your rhythm and you uh, sli let slip one away or two, then um, it's kind of messed up and you have to wait for the next wave to come in. Try to use one bomb fragment at a time, maybe two, and yeah. kill them in waves of four. And also worth noting is that only the red flying enemies give you extra points for bombing. Yeah. The yeah, regular the other, uh, ones that are like beige or whatever, they don't give you any extra points for bombing at all. Exactly. And the same enemy type you will encounter in stage four as well. So yes. Again, it's worth and stage bomb. three. Yeah, and stage and three stage as well. Three. Yes. Um, also, mm, shit, I had something here. <laughs> yeah, hmm. Um, no, I, I don't think, I, I don't remember. It was something. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. You're not drunk already, are you? We have enough to talk about <laughs> no, anyway, no, so don't, don't worry. worry. <laughs> I'm just, uh, wow. Well, anyways, uh, just bomb the fuck out of those things because it's fun, <laughs> primarily. And, it is, yeah. Um, don't forget about your um, bomb fragment collection, like yeah. if you need bombs for Madball or not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would say that's the most convenient thing about playing a ship like uh, Bornum or even Wild Snail Gain, <laughs> is that you don't need a lot of bomb fragments going into the fight with Black or 2, so you can just bomb away freely. Yeah. And don't even think about bombing those red planes uh, that are coming down to the sides when the tank is rolling. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, don't don't give you they don't give any extra points at all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, highly important of which enemy type you are destroying, with him. It's not exactly. like every enemy gives you more. Destroy it. No, only it's only specific enemies. So, yeah, Madball. Madball. Yeah, let's let's go to Madball. <sighs> yes. <laughs> Madball. Um, Shall we start with Snail again? No, Sword again. Uh, yes. Sword, yeah. Um, and I would like 
I would like to go over some general theory about the boss before we go into specifics for ships. Yeah, go All for right. it. So the next 60 minutes are reserved for my boss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, well, okay, so first of all, uh, if you're going for score, of course you want the optimal amount of score from Madball. And the thing is, he has a lot of different parts. Uh, during his first phase, if that's what you want to um, he has an outer ring with, I think, uh, seven turrets or something? Is it eight. more six? It's eight. Eight, eight yeah. turrets. Yeah. Eight turrets. Yeah, both uh, rings have eight turrets. Which, and they're connected by, like, metallic links. Yeah. All of those things are worth a lot of points, especially if you bomb. Yeah, if you bomb, you get, like, uh, 50k for each of the bigger turrets, <laughs> And I think 25k for each of the links. Mm -hmm. um, or it might be even more. Uh, because if you get a full bomb with one of the ships that can really capitalize on it, like the aerial effect bombs, you can get 1 million points. 1 million points. Yep. Free extend. <laughs> yes, purely from this shit. <laughs> um, so that's what you want to be doing. You want to destroy those parts with bomb. Also, you have to take into account the different healths. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, 50k for each of the central turrets and 25 for each link because it's like uh, three links per turret or something. Yeah. Um, so the links in themselves have a lot less HP than the turrets have. So you want to make sure that all of the damage you do to the turrets is done when it's all like uh, contracted together. Uh, so you'll hit the turrets first, damage them the most, and then when it's like uh, deploying the turrets outward, you'll damage the links the same pretty much. So if you do it correctly, you should kill off everything at the same time. Which is really easy to do with some ships and ex others yeah yeah it's primarily the um, garaga ships i find are the hardest ones to do mad ball with yes and shitter. they they come in varying degrees of shitty in yeah. general yeah um after that you know aside from this outer ring uh the the only points left to gain are the inner ring of yep. turrets you get 30k for each of the turrets and they're very simple to like you can do it very consistent consistently just kill up kill all of them yep. off um, uh, Pepperino, we've already gone over the scrub techniques, unfortunately. We're gonna have to watch the video later when we're finished. Yeah. Um, yep, all five hours of it. Exactly. <laughs> and um, when you're done picking off the, uh, the inner turrets, uh, you can also destroy the central turret with a non piercing shot uh, for 50k extra. Um, and it, it's like, there are a lot of different things to get into, which I'll, I probably will, uh, about how this is hard to do, because you can get three different turrets, uh, like from the main turret. Yeah. That's deploying in the center. Uh, the one that fires destructible bullets that you can see on the screen now, uh, one that fires uh, missiles, and one that fires a, cir a an aiming fast uh, shot with big yellow bullets. Yeah, the eight-way shot. <laughs> yes. And they all have different hitboxes. Uh, the hitboxes for the uh, the shots that are not eight-way are small, so you can easily pick off the inner turrets when they're, when that sort of thing is out. Yeah. But the hitbox for the eight-way turret is really big. Which means that you'll usually damage it more than you want to if you're firing at the central uh, central turrets when that thing is out as well. So sometimes you don't even want to be firing if you're trying to pick off the central turret. Yeah. Um, and it, it gets even more finicky when the boss moves because then you yes. sometimes the, the hitboxes don't overlap and um, you sometimes um, like hit the main body that's underlying uh, turret. Exactly. So yeah, it, yes. it, it gets even more difficult. So it's safe to just shoot it only when it's not moving at all. And exactly. when it's moving, just better not shoot it. 
yeah, anything else is just for people who are extremely used to the game. Yeah. Um, yeah. One way to uh, overcome this is by moving very, very close, so that the hitboxes of your own shot goes over the hitbox line underneath, and only yes. hitting the hitbox of the tower that you want to hit. So that's why you see so many of the super players go very, very close, yeah. and yeah. Uh, point blank yeah, and the core, it's practically and, and point the hitbox blanking, of the yeah. tower, not the hitbox yeah. of the box. Yeah. I would say, like, from what I can see here, I'm just watching the stream and watching... Uh, I. I think I'm doing this in a, in a pretty much optimal way. This is actually Kaeda's replay, I believe. <laughs> no, Yamanaka's no, in that Yamanaka's, case. Yamanaka's, yeah. Yeah, but anyways, you know, that's the same way you should do it with any shit, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and... Um, basically, it, we're gonna go into different strategies for everything. You, what we can say before we do that is just that it's very easy to get full point uh, with the uh, area of effect bomb ships, aside from Shitta, she's a bit more finicky. <laughs> she's yeah. a bit more shitty. Um, <laughs> but any other ship, like any Garega ship, is much harder to do. Much harder to do. Yeah. And one more okay. fundamental that's maybe not that important for all ships, but that's still a fundamental technique of the game is that the um, uppermost 120th of the screen. It's a zone yes. where the enemies are invincible. Yeah. You can yes. shoot them and you get tick points from them, but you cannot damage them. And that's very important at Madfall. Um, not only at this place, um, we, we get to talk about some other. Yeah. But for some characters, this is uh, very important. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah, the dead yeah. zone we never really touched on, but if you look on the no. screen at the moment, it's where the bottom. Baseline of insert coin is stretching up to the top of the screen, so it's quite yes. a yeah, sizable area. And yeah, it's not exactly. only in the Rega, it's always also in like Ibawa and game. Yeah, yeah, it's all the racing games. Regular, you can, you can see yeah. them there as well, and they are as important. Yeah, yeah. yes. Like, and I think I read this somewhere, but what I heard at least is that anything above that line is not really invincible. But rather, it has its own sort of HP bar that is much higher. Hi, yeah, you explained this to me yesterday. Do you want yeah, to go over Yeah, with the laser it? torrents. Yeah, well, we can yeah, leave it, that until later if you want, because I think that yeah, ties but, in. Yeah, but basically, what you need to take into account is any time you bomb Madball, especially with this outer ring, because it's much bigger, Yeah. Uh, you have to wait for him to go way down on the screen, because if you don't then you will be bombing something that's technically invincible. Yeah. So you won't you won't be destroying it in the same fashion. It's because you'll probably, like if you were to deploy a bomb when he was too high up on the screen, yeah. you would probably just destroy a link, and then you would lose out on like um, 75k points or something per turret that's up there, so you can lose 300k, 200k from a single bomb. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, um, in terms of Silver Sword, what you want to be doing is uh, you collected a lot of bomb fragments on the way, of course. So you have uh, close to one and a half bombs. Um, I think it's like um, you need one full bomb and 25% of a bomb or something. Yeah. You suicide at the beginning before the boss fully extends. Uh, so that you can damage the, uh, the outer turrets as much as possible and not damage the links. Mm -hmm. And after that, you gotta wait for it to scroll down. You pull off a full bomb when it's fully contracted. In order to damage the outer turrets again. And the second bomb you pull off. The timing is a bit more tricky for this one. Because you want, you want it to be deployed as the boss is about to extend the outer ring. Because if you do that, then you will kill off all of the outer turrets. Uh, but you'll make sure to do it when he, when the boss has like triggered a phase that's technically for the outer turrets. Yeah. Which means that the normally, if you were just to bomb and just leave it be, the central turret would activate and start shooting at you. Yeah. But if you wait and let it trigger a different sort of phase. The central turret will remain inactive, and you can just shoot the um, 
this inner turrets for an entire uh, phase mm -hmm. uh, with no consequence whatsoever and just damage them. Which is something you can see in the replay here, and that's like a every ship, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Because otherwise it's really hard to destroy all of the in boss. Yeah. So yeah, that's basically Silver Sword. After you've destroyed the outer turret with bomb, all you need to do is just pick off the inner turrets with precision shooting. Yeah. And when you've done that, suicide to gain more bombs to use in the beginning of the next stage. Yeah. And finally pick off the inner turret with your non-piercing shot, of course. Yeah. And kill the boss. Yeah, I think one yeah. thing should be noted is that you generally want the inner turrets to fire the the silver bullets at you, not the destructible ones, because the destructible ones will absorb all of your shots and it'll take you longer to destroy the inner turrets that way. Yeah, but it doesn't really matter if you're yeah. positioning. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you're positioned, but it is kind of annoying, especially if you've had to wait a long time for the outer turrets to, you know, do their thing and, you know, you get an opportunity to bomb them and uh, yes. it just eats into the boss time, basically, so... Yeah, also <laughs> another thing to take into consideration is that um, the hitboxes, at least for the two turrets that you want to be shooting on the Mad Ball, uh, are square. Yeah. They're not shaped around like what you would think they are. They're just precisely square. And um, I think the hitbox of the, of the boss itself, like the central core, is square as well. So you want to make sure to position the central turret so that the hitboxes don't overlap, so yeah. you can fire with aim shots to only hit the uh, outer central turret. Yeah. And the way you can see that is if the boss itself is flashing or not. If the boss is flashing, you're hitting the, the inner central core, and then you're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's supposed to be flashing when you're hitting the boss is the turret itself. Yeah. Two more things to note um, when attacking the inner ring, maybe. Um, the most important uh, time when you attack the inner ring when the um, attack is about to start, because then there are no bullets on screen. You can point blank and you can um, damage the inner ring. Once yes. it shoots bullets of any kind, you have to go down a bit to dodge the bullets. Exactly. Yeah, and the other thing to make it generally easier with. Um, at least the ships that feature a non-piercing option set is that you can activate homing options to very precisely attack the um, inner wing only when needed, when the homing options are um, like aimed at the inner wing. Sometimes they are aimed at the main part, so you have to wait once they are aiming at the inner ring, and it may take some time because they're spinning around and then the hitbox vary and you Homing actions are taking different cards, but uh, yeah. once they are on the inner ring, on the inner towers, um, then you can safely just shoot them without um, shooting the main body and damaging the boss stay to the side of the screen while looking at the um, boss. The difficult, uh, difficulty with this is that you have to dodge the bullets while you're looking at the boss and shoot very precisely. Yeah, and sometimes... So it's it's kind of... Kind of you have to get used to it at first, but it's um, definitely, for example, for shits like Silver Sword, it's worth it. Yeah, and I would say that comes into factor even playing with... Of course, like, yeah. of course, Breath of because of this main... Yeah, and, and also uh, Wild Snail, of course, because it's even harder, it's even easier with piercing shots to accidentally kill off the boss too early. Yeah. Right. So... Basically, you need to position yourself even more economically and sufficiently in order to pick off every turret that you need to yeah. need to destroy. It's and also maybe one like... more thing about the first, the very first suicide we have seen with sword and grasshopper. Um, you have to time it correctly so that your shrapnel hits all the outer towers. Um, not when it comes uh, right when it comes on the screen, the boss. When you suicide right when it comes on the screen, uh, damage all the outer rings. 
So exactly. you have to wait until it's on screen, and then as soon as it's there and fully on the station, yeah. Do the and the, re the reason you gotta time it that way is because um, the shrapnel that like <clears throat> gets expunged from your ship when you suicide uh, decreases in velocity the farther away it gets. Yes, yes, and you so, want to hit it all even more. Exactly, and it's very much like a feeling sort of thing. You, you get a feel for it eventually. Um, but it's, uh, it's very finicky, and the timing makes a huge difference. Right. Because if you, if you do it too early, you won't damage the turrets enough. And if you do it too late, you will damage the links too much. Right. Oh, and by the way, we are quite lucky that um, the turrets of the uh, outer ring are actually spinning around. Because usually when you run into an enemy... Um, the shrapnel only hits all the other enemies, but not the one enemy you hit into and die. So <laughs> yeah, for exactly. this outer wing, when it spins around, the part where you were flying into, um, which is usually not hit by your shrapnel, is still hit because it moves to that exactly. zone again. So we yes. are very happy that it's actually spinning around, because otherwise it would be uneven and we would lose on maybe yeah. the game. And that's the, only that's the only thing we're lucky about when it comes to yeah. these ships and that whole thing. Yeah. One thing I really want to get into as well is that um, the way the boss moves is, of course, what affects your bomb and the score you can get. And uh, the reason this is so annoying is the way he moves is entirely random. Yep. <laughs> and uh, uh. sometimes, sometimes you can go through basically at all of his cycles up until timeout, I've done that. where you have to. Yeah, yeah, I've done that too a lot of times. Where you have to dodge all of his bullets with combinations of three different sorts of patterns at the same time. Oh yeah, <laughs> I've done that. Before you're able to bomb, and, and that, that just sucks. It's, it's like some of the hardest dodging you'll ever do in a shooting game. Yeah. And if you want to score, you can't shoot to cause slowdown, because then you'll probably hit the boss. Unless he's like off to one side and you're on the other side. Yeah. And you can't you can't die either because if you die then you completely destroy your scoring potential you'll get like 25 percent of what you could otherwise get yeah oh, God. so i hate it when that happens i've actually got a highlight on yeah. my twitch where um i actually went through all of the phases of Madball, but still managed to get full score off it and killed it oh, during shit. timeout. it was just oh, leaving yeah, yeah, the yeah. screen and i managed to kill it just as it was about to hit me yeah, uh, that's happened to me too. I it's, hate it when that uh, happens. It's a, yeah. it's a typical Garriga moment. Yeah, yeah it is. It is. The yeah. Very typical mad ball. <laughs> yeah, I think um, one of the good things about it is that you really have to be in point with your dodging. Right? Yes, yeah. you do. You need to know how the, to... Those... Yeah. You... Yeah, if you get a combination of like uh, spinning circular bullets, yeah. uh, needle shots from the inner turrets, and the homing 8-way. Uh, yeah. That's like one of the hardest patterns in any shooting game ever. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty fun so, dodging all of that though, but you do need to know how to set it up in order to make it through safely. It's uh, not something a yeah. lot of players would probably see that often. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the things we should touch on as well. Uh, the biggest problem for most people with Madball when it comes to driving and dodging, is even like a new um, is the circular spread. Yeah. Basically, you have, I would say, there are th three things you have to take into account. Um, first of all, you have to um, check out in which way he's going after he's starting fire. Uh, because where you can actually fit into the gaps depends on the way he's moving. Yeah, yeah. And most of the time, you'll be safe in the or able to find a safe option in the lower left corner mm -hmm. because that's like the furthest away from where the bullets get because they first deploy from the right side and go outwards yeah um, after you've done w dodging the first um cycle uh, of the of the spinning bullets you can safely go up to the upper left side of the screen and you will find a, a big ass safe spot for just sitting and waiting oh, yeah. through the entire pattern. Mm -hmm. uh, with all ships, uh, regardless of rank, because you can't get ranked that high really if you're playing normally. Um, 
And also, another thing to know is that if the boss is low enough on the screen, and you go up to the rightmost side of the screen when he starts firing, yeah. that will also be a safe spot for the first part. Yeah. Because the bullets won't reach that high up, so you can just spin around him and you'll be safe. Yeah. Well, it will only be a safe spot when the boss is low enough. So. Yes, yes. But it is still a safe spot. It works if you if you have that lock. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. But, but you, you still got to react to the movement of the boss. So it's not like 100%, exactly. but when the boss is low, then it's something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, should we go into... Yeah, we got Grasshopper over here. Um, <laughs> so basically, uh, suicide, same timing as with Sulu. Of course. Um, and... The way you want to fire off your bomb, which you can see in the replay here, is that you want to fire it off just before he's extending his uh, outer turret ring. Mm -hmm. uh, because, as I mentioned before, the bomb in itself has piercing capabilities, so that usually means you get the maximum amount of points. But the amount of points you get is really random. It's like you can get anything from 400 to 650k um through i don't know no apparent difference really yeah it's it's really strange i i don't know how it works exactly mm. um after that is done just pick him off like with anything else and if you've upgraded to a piercing shot with grasshopper which is uh, the third upgrade level and above uh just um, you you can use that to damage more if you place it correctly yeah um yeah, that's pretty much Grasshopper. I think Gra Mad Ball is probably like the easiest trick with Grasshopper in general. And maybe one more subtle add to the When you go from the first phase to the second phase, and you have basically destroyed with your second bomb, well, with your first, your first bomb, right? With your first bomb, yeah. um, yes. all the um, outer turrets, and you're still in the first phase, and he's about to go to the next one. Uh, but right before, um, the inner core cannot be damaged yet, but you can still already um, hit all the inner. Turrets. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I that means that, that means you can just yeah that means you can just shoot with your piercing shot uh, on the main body, and it won't hurt, and just do yes. as much damage as possible, uh, so that you have to do less uh, in the second phase where the main body is exactly. Yeah, and that's. Bit. That's true unless the turrets have stopped firing. Because right, when the turrets exactly. stop firing, the entire boss hitbox becomes active. Yeah, and then phase two starts afterwards, and then it's yes. over. Exactly. So you have a tiny bit of leeway there. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, okay. Um, so yeah, Baron. Baron. Mm. And, um, yeah, I'm just gonna talk about some specifics here basically baron uh, handles the same way or very close to the same way that wild snail does. um in that you want to be suiciding uh use your invincibility from the side to get into the center of the boss and bomb all of the outer turrets at the same time so you can destroy them for as much gain as possible um however Baron's bomb is really weak, so you need to collect bomb fragments before. Um, I find that just slightly having slightly below a full bomb is optimal, because if you have a full bomb, sometimes you'll have one of the missiles going off from the side of the screen, um, becoming active and do more damage and hit the boss and accidentally kill it. So I tr try to have something like half a bomb to 75% of a bomb before I go into the fight. And what you want to be doing is wait through, dodge through five cycles in order for the inner turrets to trigger. Uh, because when you suicide at that point, you will damage every turret on the boss and make it easier to pick up the inner turrets and harder to kill off the main core yeah, too early. Um, and um, also, you have to make sure that you're suiciding when the boss is moving downwards to hit all of the turrets with your with your shrapnel. Okay. 
And then after you've done that, you gotta pray to God that it's staying on the lower side of the screen. Because uh, otherwise, uh, you're not gonna be able to kill off the turrets and they will suck. Baron. <laughs> yes. Uh, God. Baron. So, yeah. So finicky. Yeah. So what you can see here, he, he does it in a pretty efficient way. Yeah. Uh, if he had a bit more bomb fragments, he could have picked up all of the turrets yeah. for a bit more points, but um, it's still really good. Yeah. Um, Is also using that single homing option like we mentioned before? Um, just no, no, I, I shoot with uh, no, it's you. more option formation instead. Yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I find it's easier to control, honestly. Mm. But uh, the thing is, for some reason, you usually have yeah, central turret uh, a lot faster with Baron than with other ships. So you usually have to dodge through this random ass pattern a lot longer than you would with any other ship. Yeah, yeah. Still, just playing the waiting game is annoying though, because obviously Mad Ball is, is affected by RNG. So if you get really bad luck, you're waiting for a very long time and. He's yes. not as he's not as useful as Wild Snail is when you're waiting for, you know, the activation. Exactly, and if you wait through seven cycle, have three patterns aimed at you at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a reset usually. So, <laughs> uh, nah, well, it depends on what you want to be going for. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, Baron's finicky. And should we go directly into Wild Snail? Yeah, uh, yeah, we can do. Sure. So, Wild Snail is very similar. Uh, you go through the same motions as Flying Baron, except that if you have scored well enough, you'll be able to get... Um, uh, first of all, you'll have about... Yeah, you'll have two lives going into the fight, and you'll get another extend during uh, the bombing phases. So what you can do in order to safely pick up all inner turrets without having to risk uh, killing the boss off too early is that you can first suicide and get kill off the inner turrets, stay in there, suicide again, go in and um, kill off the inner ring with a bomb. If you do that correctly, with correct positioning and timing, you will have killed off all of the parts without uh, risking destroying the central core. So you get a lot of you get all of the you get for a lot less of a risk than you would otherwise take. Yeah. Right, right. But can you maybe elaborate a bit more exact positioning? Because it's not just going into the middle, right? Uh, no. Uh, first of all, yeah, yeah, you gotta go into the middle. Um, like you gotta sit right on top of the sprite. Right, so right. In, just in, slightly, slightly up, right? Uh, doesn't have to be slightly up. Uh, the most important thing is that you wait with deploying the bomb until you're sat exactly in the middle. Because if you don't, if you deploy it too early, uh, you will accidentally hit the core and you will destroy the boss too early. And if you hit it too late, then the the bomb won't kill off all of the turrets before you before you suicide again, and you will lose that way too. You can also do it that way, whatever. So long as you're just staying in the middle, it's no problem at all. Um, but then, in, in, in order to hit all the outer turrets, you want to um, like spin the um, bomb options or whatever, like the two flamethrowers. You want to spin them around, you, right? So that they can. go to the back. And that means the hitbox of the main boss needs to be to your back so that they actually aim at the bottom again. So yeah. you need to be a little bit more up. At least that's what you, I thought. Yeah, you don't have to spin. It's not necessary, but it's, oh, really? it I didn't know it, that. Cool. Yeah, it, it makes it a bit easier though, because um, you know, as I said before, the way the flames move is random. So sometimes, if you're just sitting still, you won't be hitting all of the parts. The I spinning see, around see. makes it a bit more easier. Um, also, uh, there was something else here. Um, yeah, if you got another, if you got some bomb fragments going into the fight. Uh, you can use your bomb invincibility to get inside of the rings and suicide before uh, bombing the core. What that will do is that you will cost less damage to the links and more damage to the turrets, uh, which will 
increase your chances of getting all of the parts destroyed instead of just like destroying links prematurely. So you mean you suicide while you are in the middle of netball? Yeah, you can see it in the replay here, uh, where she yeah, but what, she basically what she, she triggers her bomb uh -huh. uh, right before she's supposed to collide with the outer ring. Which means that s since she's invincible for like two or three frames, she will go into the middle of the boss, you see there, and suicide. It's kind of a high level trick, yeah. but it makes a bit of a difference. Like, I usually get 50k more or something from doing that. So it is worth right. it if you can right. pull it off. Ah, I, I see. Uh, um, I, because we were talking about it earlier, not on stream, but um, before the stream. Um, mm. What are the conditions to make the shrapnel disappear from suiciding? Oh, and, it's um, if, you have an, if you have an active bomb. Yeah, if, we, if you have an active bomb, but when you go into mad ball with an active bomb and then you suicide you wouldn't expect shrapnel to come out but it actually does come out yeah because uh, so as, soon as, 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 soon, as soon as you die with um, uh, with wild snail for an example your bomb oh, so then stops. the bomb is over so you basically yeah. can only make the shrapnel disappear with like gain or born and stuff. yeah anybody that has I an see, active yes. bomb on the screen at the same time and i think that's true for okay all right gotcha yeah so anytime a bomb is active on the screen, yeah, uh, you don't get any shrapnel at all. And this is very important for Mad Bull 2, for example, with um, ships like Gain or Bornham, where you can bomb and suicide on the boss uh, and not have any shrapnel damage the boss at all. Right. So if you're, for an example, if you forgot to suicide one extra time at uh, No Slapping 2 or something, you can just do that trick and hope that you'll get good RNG enough for him to be low enough two times in a row and bomb a second time to get the full amount of points. So yeah, that's uh, that's Wild Snail. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> yeah. That's Wild Snail. Mad Bull, both incarnations of Mad Bull suck with Wild Snail. Yeah, um, they do. They're probably the worst parts of the run for a wild snail, I think. And birds. And birds, yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's good that they're early in the game, though. Yeah. Aside well, from Mad Bull 2. Yeah, aside from yeah, Mad Bull 2. Yeah, particularly the birds. Um, it's just great to have them um, almost in stage 1, like at the very, very beginning. Yes. <laughs> By the way, talking about the length of the game, um, you see that it has several stages, but yeah. um, when you look at the time, actually, the midpoint of the game is the fight of Blackheart at the end of stage 5. Yes. So um, it's basically the first five stages and then stage 6 and 7 for the end game, and that's yes. the second half of the game. Yeah, and that second half is so much harder. Yeah. Not for yeah. scoring, but in terms of survival. Exactly. Okay, so we got Gain here. I would say that's probably the easiest ship to deal with Mad Ball. Oh, hell yeah. Way easier than yeah, anything else. Yeah, let's go with Gain. Yeah. Skip ahead. Um, here we go. Because, uh, first of all, you need very few bomb fragments. You can do with, you can make do with, like, uh, half a bomb from suiciding and uh, four fragments at the lowest, I think, from just collecting shit during the stage will be enough. And... Um, Basically, what we talked about before, the same general rules apply here. Um, you want to be uh, uh, waiting for the boss to go down low yeah. and uh, bomb when all of the central turrets are, uh, all of the outer turrets are basically uh, contracted. And uh, you can shoot at the same time with gain as well to increase damage dealt and. Uh, damage the inner turret some more, and after that, when you're done with that part, just aim your piercing shots to the side so that you only hit the central tur the, the inner turrets. Um, pick them off one by one, suicide to get bombs for the start of the next stage, and um, kill off the central turret with a non-piercing shot, and you're done. Yeah. Yeah. The most important thing about the timing of the bomb is um, that you have to throw it um, when the core is active so when the um, either when the outer towers are 
um, extracting or when they are detracting, uh, but not yes. when they are like fully extracted. Your aerial bomb is not enough to hit everything. And when yes. it's fully closed, you will hit the main battery. So basically, exactly. you throw the bomb either when it's right before getting bigger, extracting, or yes. when it's about to close down fully and go back exactly. to the and that's fight. also because uh, the turrets in themselves take more damage to kill than the links do. Right. So if you're like if you're damaging, they will just destroy points for the turrets. Yeah. So. And I, for myself, when playing game, uh, find it much more bomb when the um, outer wing is about to extract. So unlike in this replay where the bomb, yeah, when it's about to close down, it's a bit more difficult. I think at least maybe it's just personal preference. Yeah, yeah, I do the same thing. I think it's much easier. Yeah, and plus yeah. you don't have to dodge any bullets. Or yes, you have to dodge when. Uh, yeah, exactly. Players. This is the the strategy you see here is just for some incredibly used to the game that. Yeah, yeah right. It, right. It, it, there's not even a risk to her in doing that. <laughs> uh, okay. So we have Shitta coming up now, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Skipping right ahead. Give me a second. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Go and talk about it. Chitta, mm. chitta, chitta, chitta. Uh. Yeah, I do this in a different way to uh, the way Ket does it, of course, because he's the number one player for it. But um, I mean, both ways are viable. It's just that he's using a more a higher scoring route, so. Um, since he has more points from earlier, he can afford to do it because he has an extra extended eye on. <laughs> and here's. This is going to be a demonstration of what we talked about before with, like, if you have an active bomb and you suicide, you're not going to be releasing it in shrapnel. Right. And here it's especially important because the shrapnel otherwise would have hit the um, main core. So it's yes. very important that the bomb is active. So. Exactly. Uh, and you can do this in several ways. This is the way Cat does it, where he's collected some bombs before, and he is, um, he's bombing once, suiciding to get another half of a bomb, that, and then deploying that bomb again when the, the boss is down low to get the full amount of points. The way I do it, though, is uh, I've suicided that and collected all of the bomb fragments so I have like uh, more than one and a half bombs and I just uh, make sure to hit the first bomb when the boss is down low and the second in the same manner and you get the same amount of points for that as well all right aside aside from that I would say the only thing to really take into account is that her um, options are kind of like, uh, they are semi-homing. So that might be a bit tricky in picking off all of the inner turrets without destroying the central turret. Yeah. But if you just keep that in mind, it shouldn't be a problem. At all. I haven't had any problem with getting all of the points from that ball with her. It's just um, the bombing in itself that's hard. Yeah. Um, by the way, one more basic thing we haven't addressed yet is and uh, this accounts for all characters, is that you want to finish stage two and thus met for, um, with, with bomb fragments. Metals. Yeah, oh, yes. with bomb fragments, because you need to um, bomb the way at the beginning of stage three immediately. Yeah. So that's why the player for this replay, for example, kills himself, even though he doesn't really need to at the end of the fight, just to get um, bomb fragments back to uh, bomb the way at the beginning because it won't get any bomb threat at the very very start of stage three. Yeah. So that's um, yes. also important yeah. to keep in mind. Yeah. These rails right here. Very very lucrative scoring part in stage three but yeah. you do need yeah. bomb fragments when you enter stage three for them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You get like um you get about one hundred eighty K from yeah. the first couple of rails that are falling down. Yeah. Yeah. And then you get like uh, I don't know 
something like three three hundred and twenty or something. Yeah. Uh, for yeah. the rest of them, it is so, substantial to actually get these reels. So you do need to set it up very carefully from Madball onwards. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, especially with Shitta, because <laughs> yeah. since her bomb is so late in deployment, you gotta deploy it like right after you kill the boss. Yeah. Otherwise, you won't get the full amount of medals. Yeah. 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 And talking about the bomb or the rails, um, it's also to, um, to keep in mind that you can actually lose the first two medals by bombing too late. Um, yes. So the very first part of the rail, um, we sometimes overlook and don't keep in mind to place your bomb early and um, quite low to the bottom to get those extra 20k. So the first two medals are quite easy to overlook. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, that's Shifta basically. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Talking about stage three all the time, but we're still in stage two. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> go back to Madball. Back yeah, to Mad go Ball. back to Miyamoto. We have more. Mr. Samurai Dragon. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Um, yeah. So basically, uh, a couple of things. Um, what you want to do is uh, collect enough bomb fragments during the stage so that you have at least close to a full bomb when you reach Madball. Um, because you need um, approximately one and a half bombs in order to capitalize on, on the bombing part. Um, the first thing you do is, of course, suicide like all of the other suicides at the start. Um, then you make sure to bomb the boss when it's... Uh, fully contracted, uh, as you can see him doing here. Uh, and the second bomb should be deployed in a similar timing to Silver Sword. So you you basically pull it off right before he's supposed to uh, yeah, e extend his uh, turret ring. Yeah. And in order to more easily pick off the inner turret, um, I and probably Kaida as well would recommend picking up homing options yeah. and using two of them at the same time because that will greatly help if you're experiencing uh, destructible bullets. Yeah. Yes. Um, and after that, it's just pick off the inner turrets and uh, do it with a lot of precision because every single time you do this, the central turret is going to get destroyed before the inner turrets. Yep. Um, <laughs> Splash damage. So you, yes. So you're gonna have to do a lot of these things: uh, tight dodges through this random ass pattern, while just tapping to make sure that you can destroy the inner turrets. Um, and of course, suicide at the end to get uh, bomb fragments for bombing the rails. Yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm just gonna check. One thing here. I might be in need of some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've been at it for three and a half hours, you know. Yeah. I told you it's not gonna be a short one. We're not even out of stage uh, two no. yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's really this this is a yeah. this is a pretty big part of the game though. Yeah, it is a, yeah, it's it a is. key it part is. of the game because it appears twice and yes. it's worth almost three million if you do it properly as well, in total. Exactly. And that's a big part of your score. Yeah, it's a huge part of your score, yeah. So actually yeah. knowing how to handle Mad Ball is most of the game, I think. The rest of it is pretty <laughs> self-explanatory. <laughs> yeah, the game ends up in Mad Ball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and ends with Mad Ball. Yeah. Um, so, um, okay, we have Bornum coming up. And uh, I, honestly, Boy. Bornum is like... Um, Bornum is kind of a gain, but more simple, I would say. Uh, you get light, yeah. somewhere between uh, three quarters of a bomb and a full bomb. Yeah. Uh, you bomb him at it, it, using the same timing as gain, and then by positioning you try to pick up the uh, inner turrets. Um, then you suicide to get bomb fragments for the third stage, and that's just it. It's very simple. Yes. Um, so we, we can watch Bornham do it here in the background. And while we're doing that, I'm going to talk a bit about the differences between um, Madball 1 and 2. Yeah. 
Because we don't really need to do this again with Third Ball 2. <laughs> hell no, hell no. Not for every ship either. Um, <laughs> there are a couple of differences though. Um, basically, every pattern he fires is different. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, he's also going to have high because of increased rank. Yeah. So, you handle him the same way. It's just that um, patterns are usually harder and you need to think a bit more about your route and planning because um, with most ships, you need more bombs. For gain, for an example, uh, using a full bomb is always safe, regardless of rank. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Bornum. Uh, so you should always make sure to have a full bomb. Uh, best way to do this is to have at least two lives going into No Slapping 2, which comes uh, right before Madball 2. Yep. And you suicide both of those lives away before you kill the boss. Yep. That will both decrease rank enough not to get any super hard patterns, like you, you still have a safe spot. Uh, during the circular spread pattern on the upper left corner yeah. uh, and you can bomb for the full mill when he's going down low uh, an important thing to note though for the ships with non-piercing shots is that sometimes if the um, central turret fires destructible bullets and the inner turrets fire destructible bullets at the same time um, every non-piercing shot that has an auto fire level below 12 hertz is not going to be able to destroy the bullets and you will get killed. Hmm. That's interesting. Yes. So you either need to raise your auto or just hope to God that you don't receive that pattern. Yeah. Um, I think it's safest to raise auto fire levels. So that's why with every ship that fires non piercing, if I don't already have 12 hertz before going into no slapping 2, I raise it to yeah. 12 hertz before that. Mm. Yeah. Which good is a advice. good idea in general because you'll be able to kill off the boss more efficiently. Yeah, yeah. But that's just um, basic. One, one small survival tip, um, because especially um, beginners and also players will struggle with a second form of Metal Mark II. Yes. Um, and one of the most difficult attacks is when the um, double missile launcher is shooting and you can um, easily manipulate this attack by uh, leading the double um, shot to the side so yeah. uh, yes. if, you, if you see that the missile launcher the double missile launcher is extracting either mm -hmm. fly down to the left or to the right topmost uh, part of the screen and then it yes. will um, shoot there and you have only um, to dodge all those other attacks done by the um, inner ring so that yes. makes things considerably easier uh, what we saw here just now, by the way, from my situation of um, using, uh, first of all, dodging the circular spread pattern and then using the safe spot in the upper left corner. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. So you have to only basically dodge it once and then save. Yes. Except when the rank is really high, it will spin more than you're maybe used to. Yeah. Yes. Out, and it will actually spin around fully and um, will not be a safe spot, like in this replay, uh, the second spinning. Uh, you yeah, will not be safe in the top market. Exactly. And another thing, like in terms of survival, is that when there are a lot of bullets on screen yeah. and you're firing your shot at the same time, you can cause slowdown in the game. Yeah. Right. Right. So, like, aiming your shots off you to the side. you want to, of course, not damage the main body. So, when you want to control um, the slowdown, the um, bullet patterns, just try to stay on the left or the right side, and then shoot. Yes. Don't stay underneath the boss. And exactly. It depends on where the boss is. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh shit! I actually got a full mad ball there. Yeah, you got a full mad ball. It was pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> quite rare for the Mark II. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say it's pretty easy with Boredom though, but yeah. Yeah. He's the beginners. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Um. Okay, so I'm going to check here and see what we have coming up next. Well, we're in stage uh, three now, finally. Yes. <laughs> yeah, let's, okay. let's go back to stage three, actually. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, mm, hmm. Honestly, there are a lot of basic stuff that nobody really needs, like uh, you know, bombing the silos for metal and um, triggering the extend. Uh, the only... Uh, Solid extend in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, 
maybe let's let's go very quickly into the details of the stage. Yeah. Um, right beside yes. the silos, there are um, stationary enemies lying on the ground, and you get yes. also more points by bombing them. So you can either try to bomb them when you are bombing the silos, or you can just drop bomb another like one fragment, two fragment bomb on them. It's yeah, exactly. I usually um, use a bigger bomb to bomb all of the silos and the enemies at the. Same yeah, like the the three missile launchers you see on the left side first, they are worth nothing with the bomb, but those yes. uh, four red enemies above, they are important. Um, yes. The next part are the um, stationary slayers. So the slayer is the big green ship you will encounter in stage five, and there it will attack you. But here yeah. only the turrets will attack you. Um, exactly. One important thing is that all the stationary slayers in this part of the game have completely different values to the one compared to in stage 5. Yes. So while you want to bomb all the parts in uh, the one in stage 5 and you can like harm all the body parts of it here, you can only destroy the parts you can um, already shoot with your shot off. Yes. And um, it's best done with weapon, very um, carefully dropped weapon with like one, two, three fragments, depending on the character. And yeah, and also, also you, have, you have to damage you have to damage the parts enough first as well. Yeah, and it's especially helpful when you damage them while they are in the zone because you can then try to damage them before you can actually destroy them, but still do damage to them because the hitbox is active and the damage meter is active, but you cannot destroy them, so um, you can sometimes just do a bit more damage this way. Yeah. Uh, it's something you get a feel for eventually, uh, and it's all to yeah. do with crowding. Like if you come in there with the same rank, which you yeah. should have all the time because it's so early in the game, yeah. uh, it's going to be mean, the same thing every time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, overall, it's quite a difficult part because you have to get a feeling for quite a lot of hitboxes. You not get yes. a lot of points uh, overall, so it's basically more of an advanced strategy, um, all in all. So I wouldn't recommend it to begin. With. But, um, yeah, just but it, I, to me, I would say that's, the, that's the only. Game. To me, that's the only way of making the stage fun, though. So, <laughs> I don't yeah, know. I, yeah, I, right, I started right. doing it pretty early. Um, and one one last thing, maybe to add, is the um, stationary enemies on the right side. The hover boat. Um, you find like um, 20, 25 enemies lying on the ground. They're not yes. shooting at you, and you want to destroy the right half of them with your um, bomb because it gives you points and um, the left half instead doesn't give you anything at all it exactly zero points i think even. so try to use a weapon uh, a bomb on the white part enemies just yes. ignore the left ones exactly um i think that's pretty much it for the stage it's it's not very complicated in any way no. yeah uh, and then of course the extent which again you have to get a feeling for the hitbox and, and, yeah, and, and the, uh, just damage. for like clarifications purposes, the way to trigger the extend yeah. is to do both sides of right. the boss and right. wait for him to scroll to a standstill at the end of the stage and then kill the boss. Yeah. Uh. Or the big enemy or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so now we have Earth Crisis. And mm. Earth Crisis is um, very similar with all ships. Uh, yeah. The only thing that really differs is the ships that are milking him the way you're positioning themselves. Yeah. Um, so basically what you want to do is destroy all of the parts beside the central turret you can see here. Um, because if you don't destroy the center part, uh, the boss's main core is not going to become active. You just continue shooting that part for tick points. Yeah, well, technically, you can also let one or the other tower. So it's just. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. One it it depends on the. has to be alive. It can be the right one or the right one as well. Yeah, there are, there are three turrets. And so long as one of them is alive, the central core won't yeah. trigger at all. Um, and there are lots of different, different ways to handle this. but um, it, And it depends on the ship. I would say all of them do it pretty exactly, similarly, exactly. aside from Miyamoto. Because he can easily dispatch uh, the part you see here, like the middle part, yeah. with just standing on top of the boss and aiming his options downwards. Yeah. This also well, makes it easier to get more tick points over time, because you can uh, just as easily just press 
press the C button once to cycle through the options, get to forward formation, and shoot the core part uh, with your collected options in between to get even more tick points. Right. Let's see that in action, shall we? <laughs> yes. It's actually quite interesting how he does it, though. I like the, the little trick he does with the backward-facing um, options. Yeah, it's really fun to do it's, as well. It's pretty cute, yeah, I like it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one thing to note as well here with Miyamoto during this stage is that you shouldn't bomb the ship parts with Miyamoto. Because you actually get even more points just from point blanking the parts yeah. with your options yeah. instead of bombing them. So don't care about bombing the parts with Miyamoto. Yeah. Uh, probably need a million fragments to do it anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, his bomb is so weak. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah, here you can see the way he's using his options to gain the maximum amount of tick points and destroy the parts as quickly as possible. It's such it's a pretty wack dodge there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Insane. Man. It's, it, th this is the reason why Miyamoto is fun to play. Yeah. Um, we'll be here uh, for about really fun. two minutes. <laughs> yeah. And Miyamoto gains a ridiculous amount of points. Like, if we go into specifics, um, yeah. you can show off the different videos. But basically, placement for the milking part. Uh, this is the optimal way to do it with Miyamoto, because you're sitting in a safe spot where the turret can't hit you. Uh, but, he's, but you're not sealing his bullets, so you're not increasing rank that much. Because if you're... The right. rank will increase much faster. Right? Yeah. Yeah, we haven't talked about that, but yeah. Yeah, but it's it's just a small part, a small optimization, yeah. basically. I mean, it's like one bullet every like five seconds, so it's not really worth it. But but yeah. still, yeah. maybe maybe yeah, just it, something. It's a, it's a small part. You can do that with uh, any of the ships that gain points from point blanking. Like if you're having a fully powered Bornum, yeah, uh, uh, you can do the same thing in a similar safe spot. And it uh, certainly looks cool. Yeah. Uh, but in general, you could say that most of the non-piercing ships, including Bornam, you don't really want to bother with milking the boss at all because it's yeah. not really worth it. Yeah, I mean, the gains uh, is like really small. It's like 50,000, possibly, something yes. like that. It's, yeah. I, mean, I, I think it's around 70 or something with Bornam if you've got high auto fire and maximum yeah. power up. If you're maxed out, then yeah, but it's still not worth it in the long run, at no, least for the beginning. Of it is, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. Um, I think in some mm. cases it's also safe to skip it to not just for the rank but uh, to balance your scoring as well. But that's just the way exactly. I read it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the the ships that want to be milking is uh, Miyamoto, as we can see here, because yep. he gains like I think he gets over three hundred and fifty k or something just from the milk. Yeah. It's it's or crazy. Possibly possibly even more. It's like ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and with um. Grasshopper, this is kind of finicky. First of all, the way you want to position him is if you if you look below the center turret, you can see that there's like three stripes that are more darkly colored than the rest. Yeah. Um. Okay, that wasn't really that wasn't really grasshopper though. I'm just talking shit. <laughs> Anyways, you you want to kill the center turret with grasshopper, and you want to be sitting just at the top of the center turret's like exploded hitbox or something. Um, and also, if you want the maximum amount of point gain with Grasshopper, you're going to have to power up to special level up, which means that you'll have um, uh, four piercing shots at the same time. Yeah. And um, you'll g gain like 120 to 140k or something. Yeah. Um, Kaide actually fucks it up in this replay because he dies somewhere. Yeah. Um, but it, it's a lot more worth than doing it with a regular uh, double piercing shot because that way you get like 70k, yeah. and with special shot you get 140 to 120, so it's almost a 100% increase. Um, with Wild Snail, however, that's why I mentioned the uh, uh, those uh, sort of um, stripes, the darkly colored stripes down there. Yeah. Uh, with Wild Snail, you want to be sitting... Uh, Right, so that the lowest part of your ship overlaps with the highest stripe. Um, uh, 
that will give you like yeah the maximum amount of points per second pretty much um a lot of people have to experiment with this and watch the counter to see what increases points the most but yeah it's yeah. generally a good idea to do that yeah um, and i think the, it's the most important um, when you're playing with games because of the thoughts that have to be yes. fully on screen and fully overlapping with the hitbox of earth crisis so exactly you have to destroy um one of the side turrets and the main turret and then position yourself um in the middle and you have to position yourself exactly that one sword can be fully on screen and fully on the hitbox and it exactly will do, and you it will also, do quite a difference to your score so after all you will gain like 50 60k even so it's really worth it if you're like really yeah, yeah. high level play but we probably have to mention that um uh, the channel is um, talking about that um, when you're a beginner, do not ever care about milking Earth Crisis yeah. because um, it is very easy. Uh, but although it is, it's not really worth it because with most of the characters, you will increase rank quite a lot. Yeah. And it yeah. will be quite bad for your uh, late game. Yeah. And you will not gain that much. Um, yeah. Yeah. In um, general, though, really, if you've been keeping to your route yeah. and you've got like uh, two spare extents and one coming up afterwards, it just suicide all your lives away, and you will be close to like uh, lowest possible rank. Yeah. So. Right. But I mean, I remember that I was uh, when I was playing with game, I was getting G score, and I didn't care for Earth Crisis in Yeah. Um, oh yeah, yeah. It's not really that necessary. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's just a thing to do, but it matters in the end. Yeah. Um, Okay, gotta get myself another beer just a sec. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. Anyways, like the actual exact positioning with gain is that um, you want to position yourself so that the um, center part, or like the most center part, the tip of your ship, is aligned with one of the white stripes that are to the center yeah. of the central turret. Yeah, you can and, see it. And you there. also. Yeah. And you also want to be sitting so that yeah, the center of your ship's core is uh, kind of like just above the lowest line of the um, destroyed center turret. Yeah. I think the one thing we haven't really mentioned about Earth Crisis is auto fire is actually really important for milking it as well. Yeah, with gain especially. With gain especially. I mean, for those who have seen the special demonstrations um, number eight, um, Kamui actually goes into quite a lot of detail about it. But essentially, um, certain auto fire rates will fire the swords faster than other auto fire rates. So what she does is she purposely sets it to I think it's eight point three hertz, which is the slowest auto fire. But yes, it's, it's the default one. Yep, but it fires the swords the fastest, apparently. So she's getting yes. a shitload of tick here, as you can see, just because the swords yep. are well, blasting out as quickly as possible. Exactly. It's like, it's not the fastest rate, I think. Yeah, yep. 15 well, hertz is okay. faster. Yeah. Uh, but you don't want to be using 15 hertz at that point in Hell any no. sort of way whatsoever. No. So uh, in terms of the lower auto fire rates, uh, the default fire rate is the fastest one for sword cycles. Yeah. Yeah, positioning and auto fire rate is key here. So, um, yes. yeah, the thing is though, we even though we're talking about the trick here, we still say that for beginners, at the very least, don't actually do this because it will kill your rank. No, I, would say, I would say for any beginning ship, aside for Miyamoto, yeah, don't do this. But Miyamoto's game is too big not to do it. Yeah, well, Miyamoto, Miyamoto will get a lot of points out of it, but still, you. Yeah, he gets a huge amount of points, and do, not doing that is like missing out on the entire point of playing Miyamoto. Yeah, but you do need very so. good rank control at least throughout the rest of the game yeah, in order I mean, to offset exactly. it. Exactly. What What about rank? If you nah, I would Miyamoto. Honestly, or the, for the full time, is it not too bad for yeah. rank or is it alright? No, 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 I, I would say that for Miyamoto it's like, you know, his rank increase is so low anyways, unless you're staying fully okay. powered up at all times, so uh, doing doing something like that, and you should have at least two extents afterwards, and one coming up. Uh, right. If you suicide those extents away, um, you're not going to have any sort of problem whatsoever with rank in the game. Yeah. <sighs> So we? it's uh, yeah. Yeah. By the way, when talking about Miyamoto, just another um, side track. If you have ever wondered about his options, um, you see like Chinese characters flashing up 
each time yes. you shoot those options, um, you basically uh, see three different um, kind of character or characters which are read as ninjutsu or basically dai ninjutsu, which um, means like a ninja technique or whatever. So yeah. it's a samurai ninja dragon or whatever. <laughs> but yeah, let's, exactly. let's go yeah. to stage four. Just, just yeah. to side note. Because I need to get a beer. Yes. You guys can talk about this. Give me a second. <laughs> okay, awesome, awesome. Uh, well, uh, basically, uh, in this stage, you want to be doing some things similarly for every ship, which is bombing all of the bombable targets in order to gain points and uncommon medals. Um, most of the things that you can bomb that don't leave medals give you 10k each. Um, and aside from that, another important thing to do is to set yourself up for, with most ships at least, full bombs. Uh, on the uh, big uh, tanks just prior to the fourth stage boss, Satanic Surfer. And with some of the ships as well, you want to upgrade yourself to having full options, like four options. This is especially crucial for uh, Grasshopper, because as we mentioned before, his shot is super narrow, and it's at, at that point it should be piercing anyway. And for the boss, you need non-piercing shots to take him apart uh, with the maximum point gain. So, um, um, basically, setup is a bit different, but um, um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's not really much to say. It's a pretty straightforward stage. Yeah, I think probably the key part for this stage, at least, is these big four tanks coming up. Getting the full yes. bombs out of them. Yeah, there's yeah, lots of different ways to do it. Yeah. Most ships will want to do a suicide. Yeah. And the way you're supposed to time your, that suicide is that basically what I do is right before the leftmost tank scrolls into view, I suicide right in the center of the screen. Yeah. Uh, which will uh, destroy the threads of, of most of the tanks and enable me to collect full bombs yeah. uh, to use on the metal rails. Uh, with gain, however, it's much to uh, just um, destroy all of the threads with uh, the piercing options. In my opinion, at least. Yeah. yeah. So I think Kamui demonstrates quite efficient that here. Yeah, so her gain is actually, it's. I think it's quite hard to do that with gain though, because you have to be extremely precise with your sword shots. Uh, uh, well, it depends on how precise you are, I guess. Yeah, I, I'm I, not. I haven't had a... <laughs> oh, alright, well, yeah. <laughs> well okay, it's, uh, it's just a, a matter of getting used to it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, maybe one more thing on the four tanks. Um, the position of your um, suicide is quite important because if you're too close to the tanks, your shrapnel will not do damage to yeah. the very um, yeah the threads to the, to the middle two tanks and especially to the threads uh, that are uh, yeah. very much to the middle. So yeah. you have to be actually far away from the tanks, not quite to the bottom maybe, but as you said, exactly in the middle of the screen, but not to the top and run into the tanks themselves, but yeah. try to stay more distant to them. Yeah. yeah, you saw a pretty good demonstration over here. So yeah. it's around about here. So I usually, place, I'm it's normally a bit perfect. higher here, like, but yeah, yeah, about yeah. about in the middle here and somewhere quite low in the second, uh, in the lower half of the screen is a right, good place to right. do it. Yeah. <laughs> then. Yeah, is that my replay, by the way? This is yours, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what I thought. Yeah. Once you actually one, get a feel for it, it is very consistent to do. So yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, one thing to watch out because you're going to suicide here, and you see those red planes coming down. Yeah. Um, the worst that can basically happen is that you're suiciding, and one of the you planes is still on the screen, and yeah. you trigger metal, and of course yes. the metal uh, will drop, and you're fucked. Yeah. Because yeah, then the, mail, that, the, the metal waves before. are coming, and it's the worst case. Basically. Yeah. Well, that goes yeah. back so you want to the um, look on your um, item order yeah. and yes. just okay. uh, anticipate when the medals are coming or you want to not shoot those red enemies at all. Yeah. Wait until they are all off screen and then do the suicide. Yeah, exactly. If you if you know your item order then you can pretty much set up to not actually have a metal trigger when you suicide at this point. So yeah, it's good advice. Exactly. 
Oh, and yeah. if you have ever wondered, going a little bit back to the stage, if you have ever wondered when those um, orange tanks um, with eight um, uh, wheels, I think, when do they drop the option item and when do they drop the four bomb fragments? And this is especially important for stage six, even more so. Um, yes. It is connected to the amount of wheels that the tank has left when you kill it. So basically, when the number is even, you get four bomb fragments, and when the number of uh, wheels left when you kill it are uneven, you get the option item. Okay, but I didn't actually is, know that. Yeah, <laughs> and it's it's um, actually more important the uh, stage six when you want to trigger the special homing information. So it's connected yeah, yeah. to the number of uh, wheels left when you destroy them. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Hmm. Okay. Rails. So, yeah. No. <laughs> rails, rails, rails. Yeah, yeah rails. I, would, I would say that probably the metal rails, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yep, just gonna... The fucking rails. Yeah, those yeah. fucking rails, yeah. Damn those rails. <laughs> yeah, a bit of a, like, a disclaimer first. Uh, they go from, like, pulling it off, goes from kind of hard to extremely hard, depending on the ship speed. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So with um, with a ship like Miyamoto, for example, it's very easy to get a lot of medals in a safe manner. Uh, while with a ship like Bornham, for example, it's a, it's much more complicated, and getting full medals with Bornham is extremely hard. Yeah, Bornham, it's because yeah. of his speed. If you get a really bad medal spawn on the rails, then it's good night, your medal chain, basically. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And we talked about this a bit before. Yeah, we did. Um, yeah, but um, basically, w from what I've noticed, is that the metals or the metal rails behave in three different ways. Um, the, like, when you bomb them, they either uh, get, like, destroyed from the left, the right, or from where you deployed your bomb. And, like, what's actually deciding uh, which one of those scenarios that happen seems to be entirely random. Yeah. So I'm guessing that's determined by RNG, because sometimes, like you see here, the first bomb Miyamoto did after, like, when getting to the big part with the tank hatches on the side, yeah. um, he pulls off the bomb in the middle and the rails explode from the middle. Yeah. But the last rail that he gets... He pulls off the bomb with a single fragment in the middle. It's yeah. not supposed to be able to explode anyway, but in the middle. Yeah. But it still explodes from the right side to the left. Yeah. I was just about to mention so that, actually, yeah, because that's a pretty good example of how random these rails are. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, I think that's a typical example of Yagawa trollery. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Because he, maybe in, in, the, in the design of the game, he saw that, okay, you can get a from these rails if you got full metal so yeah. i'm just gonna insert some random ass shit in there just so people can get fucked over for nothing oh yeah <laughs> yeah because the last rail in particular is extremely uh scary for anybody playing this game because when you're triggering that one it's like um uh, you know you either go full blast and you collect medals or you lose your metal chain and you lose out on at least 150k yeah yeah and increased rank and whatsoever yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the nice thing about miyamoto is that he's pretty fast so he can collect everything here but i think we'll queue up yeah. a slow ship like wild snail uh yes wild <laughs> snail is really finicky but it's um it's not that hard to get consistent yeah in my opinion it takes a bit of practice and a bit of setup, if I remember correctly, at least for the first yeah, rail. Yeah, setup is the most. Yeah, uh, uh, basically, what you want to do with the first rail is, um, you know, the way the flames work is that they home in on anything that's. Um, so you want to leave some of the tanks and turrets alive, that are close to the first tank hatch. You want to deploy your bomb, pretty damn late. Uh, collect all of the medals from the tank hatch and go up to one side of the screen, like right or left doesn't really matter, but any side of the screen, um, and uh, trigger the metal rails with the last part of your bomb. And also, very importantly, you don't want to do this too early, because if you do, then the medals are going to go 
up on top of the screen where you can't collect them at all. Mm. Right. Um, and th that will make recovering and collecting all the medals impossible. So you want to do it as late as possible to give yourself the maximum amount of time to collect all of the medals and adjust your trajectory to collect the rest that are falling off. Yeah. Uh, this is also why you should play Iron Man, because he has a bigger hitbox and yeah. a bigger chance of uh, collecting any medals that are supposed to be falling off the screen. Yeah. Yeah. One thing so, yeah. about the um, the appearance of Satanic Surfer, and this is one thing um, Icarus, you have found out, I think, yeah. is that um, as long as you let one or more tank alive um, from the last... Um, hatch from that house. Yeah. Um, satanic self will appear later. If you destroy yes. all the tanks, or if you destroy the house and no other tank can come out, yeah. he will appear earlier. So you can delay the appearance and by this maybe make the first rail a bit easier. Yeah, it's pretty exactly. weird how that works. I still don't know why it works, but it is consistent enough to suggest that you can do it regularly. And what I yeah. generally do is I always leave the very first one that comes out of the, yes, the yes. tank hatch out and then just destroy the rest with no problems. I, I think it might be a memory thing. It's possible, yeah. It is a yeah, very it's probably possible. connected to like the stage versus the boss mode. Yeah. As yes. long as there's, it's in stage mode and there's like one enemy left in the stage, the boss will not appear. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. It's the same with the, the um, infinite uh, bug where you have like the enemies flying around you in circles. We haven't talked about that. Um, yeah. It's technically the same that the next wave will not appear as long as the last wave is still on screen. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you can see the knack in here as well. She leaves at least one of them at the bottom, basically to set up the, uh, the flamethrowers, but it also delays um, Satanic Surfer until the second rail is scrolled onto the screen, which gives you time to actually collect the first rail because if you go too fast yes. then he appears when the first rail has come on screen and he's firing all his shit everywhere and it's really hard to collect stuff after that um, exactly yes for most chips you generally want to delay um satanic surfer for the second rail and that'll give you enough time to pick stuff up especially the slow ships yes and, and also more, an, an yeah. important thing to note about so ships like uh, Grasshopper, or well, just Grasshopper in general. Is, uh, <laughs> since the shot that you're using is so narrow and he fires bullets, um, it's very easy to get killed. And even the bomb is narrow, like the, the bomb that you're deploying forward is narrow. So it's very easy to get killed by destructible bullets, even when you're deploying the bomb. Yeah. So you have to make some really tight maneuvers uh, and ma manipulate the bullets that uh, the boss is shooting in order to bomb safely and collect the medals. Yeah. Because I don't know how many times I've died to that, just like running into a random bullet that I thought I would be safe from because of the bomb. Yeah. Turns out it, wasn't. it happens yeah. all the time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 One more general thing about the rails is that um, Sometimes you get seven medals to appear, and sometimes you get eight medals to yeah. appear, and this is uh, a different. And sometimes you get worst eleven case medals. Of 40K, to appear. And this is dependent on um, where you are positioned on the relation to the medals. So you have to to let eight medals appear, stay right yeah, in the middle know, of the screen to let them all appear, and otherwise if you're to the side. To... I don't yeah, think it's related to your own position as the ship. I think it's related to way this, the screen is scrolling uh, because uh, in most parts of the game you can scroll the screen to the right or the left side if you move like past uh, a certain limit um, and I think that's the deciding factor in how many medals are triggered yeah I mean, I mean I'm not sure but at least the replays <laughs> I've seen is that the medals are not spawning when they are off screen and yes. To be deciding and if it's seven or eight medals. So if you play with Miyamoto, you have no problem. You can stay in the middle, and you're still fast enough to get everything. But if you're playing yeah. like the slower ships, like Wild Snail, and you maybe have to start in one of the corners, um, exactly, you can only get seven medals each. And do you know what the weirdest thing is? Tell Sometimes me. that logic doesn't apply, and <laughs> a medal. Is spawns even if it's outside of the, or close to outside of the screen yeah that's correct I, fo <laughs> yeah, I, I found that in in general um 
the medals that are like disappearing tend to disappear from the right side of the screen. Oh. That, at least that's like what comes to mind now. Uh, because I don't know how many times, like, you know, the last couple of rails uh, or the last rail with either Wild Snail or Bornum. And I thought I've done it like, I thought I positioned myself pretty close to the leftmost corner of the screen in order to get all of the left medals first and then collect the ones to the right. But it turns out that there was another medal spawning to the left that I didn't even see that oh. fucked me over and destroyed my medal value. So it's um, it's really strange how that works, but... Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> um, maybe, yeah. maybe one last thing for the medals, uh, for the medal whales, um, which is not connected to the medals itself, but uh, at the fourth rail, you can see um, if you've destroyed at least the hatches, the tank hatches on the left, um, there are two tanks, um, oh, wait, two missiles, not two tanks, there are two um, missile carriers or turrets or whatever, to the right, and they both yep. leave two bomb fragments when you kill them. Yes. Um, ideally, if you want to think ahead for stage five, you want to collect one of the bomb fragments and at least let this other one bomb fragment there, because yes. then for um, thinking ahead for the platforms in stage four, in stage five, you can leave four of the bomb fragments for the very first platform. You can let them fall down, and then you have let um, five in yeah. total fall down, and you can yeah. uh, trigger the homing options for the platforms. And this is um, crucially essential for um, scoring well on the flying platforms and on stage five. Yeah, generally. if you're using so, a piercing shot. Yeah. Yeah. So you actually have to think about stage five at this very moment in time already. Yeah. yeah, I would say that's kind of symptomatic for the game in general. Yeah, it is. It is. You always got to think ahead for basically the entirety of the game. Yeah. Yeah, it's like in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Garega's life. Yeah. Garega's yeah. life. Yeah. Well, it's a pretty easy setup to do, and I think more people yeah, should is, learn it. it. Yeah. It's very easy, very handy. Oh, yeah. Easy homing. Yeah. Easy homing. Exactly. <clears throat> so yeah, that's pretty much it for the, the rails, I guess. Yeah, we're up to Satanic Surfer then. Uh, yeah, yes. let's go and to the Surfer. Every ship handles differently here, yeah. pretty much. But I don't think we're going to go through yeah. all of them, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I, c I can do the ones that are like yeah, the weirdest ones, yeah. I guess. Uh, we'll start with Wild Snail since we've got the video queued up. Yes, uh, that's yeah, one of the weird ones. We should first yeah. go for the general outline, like what to destroy, uh, for which next phase yes. to appear and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, so um, as you can see here, uh, there's like this um, flying part that hounds you in the beginning of the boss phase during the rails. Uh, that part connects to a big uh, main body, and if you can see, like just up, like up north of the um, the flying part, you got four tiny turrets. Yep, Locking close to the core of the ship. Yeah. Uh, when those four turrets are destroyed, two destructible bullet turrets will trigger on the flying part of the ship. Um, if you destroy those two destructible bullet turrets, then you will trigger some sort of sperm-shaped torpedoes. They look like miniature versions of the, of yeah. the boss itself. And, yeah. and, and the those boss are will lower down so that you know you've done all right when the boss lowers down. Yeah. No, it only lowers down killed all of the tiny turrets on the boss, though, I think. Yeah, it does, yeah. So yeah. right, the small right, ones, yeah, so the four yeah, side right. ones, the six really small yeah. ones, and then it drops down, yeah. yeah. Right. Right. And the, the reason you want to trigger these torpedoes, or whatever you want to call them, as soon as possible is because you get 5k from Yeah, 5k from uh, each one. <clears throat> yes, so that's like the first goal of the boss. Trigger yeah. the torpedoes as fast as possible. Yeah. The second goal is the two big... Uh, uh, artillery cannons that are up on the uh, left and right upper part of the boss um, have different parts to them. Uh, there are, including the core, there are five different parts to each turret. And uh, each destructible part is worth 10k each. Uh, and the central turret part is worth 30k. 
but only if destroyed with a non-piercing shot. So with with ships like uh, Gain or Wild Snail or Grasshopper, you want to destroy them with yeah, Gain's main shot or with um, Wild Snail and Grasshopper's options. Uh, so those are two things to take into account. Uh, and about basic... those, yeah, about those two turrets, if you destroy one of the innermost elements first, you destroy everything that is uh, yes, to the outside. Exactly. Yeah. So you yeah, have to it... um, make your way from the outermost element um, and then to the three inner elements and then to the um, base of the turret. Yes. Yeah. And I would say that with every ship aside from gain, the most the easiest way to do that is just position yourself to the furthest side of a screen so that your options or the outer parts yes. of your shot hit the turrets. Yes. Um, also, um, or well, basically, uh, going into specifics now, if we look at Wild Snail here, where, what Wild Snail wants to do is use a bomb on the four uh, central turrets as quickly as possible to destroy them and trigger the destructible bullet cannons. Uh, they should then be destroyed with a piercing shot as quickly as possible, uh, just by going from one side underneath uh, the destructible bullet turrets from the other. Um, and once they're destroyed, quickly go to one of the sides and pick apart that entire section and continue to destroy torpedoes. When that's done, just go to the other side, repeat. Um, and this is true for every, every ship as well. Yeah. Um, continue to milk the, tor uh, the torpedoes for as long as the boss is active and um, make sure to damage it enough so you'll be able to kill it just before it times out. Right. Uh, it, it is something that has to do a lot with just feeling, uh, like a lot of things in Garega, unless you're using the where you can actually see how much HP the boss has. Yeah. Um, but you'll get a feel for it eventually about basically how much HP he has left and how you should yeah. manipulate everything in order to be able to destroy him at the correct time. Yeah. Um, the, worst thing, the worst thing is when um, you're about to destroy it, then the core suddenly sees it down yes, and, and you, you, you cannot hurt it. it anymore. And yeah, I think exactly. it's, it's uh, random, right? Is it dependent on something? Yeah, it, it is like, it's kind of random. I think uh, it's, yeah, that, it, it depends that's on the... As well. And it's it kind depends of on all the patterns he uses, I think, because uh, to my mind, uh, Satanic Surfer has two different patterns. Uh, same with Nose Laughing, he has two different patterns of movement and firing ratios. And I think it's the same with Satanic Surfer, so it's like a 50-50% chance. Either you get that he keeps the turret alive during timeout, or you get that he uh, retracts the turret and becomes invincible during his timeout. Yeah. I haven't really been able to distinguish between them when I'm playing, though, but I think that's yeah, how it works happens. in general. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's the way Wild Snail does it. Um, and most of the other ships will bomb in the beginning as well. Just point blank the central turrets and bomb them to get them destroyed as quickly as possible. Yeah. yeah. Once you have uh, used this first bomb, um, you don't have to care too much about um, hurting the main body with your shot anymore. Exactly. Because the bomb is so effectively, uh, for example, with Gain or with Bornem, um, yes. that you just have to shoot it like here and there, but um, yeah. not, not really like uh, attacking the main body, but just concentrate no. on the turrets, concentrate on the stony things, and then you're alright. Yeah. You still have to make sure that it's done though, because if you don't, then you will get completely fucked up. Um... Right. Yeah, uh, I would say after that we have. Oh shit, these rails are not good. Uh, <laughs> oh, greater than I thought, though. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, um, yeah, so Grasshopper. Uh, really weird because his bomb will just kill the boss outright if you use it. So, yeah. what you need to do is use your piercing shot to pick off the turrets uh, one by one, pretty much. And it's easily the hardest Satanic Surfer of the lot, I think. Gain comes close, but this is the hardest one to trigger the torpedoes with. Yeah. Uh, you have to do a lot of tight maneuvering and um, some bombing as well, in, in, if things get crazy enough. But um, yeah, it's, um, it's a lot more finicky, as with the rest of Grasshopper. Um, 
It seems like you but handled it, that quite well, though, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was alright. Yeah. And I think I handled the turrets pretty well here, too. I don't remember, though. Uh, I remember being nervous as fuck because the run was, like, okay, and um, I was on my last life, and I had quite a, a bit to go until the next next down, so... Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, anyways, um, those are the two, like, uh, weird Gregor ships. Uh, and then we have Gain. Yep, let me just queue that up. Yes. Yeah, Gain. <laughs> I actually really like the technique with game, but I'd do a different way to the way Kamui demonstrates here, though. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, well, um, as I mentioned to you yesterday, I think it oh, was. Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, she does this and actually sits on the side, like, all the way through it. But I always find I get picked off by the small turrets on the left side. So what I do mm. is, when I do the bomb first, I actually sit on top of the, um, the four turrets. And uh, mm. use trace. So when she does this bomb here, I actually sit up here and keep myself protected oh, okay. by the bomb, but still fire like yeah. off to the left. And then once the bomb is about to burn off, then I move to the left side and down the side there. It's a little oh, bit right. slower. It is a little bit slower, mm. but it is also a lot safer, at least for the way I do it. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think I do it in a in a pretty similar way. Like I yeah special option formation. I use use the the regular. Uh, default one. Yeah, uh, I bomb immediately, of course. Uh, pick off the central turrets, and then I stay in the middle. Just go up and down until I killed off the destructible uh, bullet turrets. Yeah. Uh, after that, I go re. I basically what do you what do you call it? I revert to the standard option formation. Yeah. And I shoot the entirety of the left side screen for about um, three or four sword cycles. And then I go, put my formations into back to pick off all of the in individual parts on the turret. Yeah. And then I continue with like uh, the main thing here again to damage the uh, uh, the turret a bit more, and then pick it off with uh, non-piercing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's very finicky though because um, <laughs> you don't want to damage the uh, turret parts too much with uh, the piercing options, and it's like. Uh, I don't know, it's a, it's a lot of management to do. It is, yeah. I mean, that's the thing with the game in general, is that there is a lot of management to do for most of the more advanced scoring tricks. Especially yes. from this point onwards, where things get exceptionally complicated. Exactly, yes. <sighs> that's game, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, any other ship is easy to, to do the entire trick with. Um, I'd say the only thing to really talk about here is Chitla because yeah. uh, she has like this semi homing option, and uh, if you use them in any sort of fashion, uh, aim towards the back, yeah. uh, they will target the core and kill the boss too early. So you gotta use her weak main shot to uh, destroy all of the parts and the torpedoes as well. Yeah, the method to do the torpedoes with Chitta just deludes me completely, like, so... <laughs> <laughs> can never yeah, get it actually, right, because that is bomb is just so dumb and you need to stock a shitload of them to actually do it properly, it's really weird. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's that hard, though. It's like, uh, if you go into the fight with a... Um, it, with some decent rails, like you bombed a couple of times, yeah. um, then you should have at least more than one full bomb yeah. heading into the fight. And if you have that, you can just bomb twice in the beginning of the fight, and you'll be just fine. Yeah. So it's uh, it's strange. I, I think like getting full rails, uh, totally full rails with Shida is impossible, though. Yeah. We don't even see Ket doing it here. No, okay, I don't think Ket yeah. does it like so. Unless he's managed to find some techniques after this. But uh, yeah, his rails were yeah. slightly less. That's such a yeah. weird way of doing it though. By the way, is Ket still <laughs> playing? Is he still around? He's still around, but I don't know if he's still playing. I think he did do a little bit of um, playing back when the PS4 version was announced, but I haven't heard from oh, him okay. since. Yeah. Uh, oh, I did see on his Twitter that he was getting quite excited for the PS4 release, so I was like, oh, is he playing again? But I haven't seen anything oh, from nice. him yet. No, the only thing I heard when I was in Japan was that he's basically not going to game centers or anything like that. Yeah, okay. Oh, too bad, okay. Yeah. Yeah, 
just uh, staying one inside. Thing when, when watching this um, Chitta replay, is we, we haven't talked about that tail yet. Oh, I mean, yeah. The, the, one the one tail... thing about the tail is it uh, consists of four elements, basically, and you get, I think, 5k each. I think um, it's, so it's uh, three parts. Or three parts, five each, okay. Um, yeah. So it's not Are that you sure important, they're 5k? I, I think they might be 10, but let's hear. When he... Yeah, yeah. Is it 5k? I, I don't think it's that important, but still, the um, the very first, the tip of the tail, um, yes. with many with many ships, when you just stay at the bottom and shoot, uh, shoot to the front, you will not uh, destroy the part, but destroy the second, which will automatically destroy first as well you will not get exactly. any point so that's why um you want to if you have one of those ships that um, spawn the shots of your own ship like um you have to use your options from the pipe or as you yes. can see the uh, oh, yes, tries parts. to use the option to shoot down and uh, just shoot the tip first and then yes. make his way up to the tail yeah exactly so basically oh, down. it's 5k it's 5k yeah 5k, yeah. 5k per part, so it's 20k in total if you do it correctly. Mm. So yeah, for advanced scoring you have to care about that one. Yeah. Okay, yeah, well, that's a Nick Surfer, basically. I, it's a pretty simple boss once you go. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it is. And now we're getting to the real nitty-gritty. Yeah, <laughs> stage, five. stage 5. The fun stage stuff. Five, yeah. yeah. I think yes. we're gonna do the Chitter replay, won't we, first, so... Okay, sure. Yeah, that, that's a weird one. This one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it's listed, um, so... <laughs> yeah. Well, um, well we I would say, like, as a, as a preface, yeah. um, basically, if you're scoring in this game, then all of the rank control you've been doing so far is just because of this stage. Yeah. Absolutely. There's no other reason to control rank aside from this. Yeah, it is. And... There are two reasons for that. First of all is uh, the flying platforms that compose the majority of the stage. Um, their health, like how many bomb fragments they require to get destroyed, is dependent on rank. So with lower rank, you, dec you require fewer bomb fragments and you're able to bomb a lot more of the, uh, the propellers and the engines to get more points. Uh, than you yeah. would otherwise have been able to do. Yeah. It also depends, of course, on the ship you use. Yeah, 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 the amount necessary. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also because of Madball too, because you want rank to be low enough to um, basically dodge it safely and not use too many bombs. Yeah. Right. Um, so yeah, it, it's very like ship dependent how many fragments you need. But in general, uh, one thing you need to know about uh, the flying platforms with the engines and propellers here is that um, yeah, every part is composed of like two different things that each have value. Uh, the engine in itself is worth 5k, I think, and the propeller is worth 5k as well. So, in order to get the 10k from each complete engine, you have to destroy the propeller first and the engine later, because if you destroy the engine first, then you'll lose out on the other 5k from uh, uh, from the propeller. And the way you do this is you make sure that you're the, when you deploy your bomb, it always hits the propeller first and the engine second. So, with the area of effect bombs, the center of the explosion is around the propeller and not the engine. And with uh, other ships uh, that have uh, bombs that deploy from the center, like with Wild Snail or um, Silver Sword or anything like that, you just make sure that the bomb hits the propeller before it hits the engine. Um, so just to um, clarify, I mean, the, the, the platforms basically consist of um, four propellers and one core in the middle, right? Yeah, uh, four propellers and engines, and one core that has two forms. Yeah, yeah right. But the the engine and the uh, the the propeller and the engine is one part. No. No, they're two different parts, and each part is worth five k. Okay. Yes, I'm one hundred percent sure. Oh, or maybe okay. it's like, yeah, yeah, it's something like that. Because um, you know, Icarus did some safe state practice, and I've noticed it as well too with Bornum, where 
Um, if you want to control rank a bit more, you can just like collect four bomb fragments and bomb all of the four engines at the same time. Um, however, that led to a decrease of about 100k. Yeah, the score varies oh, between nice. 80 to yeah, 100,000, so it's, it is quite substantial, those propellers. However, yes. yeah, as, as we mentioned before, it's also very rank dependent, so sometimes you must forego the, that 100,000 yeah. points in order to get through the rest of it safely. But yeah, exactly. the point gain is pretty yeah. substantial. Uh, the reason I expected something like that happening is uh, uh, when I played, like when I watched replays, I saw all of the super players bombing the platforms uh, twice. And I was like, why the fuck are they doing that? They could just like collect enough bomb fragments and bomb all of the parts at the same time. Yeah. Uh, oh. But then I tried doing that myself and I realized that I got more points. It was like, hmm, maybe there's something to this. <laughs> <laughs> And I mean, obviously, you didn't know about it, Plasmo, so, you know... No, I didn't know, I didn't know. <laughs> you always learn something new about this game here. Yep. See, I'm just gonna answer a question here. It's not yeah, yeah. No, so it's just the way that we're doing this Q&A. The more you know. Yes, exactly. Uh, um It is. Um, I can ask them, and they will probably change. Like, if it's for a one-time thing, uh, I can put in any game, pretty much. Uh, but if it's for the duration, then it will be up for discussion, and you know I could probably work something out. All right. So I'm um, going back to those platforms, the engines and the propellers. You can yes. basically only destroy with your bomb because you cannot hurt them otherwise. Um, exactly. Um, but for the main cockpit, uh, which has two bombs, basically, the first one shooting like a very small three-way. Uh, yeah. The first you want to destroy with your shot, but not with yeah, piercing, not piercing not shots. with bomb. Yeah. Right. And then the um, the core uncovers, and this one fires like a broad spread. And yes. this one you want to destroy um, not with bomb, not with piercing, but only with your regular shot. Yeah. And yeah. You other, I think, what is it, 20k? Yeah, that's 20k. It's 10k for the first form and 20k for the second, so it's 30k in total. Yeah, plus the propellers, plus the um, engines, so yes. one platform without the metals and the stationary enemies is almost 100k. Then. Yeah, what you can see here in this Wild Snail movie is that she's actually not doing this in the optimized way. Uh, she's getting the lower platforms in the best way possible. But with Wild Snail, if you want to get the uh, upper parts of the propeller engines, you got to go up yeah. on top of the screen over the center core and like bomb it from the upside and down, pretty much. So you hit the propellers first. Can That's you something do it I with Wild Snail? Do you have to like make your options? make the flamethrowers aim down or how does it work when you attack no no power? no you, you can do it because um actually this is uh, I, I think a lot of people notice this but they might not know about it uh, with wild snail like uh, when you have deployed your bomb and it's finished um you basically the ship lets go of the flamethrowers and throws them downwards oh yeah and those Fla those flamethrowers in themselves, when they're thrown downwards, they count as their own bomb. I see, I see. Yeah, so you can destroy bombable objects with those as well. Yeah, it's, so a pretty, just... it's a pretty cute thing that not many people will notice, like, to be honest, unless they've seen a replay actually doing it. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's pretty clever, though. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is. So there's a lot of stuff like that. And, um... I don't know, it, the thing is, like, with Wild Snail, uh, if you get close enough to the core, uh, you will pretty much seal the bullets from the center core. So it's not that risky to do, really, but yeah. you really have to get into the right rhythm to do it correctly. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it about the stage in itself. Yeah. Um, in general, all of the ships, aside from game, will want to pick up homing options to make things easier. Yep. And especially for the dismantling of this part in the beginning here. Um, 
Yeah, exactly. So, so the homing or triggering at the end of stage four, we've uh, just talked about, you yes. will use throughout the whole stage five, so no suicide whatsoever. And then yep. you will use it for, especially and only for the um, tip of the tail and for non-piercing option uh, ships. And yeah, then and usually afterwards as well. you will change back to normal because you need for the rest of uh, this mentor. Exactly. I usually use it for a tip of the tail, and uh, I, I, I always start with dismantling the left side of the ship. And most of the time, my options will home in on one of the uh, small turrets on the wings, on the other wing. So yeah. uh, I get to destroy three of the turrets at the same time, which makes things much easier to manage. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and after that, I just switch over to, you know, manipulable options, whatever. Right. Um, and, um, hmm. um, on a wild snail note, while we we're like watching the replay here, um, in general, you want to make sure that you have, at, you have either three extents or close to three extents when going into the mad ball boss fight, because you want to suicide thrice on mad, mad ball. Yeah. Um, so basically a couple of things you want to do because uh, you'll be going through five cycles of mad ball before you're allowed to suicide and get down rank um you want to keep down rank as much as you possibly can and if you're bombing a lot that's hard one of the ways to do that is to not collect as many options as you can so uh like kamui does here uh, she doesn't collect a fourth option and that's probably only for that reason because she wants to keep down rank uh, low enough to not uh, trigger the uh, more annoying mad ball patterns. Yeah. And also, with every ship, this is incredibly important because uh, basically in terms of routing, uh, the amount of resources you have, both in terms of uh, bomb stock and uh, lives left, is incredibly important for mad ball too. Um, because a lot of ships need to suicide at mad ball. And they also need to have a lot of bombs. So you can solve that, that problem in a couple of ways. Uh, you can either go for keeping a lot of lives in stock up until no slapping and suiciding them away before you kill the boss to get more bomb fragments, which is what Gain and Morn and Shifta should do. Um, or you can collect bomb fragments during the stage and not bomb the platforms. Um, Miyamoto usually does like a combination of the two. Grasshopper. Um, but the most important thing uh, to do in order to make sure that you're su successful in this is that you're able to uh, damage no slapping enough and manipulate him enough that you can kill him whenever you want. Right. Because the thing about him is if you've destroyed all of the parts and you're destroying his central turret, then you're going to trigger a pattern that's basically undodgeable. Yeah, and that's especially important for um, beginners um, as well, of course, as for advanced um, players. But if you don't want to trigger that very last thread, which is essentially important uh, to, yes. uh, impossible to that, you have to let one of the parts of the um, missile launcher alive and just hurt the main body, just as in this uh, replay by Kamui. Yeah. Yeah, or you could just time out the boss and disappear from one well, of the sides. Yeah, of yeah you can always do that. Uh -huh. But then you're going to yeah. lose out. 10, yeah, you're going to lose out at least 100k. And, you know, I, but I would say, like, in general, the easiest way to do all of this is uh, destroy one, like, dismantle one side of the wings completely. Right. And when you're done with that, uh, destroy one of the center turrets. Uh, and continue to damage the boss as po as much as you can before you trigger the uh, the big central turret. Yeah. Hmm. Because if you do that, you'll be able to control supposed to destroy him basically. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I think that's pretty much it when it comes to slapping too. It's not really a. a advanced or complicated boss in terms of anything other than routing. Yeah, it isn't. <clears throat> yeah, for scoring it might not be that important, but especially if you're going only for survival or if it's like... 
this is where it gets really difficult. Yeah. From this boss rush onwards, it's just constant terror from here on. <laughs> yes. yes, it's a good way of putting it. Yeah, it is. Mad Ball 2 especially can give you some... Uh, and if you're trying to score as well, because I think the the most annoying thing about him, really, uh, you know, most patterns can be dodged, like uh, the ones that are by regular bullets. Even if there are a lot of bullets on screen, you can still dodge them, yeah. no problem at all. Yeah. But if, if he's got his main turret firing destructible bullets at you, because they home in on you, you basically have to counter them by shooting your own shot. And if you do that before you're supposed to, like before bombing or suiciding or whatever, you're going to be damaging parts of the boss or the main body without not really even having a choice. So it's like yeah, sometimes you just get fucked no matter what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of Mad Bull 2 in a nutshell. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. That's why we hit him yeah. so much. <laughs> exactly. So what you can see here with the Kaida replay of Grasshopper, this is perfect routing. He had collected a lot of bomb fragments before. He suicided right at the end of No Slapping, killed him immediately afterwards, and then he suicided at the beginning of Mad Bull 2 in order to bomb it in as an efficient way as possible. And the reason he has a lot of bomb fragments left is not because he wants to bomb the boss again, but that he wants to make sure that even if he doesn't trigger the extend on this boss so he can suicide, he can still bomb the beginning part of Slayer, which comes directly after Mad Bull 2. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff like that that goes into the routing of the game. Yeah, a lot of like accounting for every sort of possibility. Yeah. Yeah. So should we perhaps go into Slayer? Yeah, we're going into Slayer. Um, just gonna let yeah, we, of... we probably um, cleared all the main things about Madball Mark Two already. So... Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's go into Slayer, which is totally different from the Slayers we've encountered in stage three. Exactly. Yeah. Because this one you can bomb. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And you got to. Yeah, yeah. You, you gotta go all like, you know, e on it. Just bomb everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, the same logic applies uh, as with the flying platforms. Slayer also has a lot of propellers, and the propellers in themselves are, are worth a lot of points, like you can see here at the beginning. So, with every ship, when you bomb, you should always bomb hits the propeller first before it hits the engines. Yeah. Otherwise, you lose out on a lot of points because I think the propellers are actually worth more on Slayer than they are on the platforms. I think so, yeah. I haven't checked the actual point yeah. value on them, though. But I think they are worth oh, a lot more. Holy shit. Yeah. Like, Never checked. Yeah, I think they're at least 10k. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, basically, the boss is very straightforward every ship up until it comes to like the final part because every ship wants to basically bomb every part of the ship and destroy all of the uh, different uh, option releasing turrets yep. uh, for points uh, yeah, one you thing can, worth... you can milk them a bit at least yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah you can shot milk him a bit too when he's invincible yeah. on, uh, or well close to invincible on the top of the screen yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, one thing worth noting as well is that um, there are two sets of uh, like uh, turret hatches, the ones that release options, on either wing, um, that have to be destroyed as soon as encountered. Because otherwise they will disappear off the screen. Uh, with most ships, uh, aside from game, uh, all Gain needs to do is damage them enough, because for some reason, uh, if he... Um, when the screen scrolls around, if he points his options backwards and fires at um, at the hatches, or well, the imaginary hatches, because they're off-screen, he can still destroy them and get the points for it. Yeah. Uh, this is demonstrated in the uh, Kamui, the latest Kamui video, and even explained by her. Right. Yeah, she mentions that... Um... She's, the gain is the only ship that can actually do that because they are still technically yes. on the body, but most of the ships can't actually right. hit them. Exactly. Um, yeah, and for all the other ships, trip. yeah, yeah, and for all the other ships, you have to keep in mind that, um, especially for the very first hatch on the left, when Slayer yes. comes onto the screen, you yeah. um, 
cannot stay closed to the hatch because it will stay closed. And in order to make it open and to make the turrets spawn, you have to um, be like on distance, and then yeah. only you can uh, damage it, and then it opens. And not only um, that, so I think I think you have to start that. firing at the the other uh, bomb fragment releasing turrets as well. Yes. Uh, I don't know if you need to destroy them or not. I think you just need to fire at them in order to trigger the hatches to open. Yeah. 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 Um, so there's that. And that's basically it for the ship itself. Then we have the core here, um, which has two forms. The first one fires a circular uh, needle bullet pattern. And the, the second form that you can see here in the video is a, uh, a spread with yellow bullets where uh, when you destroy this core, you get 100k for destroying the core, and it releases shrapnel all around. That is worth yes. uh, around 160k if destroyed with bomb. And uh, every ship has a different way of handling them. Yep. All require different timing and different bomb fragments. Yep. And um, I would say... The easiest ones are, of course, Silver Sword and Borne, because they can just destroy the boss bomb and everything's going to be fine and dandy. Yeah. Um, Baron is pretty easy as well, because his homing uh, missiles can lock in on the shrapnel. And the, um, Grasshopper is really hard, as you can see demonstrated here, because you got a suicide to get enough bomb fragments to pull it off. And you also have to um, position yourself so that you destroy the um, upper fragments with the upper part of your bomb, uh, while the spent shell casings are destroying the lower parts at the same time. Really finicky as well. And um, then we have like, uh, let's see here. Miyamoto is also simple. He just needs to bomb everything pretty much. Yes. Um, Shitta and Gain are handled pretty similarly. In that they, in order to get all of the fragments, uh, they have to do something that Kamui calls a look-ahead bomb. Which basically is that you uh, damage the core enough so that when you've suicided on the core, um, it's basically close to zero health. So when you wait for it to scroll down again, you deploy a bomb and then kill off the core with a shot, which means that when the shrapnel is released, it's going to be released straight into your active bomb. Yeah. Uh, something you're going to see demonstrated in the video here. And um, it works the same for both. The Shitta and Gain, it's just that uh, Shitta's timing is a lot harder because she has to wait longer for deploying the bomb, and of course, the bomb is active for a shorter amount of time and everything else. So, yeah, it's a bit more complicated. And um, Wild Snail can actually do this in a pretty, pretty weird way, too, uh, because of the way his, uh, his bomb works. Uh, as I've said before, uh, the flames home in on anything that's active, like an active hitbox on the screen. Mm -hmm. And if you've destroyed everything co correctly, the only active hitbox on the screen is going to be the center core of Slayer. And if you got enough bomb fragments, what you can do is you deploy a bomb, you kill the core with your shot, and the flames are going to be homed in on the center core, which means that when the, the uh, shrapnel fragments are released they're all going to be in the same center spot and all going to be hit by the flames from the bomb at the same time which means that they will all be destroyed in the same spot so that's a very easy way of getting consistent at something that's otherwise kind of hard because otherwise it's pretty random if the flames get all of the trap on yeah yeah it is right yeah. right maybe one uh thing for um beginners about the last phase of Slayer. Um, the core, when it is off screen, is invincible, and you can still, of course, uh, damage it with tick points, but the health won't go down. Yeah. So you, yes. can, um, you can only basically damage it once it starts shooting. 
and then exactly. you can get it to the main core. And when yeah. it's off screen, you can just shoot and get some big pong, but it won't hurt the main core. Yeah. And yeah. what is not demonstrated in this replay, um, talking about things you have to plan ahead, is that you can hear um, just very um, um, handily leave four, uh, leave five of the bomb fragments um, intact and make them go off screen, make them drop down, and then the next option you pick up um, either when you die on the boss fight of Blackheart or at the beginning of stage six, you can get the homing option very easily. Just very yes. similar to the technique you can use stage four at the end to trigger exactly. the homing options for stage five. Yeah. So Kamui yeah. doesn't need it here, usually... um, but it's quite easy to trigger. Yeah, so I usually control. do that with uh, with most ships actually because I find homing helps yeah, me, me a lot. Me too, me too. Um, Just leave five of them here alive. Yeah. yeah, what I usually do is I leave a five on one side and two on the other. So that when I bomb the core, I pick up two fragments for basically safety. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's them. basically what I do. Yeah, because yeah. some some fragments are also quite handy. Yeah. Exactly, if you need to pick up a, an emergency medal or something right, uh, right. in the latter stages, so right. it's nice. Um, yeah, that's um, pretty much it, I guess, when it comes to Slayer. Yeah. Yeah, and then we get a brief interlude, like a few mini black hearts, which yes. can yes. actually tell you just how bad you rank at this point of the game. Yeah, exactly. Come quite a handy if you're like a beginner. If you have basically four mini black hearts, the rank is very, very low. Five yes. is more or less the normal, and six or above is high rank. So you can just check and um, see how many enemies you trigger. Exactly. And I would say this is, um, while it is an important or well interesting uh, survival thing to learn about, um, the most important part of it like in terms of scoring is that um if you want to do something like we're going to explain this trick later uh, at the uh, the big laser turrets on stage six if you want to do what's known as the double bombing of them in order to get uh, twice of their original value uh, you're going to need very low rank in order to do that so basically four black heart helpers is an indication that your rank is low enough in order to uh, pull off that trick pretty much in, in the stage are you talking about wild snail now or in general any ship any any gregor ship oh okay yeah it's true for all of them but i would say wild snail is the hardest one getting four i mean you you pretty much have to do something wrong in order to get more than four Blackheart helpers with any other ship of the Gregor ships. I just didn't know that you can destroy the first hitbox of those big turrets with other ships than a wild snail actually. No, you can do it with every ship. I didn't know that. Oh, cool. That's you just need to be able to deal enough damage. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, I think we're going to see that in Yamanaka's. And also in Kaede's um, Grasshopper Reaper. At least he tries to do it. I think he fucks up a lot of times. But anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's really fucking hard. It's really hard with Grasshopper. Yeah. Um, well, anyways, uh, Black Court, we really don't have to say anything at all, really. It's no. a yeah, simple not loss. too much to talk about about this very iconic um, and certainly like important boss from the design standpoint of view, but yes. um, when it comes to scoring, um, you can basically shoot the um, sites for some big yes. points and there's some destructible um, but rather invincible bits. Um, yes. But yeah. One, one thing really that's kind of no. One thing that's kind of interesting here is that um, you can, as you can see, you can get special points for destroying certain parts of the wing. Right. Um, and those parts are the wings themselves, and then the the jet engines or the jet blaster thingies um, that are like expelling flames and whatever. Uh, you can also get like these destruction points from them. But the thing is, you can only get the destruction points from the jet engines after the rest of the engine has been completely destroyed. Oh, I see. Yeah, this is something I noticed after a while. It's really weird. But, uh, yeah. Um, that's basically Black Horde. All you have to do is just shoot the wing, good enough RNG that you get some uh, 
popcorn enemies on the first couple of forms. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and of course all his attacks are random and the popcorn enemies are also random. Yes. So while it is the ideal scoring route would be to trigger as many of them as possible of the popcorn enemies, it's random, so you cannot really plan it. Yeah. But yeah, not not really anything more to no. No, I don't think so. I mean, I think most people should already know how the Vulcan works. Do we need to at least yeah. briefly touch on that? That's what I thought about right now, actually. Yeah. So, um, I think when it comes to the Vulcan, most people should know that the screen is divided in half. You can see this dark strip of cloud here. Um, whatever side you are on when the Vulcan traps you, the Vulcan will sweep over to the other side and then back again. Yes. Um, so, say for example, if you're on the right side here where the mouse cursor is um, swirling around, um, it will pass over to the left side and then it'll try and force you back left and right. So, you have to always be mindful of where you are on screen when you get trapped by the Vulcan. Yeah. I see a lot of people sit right in the middle and that is... Oh, that's the worst thing you can do. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, because... And the thing is, the thing is uh, what you have to take into mind is two things, basically. First of all, uh, the way the Vulcan is going to head is determined purely by your own position, nothing yeah. else. Yeah, exactly. And uh, also, if, like, after the first Vulcan sweep or whatever, uh, or change of direction, if you still haven't been able to cross the middle line on the first sweep, yeah. then it's still going to head in the same direction. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So it doesn't go back and forth. It just heads towards yeah. the middle at all yeah. times. Yeah. That's the yeah. way it works. So on the third yeah. form, you do need to actually be very mindful of your position at all times. Because when the Vulcan yes. attacks, um, if you're in the wrong place, you're dead, basically. Yes. <laughs> and also of note, uh, most people should notice this, but uh, during his last phase, um, he basically sweeps around the screen when he's doing the jet blaster thingy. Yeah. Uh, and the way that he will be going is based on your position as well. Yeah. So if, and he goes from like a center line uh, from his own sprite. So if you're down in the center and you head off like a slight bit to the left, he will go to the left and vice versa. Yeah. Yes. So, okay. Stage six. Yep. This is where the fun part starts. Oh, yes. All right, stage yeah. six, yeah. So we are half through the game now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Finally, yeah, five hours later. <laughs> yeah, holy shit, man. I told uh, you. <laughs> you yeah, did, yeah. you did. You definitely did. Yeah. But uh, I think the first thing we would mention is the gun blimps. Medals. Yeah, yeah medals and gun blimps and no, everything else. No, not the gun blimps. The big ships first. Yeah, these guys. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Stage six, uh, um, and especially this um, opening bit, um, is probably the most difficult um, part of the whole game to keep your metal chain. Yeah. Yes, there are some tricks you can do to make it easier, and um, we will talk about them, but uh, still, it will um, be the, the most difficult one. Yeah. yeah. So many, I'm... many players will lose the chain. Exactly, unless you're very comfortable with the game. Uh, I would say. Uh, most important things are, first of all, uh, having bomb fragments before so you can save yourself from an emergency situation. Yeah. It really helps a lot. Um, yes. And also, with the, the beginning ships, that you can see, like the big ones, try to destroy their turrets before you destroy the wings, if you yeah. can. And if you have a piercing sh ship, uh, try to not destroy the the wings to the le to the right and leftmost sides, but rather try to shoot towards the middle. Because that way you can both uh, either destroy uh, the uh, turrets in the middle uh, with your piercing shots, or the wings. What that would do is, uh, since the wings in themselves are so high up, you would spawn a metal that takes a very long time to fall down, which means that if you spawn another metal in the meantime that falls down quicker, you can save your value by that yes. metal that's still higher up. Yeah. Right. So that's important. Um, aside from that, it's just basically uh, get comfortable with the situation yeah. because it's uh, it's yeah. hard. Yeah. It's hard as yeah. fuck. 
think a lot but, of players yeah. will lose their medals very regularly in this yeah. stage until they've actually devised some safe ways to deal with it. Yeah, and yeah. to me, still, it's like, um, I have a basic plan, but that plan changes constantly, so... Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, I, I keep my... So yeah, I, I keep my medal value on this thing like 90% of the time now. It's extremely rare that I lose it, but... Um, Still, you know, it can happen sometimes, and sometimes, yeah. like, if I had to bomb earlier, I'm gonna get fucked. Yeah. Right, right. One thing I've noticed the, that helps me quite a lot for the first uh, three mid-sized enemies is to trigger the homing options at this point already. Yeah. And okay. you can stay you can stay to the side of the screen and lure all the... Um, line of bullets to uh, yes. either the sides and still hit all the um, wings of the enemies so that they will drop medals in the middle but all the, mm -hmm. middle, uh, the bullets are going to the sides so you can easily yeah. collect them but uh, not stay in the middle just stay to the sides and it, it makes it considerably more easy yeah, yeah that, that's, a, that's a smart plan but um, for me you know i always like to stage uh, and I will. I always suicide at the gun dip, so I never trigger them before that point. Um, yeah, I, I basically trigger them twice. I trigger them um, from stage uh, five. I uh, drop the five um, fragments, then trigger at the beginning, then yes. suicide on the gun to get the medals, and then at the wall trigger yes. again for the rest of the stage because I don't oh, yeah. really need the homing options for between the gun blimps and the wall. You don't need the homies there. Yeah. That's so true. It's, it's just that, you know, the way my suicide route works, I never suicide after the gun blimps until the end of the stage, pretty much. If I yeah. even do that. Um, well, I mean, no. Uh, yeah, but, but, but anyways, uh, after that we have the gun blimps, of course. Yeah, and the gun blimps, the gun blimps, uh -huh. They handle similarly for every ship except for piercing i guess yeah. because piercing piercing yeah. ships can can do it in a different way but the suicide is always the same right so basically what you want to do if you're playing on the one player side of the of the screen which means that when you when you suicide or when you die you're going to be spawning on the left side of the screen uh what you want to be doing is uh kill off the or basically spawn the medals on the rightmost side of the of the uh, rightmost gun blimp, and you can do that either by going up to the side of the screen if your ship is non-piercing and point your options towards the turrets on the gun blimp, like uh, Kaida is doing in the Bornham replay here. Uh, shoot off all the turrets, trigger the medals, collect them, then go to the other side of the screen, uh, suicide, collect all of the medals that are falling down and continue with the stage. Piercing ships can instead destroy the uh, metal releasing turrets with its main or option shots, depending on if you're using Wild Snail, Grasshopper or Gain. Yeah, or if you don't feel comfortable with it, you can just shoot the main body with piercing and to yes. um, still keep your metal chain, but destroy the rightmost enemy and then switch to the left one and get some more medals there. Maybe. Exactly, exactly. I would um, think the positioning of the suicide is important as well, though, right? It is, it is. That's what it I was going to talk about now, because mm. Kaido fucks it up here. He does it the wrong way. And you, you're going to see that, because the medals are falling in an inconsistent manner, which means that he's unable to collect all of them. Yeah. Uh, the correct way to position your suicide is to suicide so that you're aligned slightly below the lowest metal releasing tower to the uh, leftmost side of the screen yes if you get hit there they the, all of the medals will be released in an orderly fashion very german style and you can collect them all in order <laughs> and you will be fine <laughs> yeah, and, and one one more thing is important um, and it is about the um time when you see that because i think in this replay he sees that's a little bit too late yeah. because he's busy still collecting yes. the medals yeah. on the right side so ideally you want to kill yourself just a as little bit earlier. Yeah. yeah yeah basically what you want to be doing is uh, collect all the medals from the rightmost side and then as quickly as you possibly as you possibly can just go to the leftmost side and get hit by bullets yeah 
Uh, one important thing to note is you should never suicide by running into the goblin because that will release fewer medals and in different timing. You gotta hug the screen to the left. But if you do it correctly, then you will be uh, rewarded with a lot of medals. Like you get um, just from the medals alone, you get around 220k or something. Yeah, it's uh, pretty yeah, big. Worth yeah, worth yeah. of easy fucking points. And decreased rank and everything else. Yeah. So uh, it's not really a hard trick once you've gotten used to it. Just, I don't know, practice it, use it, and enjoy it. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> Yeah, it, it is actually much easier than trying to survive that part without any suicide and trying to collect yeah. some yeah. medals and somehow kind of keep your chain. So if you have a life to spare, um, just uh, use it there because you can keep your medal chain and this means keeping your rank low and keeping your score high and this yeah. means keeping your extents high. Yeah. And exactly. It's just very important if you are routing in any... Um, yeah. In any uh, sense, just try to use it out there. It's, it's not as difficult and as scary as it may look like. Yeah, exactly. I gotta say though, just uh, for like curiosity's sake, because I remember uh, the gain run I played, which became the current Western record, I didn't have any spare lives. Uh, yeah. So I had to, and I gotta say, like, at least to me, with gain, He's the most, he's the scariest ship to have at this part. Oh yeah. <laughs> if you don't have any extra lives to spare, because it's like medals are going to be releasing everywhere from just shooting regularly and whatever, but I still managed to make it through somehow. And that was like, oh shit, you know? Yeah, I, I, I mean, what... I just fighter where I had to do something with the run. <laughs> what I do with game is, um, I start on the right gun blim and yes. I position my options to the back because they're piercing and they're bad for those gun blims and the appearing medals. So I just oh, okay. try so to just harm kill the, the main blim. body uh, with my regular shot and uh, try to destroy it as soon as it comes under the screen. So I, I only hmm. have to deal with the other two um, gun blims and then I use the suicide to collect the um, four times four medals. Okay. Uh, the way I usually do it when I can is um, I position my options to forward, uh, I destroy the rightmost uh, metal releasing turrets. Uh, yeah, yeah, th this is also... Um, yeah, I yeah. do it the same way here. The, the, the way that Kamui does it here, I do it the same way in the beginning, but then I suicide. That's but, like but my do normal you, strategy. Do you also get the, um, from the right gun blimp, do you do it like Kamui by shooting yes. the Yes, for left... the entire... Yeah, for the entire... Yeah, but also the, the, the left turrets of the right gun blimp with your yes. one shot. Oh, yeah. that's really difficult, man. Yeah, it's okay. uh, it, it's a lot more fun that way, but you know, yeah, when rank yeah. is low enough, because my rank is never high at that point. Uh, yeah. When rank is low enough, it's not that scary. Like, you have to dodge it, but it's nothing, nothing major. Right, right, right. So yeah, after that we got this section here, uh, which leads us to what's known as the wall. Oh, the wall. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. maybe very quickly about that um, two um, flying enemies, that mid-sized flying enemies that don't really give you any points. Well, not not the uh, stealth fighter ones, but those um, two afterwards that appear yes. um, early now, in the game already. Um, they do they give you to... some kick points though with the Miyamoto yeah, but, and game. Yeah. But that's not what I mean. Uh, I, I, it's just if you destroy them as quickly as possible, you are going to spawn more of popcorn enemies. Yes. And for stage six at this point, it's quite important because they give you quite a lot of medals because it's just so many of them. So yes, just exactly. try to destroy them as quickly as possible and do not care about scoring at all because they're not important anyway and all their parts are not important. But just try to destroy them as quickly as possible. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. And honestly, it's the same thing with like the stealth bombers previously to that. Because what you can do is um, they've got these like uh, hatches uh, at the top of them uh, that you can destroy for 10k each, which is kind of pretty easy to do with game, but uh, it's totally unnecessary in this stage. Just kill them quickly because you get more pop from that way, and uh, I mean that usually makes up for it. I'd say the only the only opportunity, like, or the only time when you should really care about that is, like, if you have uh, 
a, a bomb with the silver sword or something going up to that, and you want to waste it on that, you just go ahead and bomb and you get the points. But there's really no other situation where you should do it. Um, yes. And, um... Mm. Yeah, this bit. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, so, yeah, the wall is, like, uh, it's appropriately named. It's, um... Probably the part where most uh, new players will game over when they've gone past the black heart. Uh, it's not that scary when you're used to it. I would say the best strategy in general is just to destroy. Like if you if you have homing options, just basically dodge bullets and shoot, and eventually all of the bullets will disappear from the screen like magic. Um, and if you don't, if you don't have homing, just stay on one side, destroy all of the turrets, and then when it's safe to do so, just head over to the other side. It's like, the only thing you really have to take into account is the uh, your positioning when it relates to the uh, missile firing turrets. Yeah. Yeah. Because those are the ones that can really fuck you up. Yeah. And just make some hard turns and... <laughs> Dodge for your life, pretty much. It's it's <laughs> like it's nothing advanced. There's there are no special tricks here. Just dodge. Yeah, and this is probably the first time in the game where the destructive uh, bullets get quite dangerous because the ones yes. that are shooting down in the middle they can really fuck up your pattern. Definitely, definitely. That's why you should always wait until they find before moving to the other side. Yeah, yeah. And that and... extra milking which Kamui does here it's not that important. No, it's no, no how many not with game. Get from that, but but uh, Icarus, I'm gonna need you to trigger the uh, Kaida video. Just Miyamoto. on it, don't worry. <laughs> nice. <laughs> because um, that's an interesting thing. As you can see here, uh, there are a couple of spots here on the last pattern. And if you keep the destructible, one, of the des one or two of the destructible turns alive, you can shoot the center core uh, indefinitely because it's uh, invincible um, and this is especially lucrative for Miyamoto because he can do this point blank and he gets around oh, right, right, yeah. he gets close to like 350k for it or something which well, is a ridiculous it, yeah. amount of score well worth it. Mm -hmm. yes uh, which you can see demonstrated here on the video uh, and he also shows a very efficient way of handling the ball itself like he starts on one Mantles it completely and then goes to the other side. And as you can see here, his rank is much, <laughs> even though he's been scoring like crazy. So it's it's really not that hard in any sort of way whatsoever. Mm. And then you get the milking part. <laughs> yeah, it's yes. really not hard to set up because the entire top section is basically safe. Yeah, but it's, it's like. Um, the only thing you really have to take into account is uh, very careful positioning. Yeah. Because you, you want to only destroy one destructible bullet turret, and you also want to make sure that all of your options are hitting the, the yeah. center turret. Yeah. Basically, anything from these lines here, all the way across and up, safe. I mean, you could slide up and down that top part of the screen, and nothing can hit you at this point, so it's, it is pretty easy to set up. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. And the game is ridiculous. I mean, just look at the numbers go up here. It's fucking. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. And that's a key thing about a lot of these Yagawa style games, though, is that there are certain bosses, certain enemies that you can exploit in this manner. I mean, um, probably the most well known outside of Garaga would be. Midi? In Ibarra? Oh, Switch yeah. yeah. Boss. yeah. Right. That, um, yeah. Earth Crisis, the long <laughs> version. Yeah. Yep. I mean, you get Lonely there with crisis. three flamethrowers, and you can sit there and get an extra, what is it, one and a half million, I think it is? Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. it's a pretty ridiculous point gain just to sit there and not get shot at for about five minutes. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, th this milk in particular is, for anybody who's played Batrider, I think it's very similar to um, uh, something you can do in the first advanced stage, Zenobia City. 
um, on the first like static part of the stage where you have a big center turret uh, that spawns like uh, missile turrets from both sides of it. And if you got a Gorega ship with uh, options you can manipulate, you can just sit in the middle and push your options so that they hit both of the sides and kill off all of these turrets sitting in a safe spot for uh, like uh, one and a half minute or something and just get 20k per each cycle of turrets destroyed. If you've seen that, yeah, yeah, I think uh, I think there are replays floating around which um, which demonstrate, and I think Aquas does it as well in some of his runs. So mm, um, yeah, yeah, there's a pretty well known trick now. So yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's so easy yeah. to set up as well. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Shall so we... yeah, rest of stage six. Yeah. Um, first general tips, I would say, getting homing options is the most the stage because it makes everything much 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 easier yeah also just like basic stuff um all of the gorega ships want to use all of their bombs that they collect to uh, bomb the tank hatches and uh, cover metals and bomb the laser turrets yeah twice if they can we're gonna explain that later mm -hmm. um every other ship like all of the more ships they just want to collect bomb fragments to get a completely filled up bomb stock before black or two because they capitalize a lot more from that than bombing hatches and turrets well turrets if they can if they have enough bombs but yeah. yeah yeah in general you want to leave the stage with a full bomb stock yeah so yes um basically in terms of the hatches because th this can be kind of important as well um with Wild Snail and Silver Sword, they're very simple to uncover. They only recover what they only require one fragment, and uh, you get the medals and everything's fine and dandy. With um, Grasshopper, mm -hmm. Which you gotta have cute yeah, like if, if you have oh nice. <laughs> yeah, you, you should do mine here where I actually I am. forget what I'm supposed to be doing. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Right, so. Go yeah. On. Yeah. So with Grasshopper, if you have low rank, then destroying the hatches will take about uh, I don't know, maybe four fragments or something like that. And you're supposed to destroy them only with the spent sh shell casings going down from the bottom of your ship. So you position your own sprite just right above the hatches and bomb. Pretty simple. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, you you can see here. I forget what I'm supposed to be doing, and I'm like, oh yeah, shit, got all the hatches. But um, yeah, it, it's not that hard. I mean, it's it's not super annoying because it doesn't really require that ridiculous amount of fragments. Yeah. However, uh, flying Baron, you got to take into account a couple of things. Um, as I said before, if you point blank with his bombs, which is something that you've been doing with pretty much every ship so far, um, then the bombs, or well, the missiles themselves are not going to do any damage whatsoever. So it's going to take six or more bomb fragments to uncover a hatch. But if you instead allow at least some missiles to fly off and then hit the hatches, it can take as few as three fragments to uncover the hatches. Yeah. Um, so it's really like it's a very much a position based kind of thing, and it's uh, easily the hardest to do with flying bear. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. Now we come into one of the most interesting tricks in the game: the laser turrets. Mm, yeah, what we were talking about before. <laughs> yes. Um, so, in this stage, there are four laser turrets, right? Yeah, four of them. Four big ones. Yes. Exactly. And um, what they do, basically, is if you destroy them normally, like just shoot them to death, you get 5k. If you destroy them with a bomb, you get 50k, which is a lot of points. And the thing is, they, for a couple of reasons, you can actually destroy them twice. Which means that if you bomb them both times, 
um, you get 100k total per laser turret. And why this works is that, um, or because is because of that um, the way the game handles um, everything that's above the insert credit line. So as I said before, what I heard was that everything above the line has like its own HP bar, and if rank is low enough, then you can actually destroy that HP bar with um, ships like uh, Grasshopper. Wild Snail and uh, Silver Sword. I don't know if you can do it with Baron, but I think so. Hmm. Um, with high enough auto fire and shot level, you can destroy them uh, before the entirety of the laser target hitbox has scrolled down below the insert credit line. So, what this means is if you do it correctly, then you can um, just uh, shoot the turret to decrease itself enough. Bomb right before the entirety of its hitbox is below the insert credit line. Hit it again um, to get its HP down again because the HP bar reset between because it's yeah it's loaded up another HP bar. Uh, bomb it again and you get twice the amount of points and it's a lot in the end because it's like uh, 200k extra. And it's a trick that's dependent on rank because you can only do it when the enemies or the laser turrets have low enough health. So that's why most people use four black heart helpers as an indicator on if they can perform the trick or not. Yeah. But yeah, it's a really nifty trick and it's really hard to pull off as well. So it feels pretty, pretty fucking awesome when you're doing it. It's really a high, a, a very advanced trick. It's not something you're going to be trying for the first couple of times. But yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's cool when you can get it down in ways. Yeah. I mean, it looks pretty fun to do. It's just obviously with it being rank dependent, you're not going to see it that often. Yeah, and you also got to be really aware of if you're actually getting the 50k or not. Because yeah. if you've been damaging it first, bombing, and you see, oh shit, I didn't get 50k, yeah, then you got to be aware that it's pretty much going to be dying at the next possible hit. Yeah. So either you're going to have to go out options or just hit something so few times that you can get a bomb fragment and bomb and not lose out on the 50k yeah. before that yeah i think so it's actually, really finicky but yeah i think it actually happens in this replay as well because the first um turret he only gets 5k for the first one because he accidentally yeah, he, shoots it to death but then he bombs yeah, the second he form. bombs it too late yeah 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 so i mean yeah. you can probably but see the second there. turret he gets both of them on yeah he does yeah yeah, yeah it's uh, and if you're looking at um, this we play with um, Grasshopper. Just how he draws the laser turrets the second turn. Um, yes. He uses the back bomb this time because the bomb fragments, the back actually stay longer on screen than front bomb. Yeah. So exactly. So that's why he here uses the as an exception um, the back bomb to this. Yeah, and I think so here, slowly. I... I think the yeah. uh, the shell casings more damage. Yeah, that's what makes Grasshopper so weird. Those that you the yeah, bomb is yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. upside down when you think about it. The, yeah, the most powerful so part of it. Yeah. Yeah. The most powerful part well, of it. I, I, comes I, I up don't back. think the things that are coming out of the backside are actually more uh, doing, doing more damage because otherwise it wouldn't make too much sense for the bird section which you want to attack with a front bomb yeah but here yeah, it's but I just think about the, 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 the only um, reason the, of the um shrapnels of your bomb yeah yeah but i think it makes sense though because the only reason you're the birds like from the front is because the uh, forward shot from the bomb is piercing so you can reach more birds that way and i think that deals more damage in the end why is the backward part not piercing? Uh, what? The backward part of the bomb is not piercing, is it? No. Uh, no, I don't think it is. But it, it goes through objects, no? Uh, yeah, but I think they have like their own sort of damage, because I've seen shells disappear after a while, after they've hit enough things as well, so I don't know. Mm. I'm gonna have to check into that, I'm not entirely sure. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, it doesn't matter that much anyway. No. Yeah, maybe it does, but... I'm gonna try to do a run where I only 
damage the birds with the shell casings. We'll see if that makes a difference or not. Yeah, it won't. <laughs> no. <laughs> It'll probably just gain as, as little score as usual. Yeah. Probably get yeah, out. Yeah, so for um, the boss... Oh, well, maybe before talking about the boss, we should... Um, sprite limit, which comes yeah. into the last part of the stage itself. Yeah. Um, so basically, um, after killing the last of the four big laser toads, see from the left side of the screen um, three uh, of those big tanks coming in, which you have seen earlier in the game. And uh, what you want to do, not only as a beginner, but also as a advanced player, is that you want to stop shooting so that um, so many bullets and so many popcorn enemies fill the screen that this right limit actually overloads, and yes. one of the big tanks will not spawn at all, which exactly. makes the uh, whole bit considerably easier, which makes it easier to collect all the medals, and um, yeah, that's basically the way to go, um, not only for survival, but also for high scoring, yeah. because that one tank that would otherwise spawn wouldn't give you too much points anyway, so it's yeah. much more important to concentrate on collecting the medals, and maybe depending on the ship you use, uh, destroying the hatches, which are um, upcoming in the next section, um, three, four, and more of those. So, yeah. yeah. I gotta say, that that's a bit of a matter of preference, though, because I never do that, personally. No. No. Uh, the thing is, if you're not shooting, then you can't get any bomb fragments from the uh, tanks that are appearing, like, on, uh, like coming out of the hatches. And... I find, you know, I've tried both ways, and for me, it's generally easier to just shoot everything and collect bomb fragments so I can use the bomb invincibility and the bomb itself to get through the section and uncover metals at the next couple of hatches uh, in order to save them later on instead of uh, taking my chances with the sprite overload. Yeah. But I don't know, it's two different ways of handling it. Everybody's got experiment but to me it works I, I felt it worked better with just shooting everything pretty much mm. also another thing to note here with grasshopper on this boss here is that in order to score optimally of course you got the trigger special shot level as he's done here yeah shall we at least discuss a little bit of junkie while we're sitting sitting here watching him shoot off arms yes oh, i hate um, this boss so much <laughs> I love it. It's uh, fucking awesome. <laughs> I can't stand it. It's so boring, but I think everyone either likes or I hates think, this uh, boss. Plasmo likens it to a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Male sorting <laughs> robot. I've oh, heard yeah, as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, toilet robot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does look like a toilet in the middle of it, like so. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's the newest form of Japanese toilet. Yeah. <laughs> it comes with uh, self-cleaning arms. Yeah, self-wiping, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, your ass too. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, well, um, uh, to me, I, I think, honestly, this is one of the most the game, actually. Uh, because it's it's kind of hard for survival, and the milk in itself is a lot more fun than Earth Crisis, at least. Yeah, that's um, true. That is true. Yeah. So, basically, I would say it's very easy to get through everything if you have hope, um, regardless of ship, really. Yeah. So, I always try to keep my homing for this thing, so I don't really have to bother about the first couple of phases. Yeah. Um, also, a thing to note is that during the second phase, when he's static, and he's got, like... Uh, two separate uh, needle, big needle firing turrets on each side, and he's firing missiles and spreads, and he's got all of these different turrets. If you kill that part off, uh, or that face off, if you kill off that face by damaging the core enough, then you're going to get an extra 50k if you have any other turrets on the boss left standing. Yeah. And that is very easy to do if you got homing, in my opinion but very hard to do if you don't. So what I would say is, uh, if you got homing, go for it. Just stay to one side of the screen and shoot the boss as much as you can, on just on one side. Um, and hope that you get the 50k. If you don't, if and if you don't have homing, just you shouldn't give a fuck about it. Just shoot the core, destroy the turrets as quickly as possible to get to this phase here, because this is much more important. Yeah. Right. 
And it's also very important for most ships at this point to keep all of their lives in terms of routing. Because you want to have as many resources available as possible for Blackheart 2. Yes. And if your rank has been controlled well enough, like, I mean, that it's not ridiculously high or anything, then every ship will want to just not die after this point until Blackheart 2. Yeah. Because the lives are so much better spent there. Yeah, exactly. Because, uh, well, missing Black Heart 2 and scoring Black Heart 2 doesn't work together. Yeah. You are going to suicide if you're scoring off, which we'll get into later, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So basically, this is just pure survival and yeah. shooting the wings and, and the, the arms in an optimal way as possible. Yeah. Uh, for ships with piercing, I can mention this here. If you want to get the most amount of tick points, you should try to make sure that you um, fire your piercing shots vertically along the arm when it's vertically extended. So your piercing shots travel all along the arm. I mean, it, it's pretty obvious, but it, it makes a big difference because you can get like an increase of uh, maybe 2,000 points a second as opposed to 500 points a second, which yeah. matters a lot in the end. So, yeah. I mean, aside from that, it's a very straightforward boss. Just milk it and yeah. uh, make sure to be able to kill it. Not much more to it. Yeah, yeah. And you can see here just how useful homing options are. This oh, especially is... with Miyamoto. I mean, yeah. everything... Every boss in the game is fucking trivial with Miyamoto at home. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> seriously, it's it's fucking, it's not even a game, it's like, you don't even have to care about shit. Just sit in a corner, yeah. shoot, and kill everything. Yeah. yeah. And as you can see here, even though this is, like, this is 400k, no, this is like 1, 200k from the world record. Yeah. This is the highest scoring replay available. His rank is still super fucking low. Yeah. This late in the game. So, I mean, if you're playing Miyamoto and you're complaining and saying that, oh, rank was too high, it's too hard to control. Seriously, he's playing with super high order. He's scoring super high. There's no excuse. Yeah. Rank is not a problem. <laughs> yeah, you're doing something wrong if you're getting higher rank with Miyamoto at this point, like, I think. Yeah. Chances <laughs> are you're probably just dying yeah. because you don't know the game. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, of course, Miyamoto gains an extreme amount of points from this boss as well. Anything yeah. that just involves shooting stuff that doesn't kill the boss gives him a lot of points. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyways, that's that. Um, yeah. Should we go into stage 7? Last Moving stage? right along, yeah. Yeah, let's... Yeah, let's go reaching the end now. Seven. <laughs> yeah. One, so one easy... One easy setup you can have for stage um, seven is that you can um, again trigger the homing options yep. uh, easily before the sixth yes. boss comes onto the screen. You see um, five enemies to the right and five to the left, and yes. if you let five of those bomb fragments there and uh, just collect the next option item on stage seven, you are good with the homing, and it will greatly benefit you, especially on the um, second um, wave uh, where the turrets are coming and the screen stops for the second time. Exactly. Yeah. This is true for every ship except for Gain, of course. Yeah. Yeah, Gain because has he has piercing options. Crazy, crazy stuff to move it. Uh, yeah. So we will come and, back to that later. And also, uh, a couple of things to take into mind here is that um, uh, a lot of times uh, you got to be mindful of the item drop order, too, because a lot of the times you're not going to be able to receive an option at the start of stage 7. Yeah. Yeah, it happens. Mm -hmm. So what you need to do then, like, if you're extremely concerned about scoring, you're going to have to decide whether a suicide is worth the homing options or if you just want to try to do it manually. Well, you, you don't life. really need the uh, homing options for the very beginning part, and as soon as you need them, um, yeah, I mean, you can, you can, you can trigger. You get plenty of popcorn enemies, and then you get the option item. Um, yeah, item. you can you can trigger the home options after the first part, but it's kind of hard to do, honestly. Um, it, it it shouldn't be too. 
like many popcorn enemies well, are coming. L let me tell oh, you, if you if you got two metal or something like that, uh, and you got all of the bullets and all of the enemies on screen, uh, you're gonna have to dodge all of the bullets and collect two medals without keep without picking up uh, any bomb fragments or anything. So you're re restricted to the center of the screen. <laughs> And then picking up options. That's really hard to do at the start of oh, stage seven. Okay. I've been there myself, so. <laughs> I, I, I never really encountered any problems there, so. Uh... Yeah, uh... well, it fucked up my medal value, so <laughs> I was okay. a bit salty after that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I would say, in general, just like uh, if you know uh, an option is coming, uh, go ahead, do it. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. And if you got a lot of lives, suicide. Yeah. 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 Or the, if you're lacking bombs. Yeah. At this point, uh, resource management is very important because you need as much as you want, as you uh, can get um, for yeah. Black Art 2. Yes. I mean, just talking about resources, look at the picture. It just shows us beautifully five bombs and two lives. And yeah. This yes. is the perfect um, resource management for yeah. stage study. It perfect. is. It is. Yeah. It's optimal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so... Basically, what you want to be doing if you've got full bombs is uh, you pull off a bomb at the beginning of the stage uh, to destroy the back engine. Yeah, these two big things here. <laughs> yes, because you get 50k from each of them, so yeah. it's 100k total for free, pretty much. Yep. Uh, yeah. And <clears throat> what's important to note here um, about this stage is that you can delay certain parts by not destroying all of the turrets. So, like on this part, for an example, if you leave one of the turrets alive yeah. and you let the and you let this part of the stage time out, it's gonna scroll on and reach the next like phase of the level. Uh, but the amount of time that it stays on that section is gonna be extended because of the turret you left alive previously, which means that you will have popcorn enemies and more opportunities to mill medals and points. Yeah. So that's basically what this stage is about, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, you do that to get more points and also to get a, a correct timing, because if you do this, then your timing throughout the stage is going to be the same every time you play it. Yeah. And that's important for a trick coming up here with uh, some shrapnel at the mid part of the stage and also the part right before Black Hawk 2. Yeah. The, for oh, yeah, that, he's going to... watching right now is probably the most um, important in terms of looping for the uh, first half of the stage. Um, you can destroy those um, turrets for, I think, 10k each. Yeah, um, it's 10k each. Infinitely, um, as long as you do not destroy the base, which is, yes. um, which is right behind them. So it is rather easy when you have um, triggered the homing options to just um, destroy one side, preferably the left one, yeah, and then exactly. try to mirror to the right one as much as possible. And in this replay, it goes yeah. one step further to exactly. um, I mean, this is everything this alive is kinda... to the next wave, exactly. and then position this is... the options on the safe spot to just yeah. mirror it even yeah. more. Yeah, so this is, this really is world stuff. record. This is world record style tactics, because yeah. Uh, yeah. the next segment like, like that just came into this interview here, is one of the hardest parts in the game to survive because there are a lot of bullets everywhere. Right. And if you fuck up once, like if you shoot to the right side of the screen or if you get hit by a bullet, then your trick is fucked. You can't do anything and you lose all of the points and whatever. And you also lose another life and you don't gain right. any extra bombs because bomb stock is already full. So it's um, an extremely hard trick to pull off, but you can get like an extra 100k or something from it if you do it successfully. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. And it was and, discovered quite late, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I haven't really seen it in any other replays aside from the later ones. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, but then, the shrapnel in itself... Uh, yeah, the shrapnel, exactly. When the boss, namely Crimson Clover, bursts out of the... Um, right Crimson Clover? Tank ...or whatever it is. No, it's not Crimson Clover, it's um, <laughs> King Crimson, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is it or what's it called? King, King Crimson, Crimson, yeah. King Crimson, <laughs> yeah, which is, close by enough, the way, fucking amazing so, yeah, when, music. When, I saw yeah, it live. When, when it one of the best shows in my life. 
<laughs> yeah. But, um, uh, you... yeah, go ahead. Okay, um, when it bursts out of the red um, tank, there, um, you, you get a lot of sh shrapnel coming out, so similar to the one um, you got on um, Slayer on stage 5. But yeah, even with also, one, so, one yeah, major well, well, difference. Yeah, when well, you've got, like, um, I, I think it was like 200k for the no. shrapnel in stage 5, or what the, What was it? No, it's like 160 from stage 160 yeah. even. So here you get yeah. like 500k or something. Yeah, yeah you get just under 500. So it's three times yeah. higher here. Yeah, and the difference is that here it goes um, all the way off screen, while it stays on screen quite um, closely to the middle um, yes. on stage 5. So here it's much more difficult to get because it's so fast. So yes. um, exploding all to the sides that you need um, a character with a well applicable bomb for that, or you yeah, need white to have, bomb. like really really low rank so you can damage all the shrapnel. Because when exactly. rank is higher, the um, health of the shrapnel also increases, and then it's more yes. difficult to destroy everything. Of it. Yeah, and what you have to know as well is that the, there are a couple of ships that can't get all of the points from it. I don't think Miyamoto can get all of the points. No, uh, very close to it, but no, he can't. Um, Wild Snail can't get all of the points. It's impossible. Uh, Flying Baron can't either. Um, Gain can't get all of the points either, no matter how low his rank is, uh, because his bomb is too narrow. It's not wide enough to cover all of the space needed. Uh, unless you bomb twice, but you don't want to be doing that. Um, so basically, Bornum is free. Bornum gets all of the points from one easy bomb. Shikta needs to work on her timing. It's it's kind <laughs> of a hard timing to do, but you can get all of the points with just one bomb. Yeah. Uh, Silver Sword can get all of the points pretty easily as well, um, and Grasshopper can get all of the points, but it's very finicky, and the timing is really hard. For Grasshopper, you only want to be hitting the shrapnel with uh, your uh, shell casings from your bomb. So you position yourself at the top middle of the screen, and you deploy your bomb basically right before um, right before it's supposed to hit. Is this my replay, by the way? Yeah, the Silver Sword was yeah, broken, is. so I've yeah. changed it to the Grasshopper oh. one. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh... Yeah. Oh, that was my grass. I, I, I handled this badly, by the way. The Kaede one is much better. Uh, I didn't really know the exact timing for what I was supposed to do here, but... Yeah. Hang on, then. let me just very quickly change over to it, then. So... Because I got, like, yeah, I only got, like, yeah... You got, like... 130 or something. Yeah, yeah. the lower half or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this trick so is... So it's really finicky, but you can get all of the points. Yeah. Uh, however, like, as I said before, Wild Snail, uh, because of his flames, you can only hope in, like, what you can get at the max is around 150. Anything above that is not, just not possible. Yeah. And, well, that's basically like... Yeah. Like if you if you wanna discuss the exact execution, um, you should learn like to listen for audio cues because if you've been delaying the stage the same way every time, then the shrapnel is always gonna be exploding at the same. Time. So you can use that. Yeah, as you can see, you got a lot of. Doing yeah, that. you got pretty much two thirds of it, I think. By the look of it, there was a big amount of it. Yeah, yeah, at least he he got at least four hundred. So that's um, that's a lot. Or close to close to 450, I think, or maybe just 400. I don't know. Yeah, let's uh. see here. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, there are a lot of points, anyways. Yep. It's like uh, it's the biggest single scoring opportunity for um, yeah. Yeah. for Grasshopper this late in game. Oh, we got Yorm in it. Yorm. Yeah. Yorm. Yorm. Anyway, should we move on to Black Art? Or are we gonna... Uh, no, we got one more thing first. Oh yeah, uh, the cockpit. Yeah, the, yeah, cockpit the cockpit here. Yeah. Yes. 
Uh, so if you cockpit, just... um, ah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, okay. Um, if you destroy the cockpit um, with weapon, first of all, it gives you more points. For just you get 100k. Yeah, exactly. But first of all, you don't want to destroy it at all, but you want to delay it and wait for as many popcorns as possible, depending yeah. on your rank, of course, to come out to drop some medals. Yes. And then, if you have the resources left, and if you have um, a ship that um, can um, use a bomb here, because um, most of the ships uh, need all the bombs for Black Blackheart Mark II, but if you yes. can have a bomb here on the cockpit, just use it for an extra 100k in... Um, Opposed to 10k, I think, when you just got a shot. Yeah, yeah, it's something like that. And yeah. uh, also, a couple of things to note here. Um, with like, Yeah, the item with, order is quite well. Not, not only that, with regular or medium rank, you're going to get about 25 cycles before this part of the stage times out and continues onward towards Black Heart 2. Uh -huh. So you have about 25 cycles to work with. And what you got to do here is because right before Black Heart 2 arrives, you get a lot of his helpers, and of course they spawn items as well. But they also fire a lot of bullets that cover the entire lower half of the screen. So you don't want them to spawn any medals, because those will be really hard to collect. So what you want to be doing here at this part is uh, make sure that you destroy the cockpit, either by shot or by bomb, whatever. Um, when a... Uh, an option icon uh, or item, an option item or a big shot icon is supposed to appear. So that's basically the way the timing works. Right. And if you look at those um, small, as you call them, the helpers coming out, you realize that they're actually micro versions of King Crimson himself. Uh, of those no, with yeah, those those are coming after that, but the small ones. Oh yeah, yeah, the yeah. other. Yeah, the, the, they the actually yeah, mini yeah, yeah. below splits uh, in a sense. Yeah. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that honestly. <laughs> yeah. That's so so you first got to fight those mini glow splits, then mini black hearts, then bigger black yeah. hearts, and then the macro <laughs> glow split, and then the macro tail witties thing, and yeah. Yeah, this going maybe just, just big. Um, <laughs> go to um, black heart mark two. Yeah. Think. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I I hadn't noticed that before. I just thought of them as like the fuckers that fuck the metal value. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um Oh uh, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I never noticed yeah. that actually. They do look like it. Yeah, I gotta look for that now myself actually. Let's see. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and I would say like general tip something very useful for people. If you fuck this up, uh, if you fail and you have a medal coming up uh, during the helper part, just don't shoot. Time out all of the helpers. Oh yeah. And that's a guaranteed save. Because, so, I mean, if you get the bad patterns on Black Heart 2, you're going to be getting medals anyways. And if you don't have any medals to speak of, then you're just going to be getting shit. So. Yeah, exactly. Speaking Always of Black gotta... Yeah. Yeah, let's go. Let's go! Let's go! Stab in the your Black Heart! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably uh, uh, What they say more, like, uh, target the core and bastard the enemy. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah, just before Blackheart Mark II, you get to fight those small Blackhearts again. And if you want to have an easy time, just um, try to attack them from either side and, yeah. and aim your options and the direction option yeah. uh, yes. formation. And so never stay right beneath the gun. Yeah, you should be exactly. doing that at well, this point anyway because then rank, it begins. Yeah, Blackheart Mark II. Yeah. Probably and the also, most difficult part of the whole game um, for survival as well as for scoring, just because it's so heavily um, RNG based. Yeah. Yes. It's so crucial also, and so late in the game, it's just the bane of our all existence. And the yeah, there are a lot of items. interesting things to yeah. talk about here. Uh, I would say, in general, all ships will want to power up the special shot level before Black or 2. 
Um, and also, this is kind of like a specific thing in terms of power-ups and stuff. Um, uh, no, Yom, it's impossible to break the wings. Yeah. That's only Matt Rider. Um, but with... Uh, basically, every ship will want to have a regular option formation aside from Borna. Ideally, Bornum will have a wide option formation for Blackheart 2, because if he's got fully special powered up shot and wide formation, he will basically cover half of the screen with his shots. Yeah, it's ridiculous his coverage. It is pretty good. Yes. <laughs> and it's really good for um, milking the grenades after you've deployed the bomb. Yeah. So that's the main reason you're getting it, because you'll be destroying every grenade released on the screen. Yeah. Uh, and I think, you know, honestly, this is basic stuff. Everybody should know this, but um, the ships that capitalize the most on Black Heart 2 are the ones that have an area of effect bomb, like uh, Gain, Shitta, and Born. Yeah. And uh, what they want to be doing is that every time Black Heart 2 sweeps down to uh, fire off a grenade attack, where it just spews grenades, uh, you want to bomb, because those grenades are worth. 500 points if killed with a shot, piercing or non-piercing, I think, and 5,000 points if killed with a bomb. Right. Also, if you bomb, like, if you place your bomb on top of the tar of the grenade spewing points, you will also force him to spew for grenades. Which means that your score will be increasing ridiculously um, with any of these aerial effect bomb type ships. Uh, Bornum will usually get somewhere around 2,000 points per bomb. I think it's like 2,040 or something. And Gain can get even higher amounts, like it can get close to 380 if rank is high enough per bomb. Which is a ridiculous amount of score for just a single So, And since you're able to bomb Blackheart for five times... Yeah. That yeah. gives you a fuck ton of score to work That's with. a lot of points, yeah. 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 And especially if you're going for higher ranks, so I'm um, talking about um, game super play style. Um, of course, you do not only trigger more popcorn enemies, but also more of those grenades, which in turn give you more um, score then. So yeah. this is the main reason um, why you want to play high rank at all, with game especially. Yeah. Uh, also, th you know, I just got to respond to this in the chat. This is kind of interesting, like the differences between Garaga and Batrider. Um, the thing is, the reason yeah, why this takes so though, long. Yeah. yeah, the reason this takes so long to cover as maybe Batrider or anything else. I mean, Batrider is a complex game, sure, but in general, the tricks in themselves are way harder to execute in Garaga than, than they are in Batrider. Batrider has more things to do, but the execution and like. The, the tiny differences in how much it affects things is much less, much lower in Batrider than this in Garega. The tricks are way simpler in Batrider than they are in Garega. Yes. And yes. it's like in general, there's a lot less randomness in terms to how much score you're getting. It's a much more consistent game, even though there's a lot of randomness too. But it's yeah. like there is no equivalent to the birds or Blackheart or whatever. Or in even Mad Ball. It yeah, yeah, it doesn't exist. Mm, I would say Bashnet 2. Yeah, but that's just a simple Whoa. fucking thing. It's like, does he deploy the arms and you can destroy them or not? It's yeah. like, that's super simple. It's nothing compared yeah. to yeah. this. He's it's, it's, still it's a not dick, even though. Same... He's still a Mad yeah, Ball yeah, 2 level is. dick, though, if he doesn't do it properly. He is. Yeah. He is. But I mean, that's one thing that people should really like take notice of. Honestly, because I yeah. see a lot of talk about this Garaga versus Batrider, blah yeah. blah blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Batrider Advanced has a lot more variables, sure. Yeah. But Garega is much more execution heavy in every trick. Yeah. Much more. It's yes. like yeah, they're not even in the same world. Batrider yeah. is much easier for execution, even though a lot of things yeah. are harder in general, like for survival yeah. and stuff. Yeah. I mean, in my opinion, it's like um, this that Batrider, I would definitely call the more polished game. But Garega yes. is more interesting. Yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> yes. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, 
on the topic of Black Heart 2 again, um, there are a couple of things that you should watch out for. Uh, yeah. First of all, uh, with any ship, pretty much, uh, if he uh, finishes, like, every time he's supposed to go down and spew grenades, if he finishes the previous animation on the lower half of the screen, like when he's close to the bottom, then he will point blank you and you will die. So what you can do, for an example, with a ship that has a like type of bomb, you can deploy the bomb from the middle and go off the su to the side of the screen uh, in order to not get killed by the grenades. But if you stay at the, at the bottom, then you will die. So that's an important thing to note. Yeah. Also, every time he goes down to spew grenades, you can manipulate him to go off screen by going to either the leftmost or the rightmost of the screen. Uh, which is kind of important for survival because if no reason and he's about to do that attack, it can be a lot. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, <laughs> a couple of other things to take into account. Um, so maybe we should just um, generally split the boss into three parts, right? The first part is not really that important for um, scoring. Um, no, other no. Than I, you. Mean, I mean, that's just I mean, like, when, when, when comparing the two black hearts, the one in stage five and this one. Yeah. Um, yeah. For the one in stage five, you want to um, spawn as many of those popcorn enemies as possible because you want to collect the medals. But yeah. for the first phase of Mark II, you uh, do not want to spawn them, but you um, in turn want to um, spawn as many grenades. grenades. Yes. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So uh, this is the um, preferred attack, and of course heavily RNG based. Um, yes. Exclusively RNG based um, for the first and the other waves. Um, but other than that, the first wave of the boss is not that important, I think. And the second no. is very straightforward. It's yes. basically um, going and down. the pattern and, and bomb. Yeah, it's uh, going down, spitting grenades. Um, you have to bomb them, and then it's like this, this crazy pattern, and this is repeated two times. And yes. That's it, basically. Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, one thing to take into account here as well, with gain especially, yeah. um, if you're playing a lower rank than this, because now you know you can see her rank is ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, it, it's max. Uh, so sometimes you have to use your options to not get killed. Uh, by the grenades. But in general, if rank is not this high, you want to make sure that you're firing at the grenades with your main shot directly after you the bomb and not the options. Because if you fire with the options, you can destroy grenades with the options instead of the bomb, which means that you'll get 500 points per grenade instead of 5,000. So it's like... Um, mm, that's just the thing to take into account. Yeah. Uh, let's see, how much do you think the guy gets the PS4 HUD affects scores for normal players? Uh, for top players, that won't be uh, a factor. No, I don't yeah, think exactly. it would be. Yeah, yeah. I agree with Plasma. Yeah. yeah, it's not a factor for anybody who's played the game a lot. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, we're already used to this. Like, yeah. we've got the. We, we're all Jedi warriors of the Gorega class. <laughs> I mean, in some cases, it probably will help to fine tune certain things, but in terms of you know high and top level play, I don't think they would ever use it. To be honest, yeah, we don't need no yeah. help. No, yeah, uh, it's like uh, yeah. I mean, the game is the game is pretty much maxed out by now anyway. So yeah, right, yeah, yeah. it's just like a matter of when Kamui actually decides to play enough runs to get the twenty-one million. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's a nice yeah, thing to it. have because it means less complaints from people who are seeking excuses for like, yes. oh, the bosses have no health. Uh, it is not Dota and Pax. Yeah. No, I'm, I, oh, well, I, I, I can't see the bullets. So, yeah. No, they oh, can go. That's, that's, nice. Nice. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. 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 yeah, but anyways, back to Black Horror Two. Uh, another couple of things that are kind of interesting is that um, yeah. for most of the Garega ships, or well, pretty much any Garega ship. You want to be, you don't want to die, and you just want to shit the uh, the grenades and shit, not bomb them or whatever, uh, because you've been bombing the hatches and laser parts. Yeah. But um, the thing is, uh, 
at the last part, like a last phase of the boss, uh, which is when he's doing like the clusterfuck pattern and when he's basically it goes like this. He does a random pattern, then he goes into the Vulcan spray, and then he does the a random pattern again, he does the Vulcan spray again, and after that he goes down the bomb. And this is the most important attack of the whole fight. Yeah. Yes. Um, and with a normal ship that doesn't have an area effect bomb, you can actually capitalize on that some extra by bombing the grenades if you make sure to suicide directly after the last Vulcan spray before the grenade sweep. Yes. Uh, with a ship like, uh, for an example, Flying Baron or Golden Bat or Wild Snail, because what you can do then is utilize your invincibility to get basically inside of the sprite of Black yes. Heart 2, yes. bomb, and get your bombs to just smack the hell out of all of the grenades spawning, so you'll force spawn more grenades and get a lot of score from it. Yeah. But that's like, that's uh, world record style stuff. Um, but it's it's an interesting trick, and it's here to do with Silver Sword, because all you need to do is die and get bombs. Um, the timing for optimal score game with Silver Sword is a bit different, though, because what you want to be doing is that you want to deploy your bomb when Black Car 2 is going upwards, because your bomb is going to go upwards as well. And if your bomb follows along with the boss, you're going to be hitting exactly. the spawning points for the grenades for a longer time. Yeah, we have to keep in mind that this very attack is the one that is spawning uh, the grenades for the longest amount of time. So it's yes. the most important one um, to deploy as many bombs as you still have left at this point in the game. Exactly. Um... Um, just maybe one more small hint for survival players is when the boss goes down and you don't really care for the granite because you just want to survive, is that you can position yourself actually so that the boss moves to not to the middle of the screen um, and this way, um, filling the screen with bullets and being very close to the bottom, but to make him go to the side. So if you are staying on the left side, for example, and he comes down to you, stay even more so to the um, left side of his center, mm. and then he will go to the left, and you can go to the right again, and he will um, be off screen and go around the world. Exactly, yes. They call it. And this <laughs> yeah. way it makes it m much easier, actually, because there's no bullets on the screen for an attack which would otherwise cost you a life, at least. Yeah, yeah and then you get uh, Daft Punk as a TL secret TLB instead of Glow Squid. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> uh, good one. Yeah, well, yeah, well um, I I'm just trying to think of anything else that I can say here that's useful for Blackheart 2. Um, yeah, one thing that's really important as well is for uh, players or, or ships that don't have piercing shots to damage the ship as much as they possibly can between bases. Because uh, he has a lot of HP and it can be really hard to kill him if you're not doing everything correctly, especially if you're not dodging Vulcan. By the way, we're gonna have to go through Vulcan, but anyways. <laughs> for a non-piercing ship, for a non-piercing ship, you have to use, um, you, you have to dodge through the um, the Vulcan spray at all times, and you gotta damage at the same time. Yeah. Because otherwise, you won't be able to kill it before time. Uh, and Alexei, on the topic, yeah, uh, from what I know, Yagawa himself has. He got letter scores before the game's release with every ship. Um, but, I mean, not to this level. It's like the level the game is at now is just a product of players becoming way obsessed with the game. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I very much doubt any game dev can play to a super high level. Not including Yotsubane, of course, but I'm not sure how yes. much of testing he's done although i do have a funny story in that when i asked him why he made the oh, game really? so hard yeah he said well yeah. i just fine-tuned it for super players 
<laughs> yeah, I asked him that in Japan when I was there in 2014. I goes, why did you make the arcade game so much harder than the PC game? He's like, I just tuned it yeah. for somebody of my level. I'm like, oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks yeah, a lot, man. That sounds like something he would say. Yeah, yeah. I kind of half expected yeah. it, but hearing it from him directly yeah, was like, yeah. what? <laughs> and, and he delivered it in a totally deadpan way as well. Right? He did, yeah. He just kind of looked yes. at me and goes, yeah, just tuned it for people like me. I was like, thanks? That's even a nutshell. That's even a nutshell. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he is, he's kind of sweet though. Yeah, he is pretty cool. Yeah, he is pretty cool. Yeah. But uh, that kind of goes back to my point that I think very few devs do actually play their game to a high level they get it to a certain point oh, then yeah. you know the thing oh it's done but then the players it's the players that really take it to the next level definitely yeah i, I think like yeah, in order to become a shooting game developer like at a, at a sort of decent level you got to have an understanding for the genre and you got to be able to play at least decently right. yeah. yeah i mean that's true for yeah. every good developer that we um, well, you, don't, but, you don't necessarily have to play the game as well, but you have to get an understanding of how the system works and how gameplay works, how the mechanics interact. But yeah. that often, very often, just goes in hand with playing well, because when you play well, you got to look in-depth into the system. Yeah, but it's exactly. not necessarily connected, but it's just a very... Um, yeah, like if you consider yeah, like, the main yeah, programmer for this game, for example, uh, Shinobu Yagawa, um, he's, I would say, like from what I've seen, he's probably the most competent player of all of the developers out there. Yeah. Uh, in terms yeah. of his history, because he was like an arcade nut who was, uh, I don't know, his favorite game was Gun Frontier, <laughs> yeah. which is a pretty hard game, and he was like getting his top scores for that and clearing it every time and knowing the game inside and out. And, and you can't really do that if you're not even at least a decent player. So yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I see a so, lot of indie devs nowadays. They like try and jam quite a lot of stuff into their shmups without actually realizing the yes. implications of what it's doing to the actual game exactly. system. Exactly. So, yeah, to me, that's a typical example of Jamestown. Yeah. Honestly, I'm not yeah. gonna become like uh, I'm not gonna spew hatred over it, but it's like. To me, it feels like a game designed by somebody who doesn't really understand what arcade shootmaps are supposed to be about. It's not just put bullets everywhere. It's that, you know, there's supposed to be like this sort of prayer sense of mind that every sort of situation is conquerable in some way yeah. by the player. And all of this room for improvement that leaves you wanting more, like leaving opportunities for player to become obsessed or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I don't really see that there. You know, the first time I played it was like, okay, the screen is super wide. I can't even hit everything on the screen at the same time. What yeah. the fuck? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, well, anyways, back to Black Horror 2. There's one thing, one more thing that we really should get into, and that's the, uh, the Vulcan spray. Oh, yes, the moving Vulcan. The yes. Vulcan, moving Vulcan Mark 2. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have uh, two things to say about that, which uh, is enough for anybody. Um, and it's uh, first of all, you got to know your own ship's hitbox. Yeah, absolutely. Be aware of where it is. And the second is uh, one, two to the right, then three to the left, three to the right, and three to the left. Yeah. The movement is yeah. always the same, no matter where yes. you are. Unlike Blackheart, uh, the first Blackheart, which um, the moving Vulcan moves in the in a very specific direction based on your position on screen. Yeah. Yeah. The Blackheart 2's moving Vulcan is always in the same way. I mean, the angles may yes. change depending on your position relative to the exactly. boss's center point. But yeah, the angles may even be totally impossible to dodge. Um, yeah. No, no, it's yeah. never. It's never impossible to dodge. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I, but, yeah, I, that, I get but, your point. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you uh, only have to adjust for trajectories and shit. But um, yeah, because, yeah, yeah, uh, you know, uh, I, I used to think it was impossible. Uh, a couple of years ago when I played the game, it was like, how the fuck am I supposed to do this? But nowadays, it's weird for me to get hit by it. Mm. Yeah. 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 
because it's I mean, I like, don't know you... about you, but for me at least, it feels um, easier if I have a slower ship. It so is, with yes. Miyamoto, it would be quite difficult. But then again, you can um, try to macro dodge it with Miyamoto and try to get out of the boat and hide yeah, in the corner. Yeah, you can. But if you if you have to do the dodge, like if you're trapped, then just make yeah, sure to yeah. do super tiny taps. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So yeah, that's the Vulcan. Yes. Um, and yeah, it's just practice. Yeah. Mm, not super hard, but aside from that, it's like, hmm, that's pretty much Blackboard too. Yeah, I mean yeah. it's three minutes of pure insanity, but once you actually yeah. get the fight down, it is probably the most exhilarating fight in the game. I fucking love the fight. Yeah, yeah. I love it. It's... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's 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 great, but I would say to me the most exhilarating fight in the game is um, glow squid, uh -huh. no resources, <laughs> close to new PB. Yeah, and the music. That's the best thing. Yeah, and the music. Yes, it's it like you know fun. it just kills. You, yeah. yeah, you can't you make a single never mistake. Never forget that adrenaline pumping. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like you know, you saw the video I released after I got the yeah. game. Yeah. TV. As I told Plasmo, uh, I didn't have any resources for and I only had three options. <laughs> so I had to no miss, no bomb all of it with three options prior to the last phase, and it was like... Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been there before, yeah. It's, yeah. it's a pretty scary fight, but when you actually nail it and you see completed it's like oh my god <laughs> get that yeah. huge can't let it slip there. yeah <laughs> it's so good yeah it's it, it's epic yeah and that's the thing about glow squid though it's not a scoring well not unless you include um milk in the last miyamoto. form the, the last form of miyamoto yeah but mm, otherwise yeah. it's just 100 percent survival and it's you trying to take down the last boss as quickly as yeah. possible yeah I, I would say like uh, one thing I could tell players in general that might not be that apparent is that make sure to damage the core because yeah. it times out faster than you would think and yeah. if you haven't damaged it enough to kill it then you will die. Yeah, the time out pattern is nasty. Really yeah, nasty. It's, <laughs> it's pretty much impossible. Yeah, yeah it's It like... will basically time out after um, two of those um, sweeping attacks and then maybe one more regular attack Oh, no. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So that's one thing to take into account. And um, uh, on the last phase, uh, obviously you want can for medals. And there are a couple of things to think about here. First of all, you gotta be mindful that uh, when he fires down his needle bullet, he doesn't care about if you're in a corner or not. He can still like he can he can wall you in and shoot you in the corner and can't oh, yeah. do anything about it. Yeah. A lot of the a lot of glow squid is careful attack management, making sure that the attacks aren't gonna block you in and giving you enough space to get around them. Especially yes. the second form when he pulls out the you know, the turrets and he starts yes. mixing them up and if you get a really shit combination you're gonna find yourself trapped very quickly if you're not careful. Yeah. But I mean, like, you know, the last phase when he's, like, doing these erratic movements, just a cockpit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah, you would think, like, you know, he, he first, the, the attack he starts off with is, like, he fires needle bullets straight downwards. Yeah. Then he does the spiraling pattern, and then he releases his uh, torpedoes with yeah. the uh, destructible bullets. Yeah. And that needle pattern, it might look like it's only aiming towards the center and not, like, yeah, trying to wall you in or something, but it yeah. can like just straight up kill you in the corner. So yeah, be aware of that. And also, if you're using a ship that has some sort of piercing capabilities, mm -hmm. um, be extremely afraid of the destructible bullets. Oh yes, because uh, for some reason, piercing shots handle them extremely poorly. Uh, and it's very easy to just get destroyed by them when you're trying to pick up a medal or something. So always safety first, because 300k from killing the boss is definitely worth it. Yep. Um, and also, 
uh, if you're playing Grasshopper for some reason. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a good good thing you queue the video now. Yeah. Um, if you have few options, the fight is going to be hell. If you have no options, you're dead. Because the, the shot is so fucking narrow, and you know, it's piercing, and you have to destroy destructible bullets, which are coming from the sides. There's no way you're going to survive that if you don't have it. Yeah. Either with Grasshopper, either keep your options, get your options, or die. That's all you can do. Uh, encouraging words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think you're making a very good case for playing Grasshopper here, dude. <laughs> uh, it's it's for the masochist, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Playing Grasshopper. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> if, it, if it goes anywhere near Garrigan to begin with. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's a shame uh, Akko didn't continue playing Grasshopper, honestly. Yeah, we should drag him out of whatever RPG hole he's hiding in and get him to do it. <laughs> Definitely. We should get him a personalized le letter from DBS. <laughs> <laughs> get off your ass. <laughs> yeah. I gotta say, though, I would really want to see that replay because uh, Grasshopper is like... You know, I think if there's one ship that has like any any probabilities of improving, like somebody finding out something crucial, yeah. of all the uh, ships aside from Gain, it's... Yeah, yeah. DB, yeah but... uh, DBS has probably found some pretty interesting tech that nobody knows about because exactly. I can't, I can't fathom how a grasshopper score can be quite that high. No, same here. <laughs> it's uh, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it is. But maybe we should make that like a community goal or this <laughs> grasshopper. Yeah. Something else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Yom, regarding probably. yeah, regarding <clears throat> glow squid's arms, I would probably say the worst combination is spread shot and fast missiles. For or me, at least. Double spread shots. Or double spread shots, yeah. yeah anything with spread shots, terrible. yeah. Anything with spreads yeah. is awful because those spreads will block you in, yeah. and you have yes. to really be very careful with how you manipulate them, because uh, you can always find yourself in a corner with all sorts of shit coming in your direction, and it's not pleasant at all. I've exactly. Lost, I've yeah. lost a lot of runs to those kind of combinations. Yeah, same here. Yeah. We call yeah, Blackheart 2... The boss is so random that you can uh, yeah. be on a credit with, with like having incredible high rank, and then you get double destructible and you can just sit there and smile because nothing happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I gotta say, like, yeah, the grenades... Complete terror. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the grenades coupled with uh, the spread is kind of scary as well. Oh, yeah, yeah because you have to do, like, white dodges and then yes. you're trapped yeah. by the destructive bullets. Yeah, the worst and thing about this... in general, when it comes to the spread shot, yeah. white dodges. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. <sighs> Anything with spreads is horrible, yeah. I mean, we complain yes, a lot yeah. about the clusterfuck pattern on Blackheart 2, but I think spreads plus whatever on Glow Squid is probably considerably worse, I would think. Yeah. No, 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 It's at least it's, it's dodgeable. It, like, it's yeah, dodgeable, but... The worst, yeah. If, if you get the worst clusterfuck pattern on Blackheart, with a lot of ships you can't even dodge. Yeah. But if you thing... get, like, too many grenades and... And the uh, destructible bullets at the same time that you get homing needle shots and uh. spread shots and yeah, it's like <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not nice at all. Yeah. So yeah, that yeah, answers your question. Like the yeah. best part where, where you you know you're you're like dodging the pattern and you see an opening and you're like yeah I'm gonna take this opening and then you see a grenade blocking your path and you're like okay well i can't go back and if i continue going this way i will shoot the grenade and the grenade will explode and i will die so it's like <laughs> you know you can't really do anything at all yeah <laughs> so about the uh, um last part of no split does he ever time out the very last yes. one when it's... Yes. yeah really okay. how does it look like I've never uh, seen he that. times out after like three minutes or something, and when he does, he just uh, homes in on your sprite and until oh. you're, you're game over. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it's like That's instant nice. game over. It's a yeah. dickish move, yeah, what happens when he it's, times it's out. It's Yagawa. It's Yagawa <laughs> in a nutshell. Yeah. It's like, 
stop milking my game, get off the machine. Bitch. Yeah, <laughs> time to die now, yeah, it's, it is. <laughs> it is quite funny seeing it the first time though. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Mm. Mm. Klausmo, you should do like a save state run or something and get to that point. Just yeah. watch it. <laughs> See the brilliance of game design. <laughs> yeah, sadistic game yeah. design. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I guess that's the game. Yeah. I know, we've got quite shit. a lot. <laughs> six hours, 20 minutes, yeah, not including the intro. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I told you it's going to be a lot. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess we covered quite a lot. Uh, yeah, we did. I mean, what did we go through? We went through basic system, Everything? all the ships and the quirks. <laughs> Scoring yes. techniques, uh, yeah. I mean, we spent quite a bit of time on Madball too, but I think not yeah, Madball two, yeah. Madball one, yeah. yeah. But I think Madball one generally requires a lot of discussion anyway because he's such a bastard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there are so many different variables. Yeah, yeah. I mean, basically, the places where we have spent more time on discussion are the places which are just the most complicated. Yeah. Yes. So just um, proportional. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's kind of interesting because, as we said before, like, uh, the first five stages are, like, the first half of the game and the last two stages are, like, the second half. Uh, in terms of scoring and execution, the first couple of stages are much more complicated. Yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah. And that's a good thing because you don't want to deal with uh, such complexity in um, the later half of the game. Exactly, because it's hard enough as it is. Yeah. yeah, and then it's just down to dodging bullets and all the adrenaline stuff. And in the very first half, it's about um, like more RNG-based things and more um, complicated secrets to uncover and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we got a nice time out there as well. Yeah, it was a pretty nice time. Oh, yeah. yeah, nice one. Uh, so, you think questions, maybe? Has anyone got oh, any yeah. questions in chat? <laughs> do that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, after all, it's a Q and A, and we, we have delivered quite a lot of A. But <laughs> yeah, but not enough yes. Q. <laughs> <laughs> you so get now it's up to the chat to fill the next six hours, I guess. Yeah. Yes. 24-hour Greg stream, go, go, go. <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah, if you guys have any questions, just feel free to drop it in. Otherwise, we're probably going to be done soon. Yeah. <laughs> Dunzo, yeah. Well, I am done already. So. I know. Uh, I think I've still got a beer <laughs> left. Um, oh, nice. Which I'm probably going to destroy. Go yeah, no beer for me. Oh. <laughs> well, I have to pick stuff up tomorrow, so yeah. Oh, by the way, Yom, I think one of your things got delivered this morning, but I didn't pick it up, so I know what it is. It's probably Garaga. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. uh, did, did you get that premium bleep edition? Or what yeah, I got the beep edition. I got Yom to buy it for me, so that should be coming. <laughs> What's the hmm. difference between the premium and the premium? The beep is one comes... The yeah. The yeah, it comes what's, with... What's the poster? What is it? Um, it's I think the front cover of the box, but the I think Yom got it signed actually. Plus the uh, box is signed oh. as well. So mm, yeah, nice. I got some Greg swag, which is quite nice. <laughs> Swaggy Greg. Swag Greg. Yeah. yeah. yeah who was it? Who was it signed by? What? Um, I think it was signed yeah, by the developers. Hot body, right? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kempop, I'm playing premium. I'm not sure about Eaglet and Plasmo. I think Plasma. No, I don't even have the PS4 version yet. Uh, dude, what are you doing? Well, my my <laughs> PS4 version has actually uh, two days ago, and I've looked through all the um, fan stuff, and I'm quite amazed. Um, but too bad there's no physical um, disc, and too bad I don't have a PS4 <laughs> played uh, <laughs> anytime soon. But I still have a premium edition, and yeah, and yeah. It's Quite a nice trade, but um, I don't know. I, I will probably not play the premium edition within the next four or five years. Yeah, <laughs> dude, it's pretty good. You know, I really like it. I really <laughs> like it. But uh, yeah, yeah. It looks, it looks fun. It looks a lot of fun. And way too flat you know, from <laughs> the gameplay. It's just you stay there, the medals you collect automatically, and dodge some bullets, and then it's one credit clear. Hurrah. 
it is kind of easy. I do admit it is pretty easy if you're not playing at maximum rank, but that's kind of defeating nah. the purpose of the game, to be honest, because maximum rank mode is, well, albeit very annoying to trigger, it is actually kind of fun. It makes the game a hell of a lot more interesting, especially during the early stages, which admittedly on the arcade game can be quite boring. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well. Let's, let, let's be honest here. I mean, we've played it so much yeah, that we can probably do the first three or four stages in our sleep, so... At yeah. least having some well, way to I... change it up makes it a little bit more interesting. True, true. But the birds are always like an interesting. You're like, what am I gonna get this time? So <laughs> the birds are lucky dip. <laughs> you know, bir birds are like a box of chocolate. You never know what you're gonna get next. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh... uh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, those birds. Uh, I think I've told yeah. that story before, but every time bird. I go to a zoo now, and I, I see those flamingos um, sitting there in the cage, I really want yeah. to throw just grenades at uh, them and kill them. Uh, funny story, <laughs> yeah, the, the demo. Mean, it's, it's, it's not that I hate those flamingos, yeah. but I just want to kill them. Yeah. Mm. For the, there's a funny story in that a few days ago, the demo for um, Square Enix's new RPG, Nier Automata, came out. Oh, it looks fucking awesome. Yeah, I'm looking the, forward to that game. There's a section in the demo where you stand on a balcony and you see a flock of birds go flying past. My first yes. instinct was to shoot them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've actually got fun, that on yeah. my stream my stream highlight. I saw the birds, I goes, Ooh, birds and I started shooting them and you can actually shoot them out of the sky. It's funny as fuck. Oh shit, I got do you get a lot of points for it too? No, you don't. It's just there for they fun. They should include that, man. Yeah, that would be funny as hell, but yeah, the first thing I saw when I saw a flock of birds go flying past is Ooh, points. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good reaction. Yeah. Yeah. You, you should you should take up like uh bird hunting or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You play too much Garega. Damn yeah, those birds. Like yeah, napalm bombing all the way. Yeah. Damn those birds. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh god. Um Alexei, I'm not sure about what's in the book. I think Cloudy has seen it. So um I think it might be interviews and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard that there's supposed to be like original this shit as well. Yeah. Yeah. But uh yeah, it's uh the premium package has got some nice stuff in it like, but it's primarily fan service, I would say. It's like stuff yeah, for definitely. Garriga fans. Oh, you talk about the book that's in the premium. Yeah. Yes. Um it features quite some nice um, high resolution pictures but most importantly it has some very interesting interviews mm. so um, yeah. I think one interview with the sound team mm. and um, Manabu no Miki and yeah. mm -hmm. well and then some more um, gameplay stuff I think and even like a high score history interview mm -hmm. yep. and I'm going to read mm -hmm. that maybe I'm going to um, deliver some presentation for the forum and stuff like that um, but nice. it, it really sounds like very interesting stuff. You know? Yeah. Okay. But, cool. I think but people yeah, are saying. Full on. Yeah, I think some people were saying they should try and get you know Black Oak to translate it because it'd be interesting to see what they talk about in those interviews. Mm, most definitely. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Is there any more questions in chat, or if not, then I think we should probably wrap it up, eh? Yeah, because uh, yeah, maybe just call it a day. Yeah, because I think we're yes. all kind of wiped out, and it's probably quite late for you guys, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like <laughs> yeah, past quarter one, past ten. one or something. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like quarter past twelve. Yeah, I think we'll call it a night then. Yeah. Um, yeah, sounds like a good idea. Yeah, well, uh, it's been fun actually. Uh, yes. I did tell you it would take a long time to do this, so. <laughs> I didn't expect it to take this long, though. Yeah, well, we oh, kind shit. of have a tendency to go on our little tangents sometimes, but it's been a pretty entertaining six hours, yeah. yeah um, most definitely. I'm going to say. Like... Go on. Oh, yeah, no, it's nothing special, just that this, is, this should be like the. <clears throat> pretty much definitive thing for players who want to get into this game basically because <laughs> I mean there's so many things that we're covering here that are just basically from experience that it's yeah. not detailed in any guide anywhere yeah uh, 
and it's something that you would otherwise just have to find out by playing the game for years. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Do you have any words? Well, one, one thing, even though we have talked about it for um, such a long time now, and um, really it sounds so complex, but if you're starting out with the regular, it's not complex at all. Yeah. As yes. we have emphasized on in the beginning, um, rank control is straightforward, the gameplay is straightforward, just some medals. Yeah. And you can get your credit clear very quickly. Yeah. And then from there on, it gets more complex, but only as complex as you want the game to be. Yeah. So it's it's a very lenient game, a very beginner-friendly game, but also a very, very challenging game if you want to just um, shoot it to the maximum. Yeah. Yes. yeah. I would absolutely say that if you're new to the game and you're thinking about diving in, just dive in without worrying about all the complicated right, stuff because right. you do need to learn the game first but once you get the basics down a whole new world opens up to you and you know there's plenty of players yes. out there including us three who would be willing to guide you and help you and you know talk about strats with you and it's always nice to find new players of Garaga absolutely yes yeah and uh, of course you know anytime player approaching the game and you know delivering scores and getting clears and going past 10 millions or whatever all of us get extremely happy yeah. because we just want to see more people waste their time with this game yeah <laughs> i mean we've put in so much time in this game and it's always nice to see other people taking it on because it's not that it's not a complex beast to tackle a lot of there, there is a misconception in that you know there's so much going on that you know you need to read a book about it and you know do yes. theses about yeah, it but yeah. To be honest, you don't. You just need to dive in, learn the yeah. learn the stages, get used to your ship, and then start building your strategies up from there. And it's the same as with any yeah. other shmup. You just exactly. Exactly, exactly. yeah. You just need to approach it with a slightly different mentality than most cave shmups or most other shmups in general. Yeah. Like we said at the beginning. No, I... Go on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know I can just add to that and say that in general it's. <laughs> You should approach the game like playing it at a high level, the same way as playing pretty much any other game on a high level. Yeah. Not much difference at all. It's not like some mythical beast where you have to sacrifice your firstborn daughter to Lord Jagua and pray that he gives you good RNG enough to get good at the game or something. We do that anyway, though, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a given for the church. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah um if you guys haven't got anything else to add i'm just gonna say thank you guys and chat for coming along for this six and a half hour ride it's been great fun yes. yeah thank you very much thank you very much yeah yeah thank you very much for um having me here on stream so, yeah um, no problem guys thank course. you glad to join you guys <laughs> yeah thank yes. you for coming along for the chats uh eagle and plasma and uh thank you guys in chat as well uh we're gonna close off so thank you and Good night.